best week of the year. I am so looking forward to this. I'm so glad we are finally underway. It feels like I've been counting down ever since this time last year. It's a bit of a change from the uh, glorious sunshine and baking heat that we had last year. But I'll tell you what, it's going to make absolutely no difference to the experience. Well, great conditions here this morning. It's a penalty for Mill Hill playing in the blue and white against Jess in the darker blue. And this the first of many competitions. The under 16 girls competition absolutely massive with plenty of groups. Isco Bro, Tevili, Tev Ifi, and Ivanbridge Community College also involved in this. Yeah, this under 16 girls cup, I'm really looking forward to it. It's the, the first time it's been held. Previous Next, years we've had the under 15 girls, but because we've introduced the under four, because Ross and Park have introduced the under 14 girls competition this year, we, they've bumped that under 15's age group up to under 16. So brand new winner this year. But I tell you what, this group eight, we are dealing with last year's reigning under 15 champions, Ivy Bridge Community College. So the challenge is big for the other teams in this group. Teams have come from far and wide with that lovely offload into the wide channels, but perhaps no one as far as the Jest Arabian Ranches School who have come all the way from Dubai to play this tournament. Lovely offload in the contact by Mill Hill. Breaking through that first contact down this far left-hand side. One more offload, just one too many. And Jess will play away. Backwards is the call. And so far, it has been all Mill Hill. Very physical in the contact. Lovely shot there. And Jess just contained inside there, 22. And these international sides that have come over, there's only ever been um, one or two international sides to make the final. But uh, Jess were one of them. They certainly were, yeah. The uh, under 14 boys cut final back in, I think it was 2019. Defeated by a Harrow side that I think we've all heard a thing or two about as upper sixth this year. So that just shows the, uh, the quality of rugby coming out of Jess and why they're so keen to make the trip over year after year. Crouch! Real great addition to this competition. Unfortunate knock on there by the Dubai side, but they've turned it over in the scrum. Something you don't often see in the game of sevens. They look to go wide off first phase. Great tackle in the wide channels. Mill Hill have looked really strong defensively in these opening stages. Bounce pass and Jess just skimming through that first tackle. Big two player collision. And it's on in this wide channel now. But Jess School just spilled through the hands. Gathered well <laughs> by Mill Hill. But Time off. collision between the two players from Jess School have called a halt to proceedings. And there's plenty to talk about as well here in the uh, next gen 15 tent, of course. Yeah, we're going to have some fun times over the course of the week. We've got, uh, well, we're hoping to have Alex Goode coming in later on today to have a little bit of a chat. Um, he's working with our friends Limitless to, over the course of the week. Also, Rachel Burford, who, of course, has had her voice on the mic many a time in Next Gen 15. Guys, she's also working with Limitless this week and is going to be coming over for a chat. Um, be really interesting to get her thoughts on the, the growing girls' competitions here at, at the Rosslyn Park National School Sevens. There are now, what have we got, two under-18 competitions, an under-16, an under-14, and a mixed under-11 competition. So the... The girls' rugby side of things Time is growing up. massively here White, at the Rosson Park National Scrum. School Sevens. Over a thousand teams in total competing across 11 different tournaments. It is an absolutely hey, extraordinary uh, event. Keep those hips in, keep it tight, please. Another Close. round of group fixtures from the women's Wait. under 16 competition Set. after here on uh, Pinch RE2. Cardinal Newman against Queggs Penrith in another tough group. Tucked up by Jessica once more. Ten white offside. Offside is the call. And uh, Jess unable to break out of their half so far in this fixture. The Hills defence is very strong. Eleven, not ten. Stern refereeing in this uh, opening exchange. Unheard for me, please. It's a tough shift that plays this one. The the first game of the day on the first morning. It's the, it's the early start and perhaps a few people not quite ready to retreat as fast as they might otherwise do. Lovely offloading contact there as Jess 
create the breakdown on the edge Get once back. more. Thank you. It's build at first receiver, but only backwards. Hard direct running and through the contact. This is the best attacking play so far. The side from Dubai, a hint of forward Ooh, there and called by the referee. But that number Grand six for um, Jess. Powerful contact there in the and early stages work. of the uh, morning. Yeah, she looks like a player to look out for, doesn't she? Could have a bit of an impact Cut. over the course of the tournament. Find. Set. Well, here is the opportunity for Mill Hill to exit. And to the boots for the first time in the tournament. A great option, and the chase is on here. Gathered by Jess, but there's a bit of work in the breakdown to be done. It's been turned Hold over. On. And what a lovely option that was. Ten. Tapped quickly at the base. Five, not ten. Not ten once again. So Mills number Come ten on. will get us underway quickly once more in the closing stages of this first half. This is the best attacking opportunity of the game so far. An excellent ball swung wide. Lovely offload once more, well gathered. And Mill Hill will score the opening try here on pitch RE2 of the entire Roslyn Park National School Sevens. And they have deserved it after all their early pressure. Very mature play from this uh, young side to go to the boot from just inside their own half. Something that uh, I imagine you'll see plenty of throughout this tournament. But a really lovely score patient play and then when the time was right to swing it right that's exactly what Mill Hill have done and they will take a 5-0 lead going into the closing stages of this first half and there's work for the Jamiria English speaking school to do this is a lovely lofted pass here to Mill Hill's number 12 and a great offload and really well gathered a lovely score to open the tournament's points tally here. Mill Hill's number 10 who flung that excellent pass will get us underway once more. Ball's gone loose and it could be bound to touch all the way there. And that will call an end to the first half of rugby here at the Roslyn Park National School Sevens in the early hours of this Monday morning. Mill Hill School will take a 5-0 advantage going into the break. And a truly excellent start to the morning for the first game of the National School 7 here at Roslyn Park. Yeah, it's been absolutely brilliant. It's just so good to be underway, isn't it? Big old day ahead of us. We've got under 16 girls cup, under 18 boys vars. Remember Stowe won that last year with that outstanding series of performances all the way through. It's gonna be, gonna be a fun old day, a fun old week, and it's been a a fun old start as well in Mill Hill with that 5-0 lead. Enjoying life more than most. Well, some excellent rugby already here at the Rosin Park National School 7s on pitch RE2 with Next Gen 15. We'll be back very shortly for the second half in the opening round of fixtures in the girls' under-16 cup competition.
Well, we're just about to get the second half underway of the opening round of group fixtures in the under-16 girls competition. Emeria English speaking school up against Mill Hill. Mill Hill with a 5-0 advantage over the side from Dubai. East Gold Bro, Telivi facing off against Ivy Ridge Community College. It's the other game in this group. Good direct running from Mill Hill to get us underway. Stripped in the tackle by Jess School. Jess Arabian Ranches and this is a great opportunity for them to make amends following a first half in which Mill Hill really did dominate, especially Five, in terms of field possession. And Savage is back alongside me for the second half. Certainly am and enjoying this so far. Standards, standards good. Sometimes early dewy conditions, particularly as it's been raining for the past few days, can make life a little tough in these early games. But Crouch. it's a good start. Find. Set. Clean scrum for Jess. And they go to the edge off first phase. Lovely little looping move. And some good pace in that wide channel through the first tackle. Lovely offload. Great last ditch defending from Mill Hill as Jess looked to the short side once more. Another good offload in contact, but Not just gone. spilled forward. White ball. And that is unfortunate. Jess really were through and away there with the numbers up on the short side. Okay, there's a chance for Mill Hill to exit from here. Marcus there, ladies, come on. Okay. Look at that background. Crouch. Just a sea of sevens. Find. As I sat down Set. in our in our tent this morning at about 9.15 and then I didn't poke my head up for half an hour. I came up and turned around and suddenly there were 45 schools set up behind me. It was very busy as Mill Hill looked to break contact from inside their own half, but they've thrown it away just on their 22. It's important to punish these kind of mistakes in the game of sevens. Backwards is the referee from that loose pass. The pass is once again behind for the Jess player in the wide channels. It was a great run there. Quick ball for Jess to play with once more. As the side from Dubai look to open the scoring for their campaign. Little show and go. Big two-man contact from Mill Hill. You cannot play the ball on the floor. It's a penalty that goes against Mill Hill. We've been strong in defence in the opening stage of this second Not half. Back ten on the line. Well, that's the second time that pieces, no Mill effort. Hill has been penalised for that in this game. Best opportunity so far for Jess to score, and it's their dangerous player who's already highlighted straight through the hole. And that's the equaliser for the school from Dubai. And having come all this way, they must be thrilled with that. Yeah, they certainly will. And as you say, it's, uh, it's the danger woman that gets herself across the try line. And almost as soon as they went with that penalty, you thought, just get the ball in her hands, she'll find a space. And the conversion as well to take the lead. Simple hands from the penalty and uh, picked a good line through two defenders. Yeah, look, they just wait and wait and wait, allow the defence to come up and then she's good enough to just pick that line. And through she goes and, you know, that's a real lesson, I suppose, for Mill Hill in just keeping your discipline in terms of getting back 10 when teams go quick. We saw it actually at the weekend with, uh, with the England against uh, Ireland when Owen Farrell was actually not back 10, but Mario Toje worked hard to get in front of him to play Owen Farrell on. And it is that responsibility of the players that are back 10 to move forward and put everyone else on side rather than allowing those penalties to just build up and build up. Well, it's a break on here for Mill Hill straight from kickoff. Through through tackles goes their number 10. And through another with a big fend. Really powerful running from Mill Hill. Stolen in the breakdown though by Jess. That's Fantastic defending at such a crucial interval. And they win the penalty. What a big interaction that was. That's huge for the Jess School. Yeah, these are big moments with that two-point lead. They just know all they've got to do is just get the ball in the right part of the field here. Well, that was a lovely offload once again by the number six. And the Jumeria English speaking school are all the way up to the 15. Good line speed by Mill Hill, but finally tracked down once again in the 15. Secured the ball at the ruck. 
Hard line again, a lovely turn to break the first contact. A few switches of direction there, but dragged down once more. And the offload went loose, and once again, Mill Hill can break. And perhaps this time, they might go all the way. End-to-end -end stuff here. And that ball was put down short of the line, I believe. And that is unfortunate in these early stages. The number four who worked so hard has put the ball down short of the try line. That is the, uh, the delirium that lactic acid can cause. 12 and a half minutes into the game, first game of the day, early in the morning. The lungs are obviously going and the lactic acid has got well, all the way north of the, uh, all the way north of the nostrils there, hasn't it? It's, uh, it's a tough one to take that for Mill Hill, but they've got field position here. Well, if I was making that break, I'm not sure I would have wanted to go any further either, in all fairness. But you're right, it's been a really, really ruthless end-to-end -end game of rugby to start off this tournament. Picked at the base by Jess, who had the wind in their sails from that last attacking set. Interception that almost undid them there. Could be another turnover here as both sides go diving on the ball. Nothing coming. It was originally in white possession, a blue possession. Scrum, blue ball. It's been a fast-paced game, hasn't it? End to end. Both sides blowing. Even the ref finding they're going a little tough out there. Jess have really gotten away with one there, I think. With uh, keeping hold of possession. Certainly got lucky with that uh, misplaced try scoring. A moment from uh, Mill Hill, who have looked very impressive. This is certainly, depending on the other results in this group, shaping up to be a very interesting contest so early in this competition. Oh, good running lines in the midfield to open up a bit of space in this wide channel. And away you go, Jess's number four. Huge contact from Mill Hill's number seven, which we've seen all day. Mill Hill have got... Uh, Plenty of very talented Back players time. on their own. Certainly do. I'd be asking the ref what the time is on the clock if I was one of the Jess players, but they're looking to play. I look to finish this game with a flourish, a two-point advantage at the moment. There's the miss past. Great line speed from Mill Hill, but through through tackles. Two tackles go. Jess score is into the wide channel once more. Cuts back to the short side again. Breaks through one contact. Two on one here. Offloads away, but it's behind the Jess player. Some tired legs on the field. Finally, the offload is away. There's plenty of space in the wide channels here for the school from Dubai. Huge shot out of the line. What a tackle. How disruptive was that from <laughs> Mill Hill? They looked to have turned it over. But it's a penalty for the Jumeirah English speaking school. Lovely interchange and offloading from Jess through that passage. Well, they could look to kill the game here. Cut against the grain, past two defenders. Nine, you're offside. And penalty try is the call for the referee. So 14-5, Jumeria English-speaking school. Jess will come away with victory against Mill Hill offside. School. A Mill Hill side who looks very dominant in the first half, but how quickly things can change if you don't take your opportunities in the game of sevens. Something we'll be hearing all day, I'm sure. Yeah, absolutely. It's all about being ruthless and clinical. There is not a lot of time to play with, but Jess proving to be just exactly that. Incredibly ruthless, incredibly clinical, and a fantastic performance from them. Mill Hill, though, showing plenty of promise. A lot more to come from them over the course of the day, I am sure. A great performance from both sides. But it's the Jumeria English speaking school who will come away with the first win from Group A in the under 16s cup competition for the women's. But don't go anywhere, of course, because there's constant rugby here on pitch two up against, up next here on RE2 with next gen. Cardinal Newman take on Queggs Penrith in Group E of the under 16 girls cup we'll be back very shortly for that fixture
Whatever it is. Well, we're underway back at the uh, <laughs> Roslyn Park National School Sevens, the under 16 girls cup competition. Ex Penrith against Cardinal Newman. No, Joining me is Siobhan from Cardinal Newman. How excited <laughs> are you? Oh, no, from Craig's Penrith, sorry. How excited are you to be here at the uh, Roslyn Park National Mark School Sevens in this new iteration of this competition? I'm really excited. Um, so proud of the girls. It's the first uh, girls team that we've had from Quake, so the girls are up for it. They're really experienced and they've played together for a long time. Craig's Penrith in their wonderful the blue kit. Field. That really is a uh, lovely playing shirt to see here Mind. at the National School Sevens. Yes, we're uh, we thinking it's the best kit that we've seen so far. Up against Cardin Newman, <laughs> who have got a uh, decent playing shirt themselves. And there's some great defensive pressure right away from Penrith, who have turned it over. Could have been a hand in there from Cardinal Newman. Well, Siobhan, what do you make of the uh, the group that you've been given as well here at the um, National School Sevens? You've also got Iskol Giffen Glantaf and uh, Lutterworth High School. Any uh, any interaction with them before? Oh, we haven't. We haven't Mind. got any insider info. So Set. Um, that's the joy of the um, Rosson Park Sevens, really. The sides that come from all over the country and all over the world, Back indeed, lines. to play in this tournament. Yeah, it's a fantastic opportunity, and um, hopefully we'll make the most of it. Well, Penrith seemed to right at the start here, a bit of space yeah, in the wide Caitlin. channel. Excellent work to cut inside through three defenders. And that's the opening score for Kegs Penrith. Well, that was a really lovely finish from the number four. Yeah, Caitlin Padgett, fantastic run. And even with the names on the back of the shirt, really uh, professional you, job from Kegs Penrith and the professional performance is what they'll look to open their campaign with. Lovely kick off the um, boot there, very creative. It's an excellent first run to draw in the defenders and then the step inside from Padgett. Sure kick goes, yeah? Great pace through three defenders and Cardinal Newman from Hove they have some work to do here. Make sure you stay behind. Yeah, you. So the opportunity for a side from north of the Peak District to play, Lake District, sorry, to play against a uh, side all the way from down in uh, Sussex. Not too often these kind of fixtures can exist. And it's great that they're taking place here. At the well, the perfect start after uh, an awful lot of travel. Yeah, a, lo a long way uh, from Cumbria for us today, but we're, uh, we're up for it. You say the first time you've submitted a girls' side into this uh, competition at this level. That must be really exciting to have that sort of progression in the school game. Yeah, it really is. Um, and it's, it's, it's inspiring for the younger students as well. That's really excellent hands in the wide channel. Rex Penrith looked really dangerous in these opening stages. Swung wide once more, well held. Lovely footwork as well to get back onto the feet. This will be an excellent score. And it's great work. And that is a really wonderful try. It was such good KVA to keep the ball alive. And it's Padgett again with her second score in the early hours of the Roslyn Park National School Sevens. A great start. Fantastic spot start. This is a really excellent try. Something you must have spoken about before the um, tournament took place. Just keeping the ball alive in every phase of the game. It's really impressive stuff. Yeah, trying to avoid contact as much as possible, keeping it fast, keeping it live. And at the moment, Cardinal Newman just can't deal with the pace of uh, KX Penrith. That's a really inventive kickoff, gathered well by Cardinal Newman, who could be away in that wide channel. They've got plenty of pace. Number 15 could go all the way here. And is the try given? And no try is the call. Well, it was just just unable to see it in the corner there of our cameras, but I believe that a massive try-saving tackle has just taken place right in that corner. You thought the number 15 must surely be away for Cardin Newman's first score. But excellent work by Penrith to get back and make that try-saving tackle. That's a huge moment in this game. Come up, girls, come up. 
how impressed must you be with the work ethic from the side, even five minutes Five. into the first half to get all the way back and make that sort of try-saving tackle. Set. Yeah, that's exactly what we want to see. Uh, the girls are working really well as a team and uh, in defence and attack, so great hands here. Oh, unlucky. A little bit loose, but off the boots. <laughs> Just called back for the knock-on knock there, so unable to exit. And this is a great opportunity for Cardinal Newman to make amends for that. Mistake just moments ago. We've seen already they've got plenty of pace in this side. Coming towards the closing stages of this first half in Pooley. Crouch! Bind! Set! Excellent counter scrum by. Penrith and they put the pressure on. on Unfortunately, just spilled there by Cakes Penrith. By Blue there again. But that's really good pressure once more in defence. You're good there, thank you. Talk about how hard the girls are working. Once again, seen it in defence just there, the way they've countered that scrum and forced another error. Really impressive stuff, even in the early stages of this Set. tournament. Yeah, it's what we'd like to see going on. Nice pressure from Harnwell there. Plenty of pressure once more from Rex Pemmer, who have turned it over and now have the chance to counter. Plenty of space on that far okay. side. Just gone forwards, girls. Another loose pass, but uh, mistakes expected in the early hours of the morning. They made plenty of ground. Another good exit play from Kate Penrith. Mark's just there. Mark's in front of me. Short scrum, girls. Crouch! Bind! Set! Day nine. Advantage offside. Oh, penalty advantage now for Cardinal Newman. A massive shot there from Kegs Penrith. Nine offside. That's huge from defence, but penalty was the decision offside from the scrum. Once again, Pegs will be challenged defensively, but so far they've stood up to everything that Arnold Newman can offer. Hard direct running. Excellent tackle by the number 10, and a huge turnover at the base of the ruck there. And this is an excellent counter from Kegs Penrith, who could be away on that far right-hand side. And they could finish this first half with another excellent score. Fantastic Some textbook run. sevens. Becca Newman there. Newbie. Oh, that's fantastic work. In line with me, Blue. Okay, Penrith, what a great score. And textbook sevens, really, yeah. with that turnover from the base of the scrum. Yeah. And then just two passes and away down this short side. And great pace. Well, an excellent first half for Kegs Penrith, who have looked really impressive. And after weathering the storm from Cardinal Newman, they uh, countered really well and finished off this first half with a great score to give them a 15-0 lead. You must be really happy with that first half performance. So proud of them. They're, uh, they're smashing it. Well, we'll be back very shortly for the second half here on Next Gen Pitch RE2 for the National School Sevens here at Rosen Park.
Well, we're back here at the uh, Roslyn Park National School Sevens. It's, been paid. it's the Under 16 Girls Cup. The highest standard of Under 16 Women's Sevens you'll find anywhere in the country as Kanks Penwith were so close to getting an interception away there. And it's an early yellow card for Kegs Penwith, who currently lead 15-0 in his opening stages. I'm joined once again by Siobhan from Kegs Penrith. That is a tough start to the second half. That is, yeah, a tough start. It was, that was unlucky. Um, but hopefully we'll, we'll come back as a team. Well, Cardinal Newman are hoping to get the game underway as quickly as they can. It was an excellent run there by their number six. Drew in loads of defenders, and now there's plenty of space out wide, but a huge hit. Fantastic tackle. <laughs> Well, a player down, that's a massive bit of contact. And now, Megs Penrith could be away down this short side. No advantage now to play with from that knock on. Hands will be enough here for Kegs Penrith. Another lovely offload through the contact. And one more offload, oh. but unfortunately just spilled at the last. No advantage. Scrum black. That's a great attacking set from the turnover. You must say for Kegs Penrith, very happy with the field position they've managed. Huh? Yeah, they've it's got good. themselves into a, a good position. They're working well as a team, so just yeah, just keep keep calm, keep collected. Normally depends on which leg your hook is using. Let's go, girls. That yellow card, come Kegs Penrith, down for s down to six, but only come for up. the moment. Forty odd seconds left on that yellow card. Happy. Currently still leading 15-0, which is a commanding lead, Five. but things can change so quickly in the game of sevens. Set. Yeah, we can. Yeah, we can see it, it could change quickly, blue. but the girls, their um, their strengths are in are in defence. Uh, so hopefully, we've seen that already with some Not massive on, shots. And there's another huge Strong tackle. Blue. The turn it over once more. Cardinal and Newman have got plenty of pace in this Not team, but over. turnovers are being forced by. Kegs Penrith at every opportunity. Lovely pass and a great line through the contact. Cutting inside once more. And has had a hat trick in the opening game. For Kegs Penrith number four. Yeah. A great hat trick for, for Caitlin Padgett. Well, that's huge for Kegs Penrith. A little bit of work needed, perhaps, from the tee if uh, yeah. Kegs look to go deeper into this competition, but Padgett with the hat-trick in this opening game. She loves that cut inside to beat defenders. A really lovely score. Ruthless stuff from Kegs Penrith, who currently lead by 20 points to nil. And Carlton Newman haven't paid particularly badly. It's just that every time they look to build an attacking set, every time they break the gain line, a huge tackle comes in from Kegs Penworth to disrupt. Yeah, I think that's it. I think our, our defence is, is solid and um, we're taking our opportunities then to, to attack when we can. Well, it's a beautifully weighted kick off the kickoff there that just sat on the touchline, missed interception, and Kegs Penworth could be away here through two tackles. Great physicality. Brushes one more aside. Searches for the offload now. Might go herself with a leg drive. And what a lovely score by Kegs Penrith, number six. Yeah, great work there from, from Amber Beattie. Uh, Beattie was just shrugging off defenders from number seven, sorry. Left, right and centre. And then finally just finished off with the leg drive herself. 25-0. Really commanding performance. You couldn't have expected it to go any better than this in the opening game. Yeah, that's it. We're, um, we're at uh, 15s. Uh, union team usually, so we've just uh, we're just getting into the seven. So I'm yeah, I'm really impressed and proud of how they're getting on. It's very early in the competition, of course. Yeah. Do you have any expectations coming into this? We didn't have any expectations. We just want them to to enjoy it and to to get some experience. And and you know, if they do really well, we'll we'll go from there. Well, they're just applying loads of pressure now. Carl and Newman's heads may have dropped slightly, but they're still fighting to get into the defensive line and loose pass picked up once again by Kegs Penrith great leg drive to draw in three defenders there quick ball at the base of the ruck could be on wide once more backwards is the call by the referee a few tired legs in the closing stages of this fixture 
Another great offload, and it's a race to the line once again, and it's a race that Kegs Penrith will win. And Beatty gets her second of the game. Slightly easier than her first, but a great finish, and that's 30 nil. Six tries in the opening game. It's a very impressive performance, three tries either side of the half. Yeah, really happy with how the girls are doing. Um, I agree that, you know, we're getting some, maybe a little bit tired now, but they've, uh, they've shown real strength and um, hopefully we'll just carry that through for the rest of the day. Well, as you um, said, you're on a 15 side usually, so plenty of depth at today's tournament? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Uh, but they've got, they've got the speed. So I think um, I think we've you know we've started off good and hopefully we'll carry it on. That is the sort of uh, logistical thing that can often define these tournaments as you get towards the closing stages, which I imagine after this performance, Ex Penrith will be hoping to do. How many numbers you have left on feet? Yeah, we'll take this confidence forward. Hopefully. Well, from our last fixture here on RE2, as this game is done and dusted. We've got some results for you. Of course, we saw the Jumeria English Speaking School victorious over Mill Hill and Belmont School, but Ivy Bridge Community College, the under-15 reigning champions in this iteration of the tournament, they were also victorious over Iskol Bro Talevi, as you'd expect, but a very tight game there. 14 points the difference. And it's another try for Kegs Penrith. Well, that will call an end to this opening fixture. A massive 35-0 win for your side, Ron. You could, surely can't be happier after that performance. No, I couldn't be happier. Um, a last-minute try there for Maeve McGrath and the girls that worked fantastically as a team. And, um, yeah, it's really, really proud, and we'll carry this forward. Well, wonderful stuff. Thank you so much for being with me, Siobhan, on co-commentary for this game. And that is the perfect start for Kegs Penrith here in this tournament. Plenty of work to do for Cardinal Newman if they wish to progress into the final stages of this competition. Thank you for having me. And that is all from us in the under-16 girls, for the moment at least. Still plenty of rugby here on RE2 pitch. RE2, of course, with Next Gen here at the Rosin Park National School 7s. Up next, action from the under-18 boys vars as Haley Brewery take on Ivory, Ivy Bridge Community College. We'll be back very shortly for that fixture here on RE2. Well, we're back in action here on uh, RE2. It's Ivy Ridge Community College against Helbury. Helbury in the maroon and white up against Ivy Ridge Community College. This is under 18 VARS action for you here. It's really frantic stuff from Ivy Ridge Community College. They take contact just outside their 22. They're in a group with Stowe and Colleague Cigar. So a very talented group here in the under 18 boys VARS competition. You'll see that throughout the day. There are some massive schools in this VARS. It is a truly fantastic competition to be a part of. Take nothing away from it for taking place on this Monday morning. And that's a knock on in these early stages. So Ivy Bridge Community College will retain possession once more. 
Ivy Bridge Community College, of course, made the final of this competition back in 2019, as we heard from uh, Angus Savage at under 14 level, losing only to Harrow. But they've got plenty of rugby pedigree, some good rugby coming out of Ivory Community College. Ivy Bridge will get us underway, turnover at the base of the ruck. And this will be Halebury's first opportunity with ball in hand to form an attacking set. They start from inside their 22, big fend, and right away they go to this wide channels. Lovely offload inside. And Halebury could be under the sticks here. Textbook sevens, an excellent counter attack from that turnover. And against the run of play, one might say, Halebury have opened the scoring. A lovely finish. Really excellent stuff. Great offload there. Took out two defenders in the game and... Uh, we had the uh, legs to finish the side from just north of London. Taken well by Ivy Bridge off the kickoff. Two man shot in contact, but clean ball at the ruck. They look to break from inside their own half. Penalty for crossing. Well, a difficult call for Ivory Bridge to stomach. Ivory Bridge Community College, who've looked very impressive in their opening stages, but uh, one or two penalties is what currently separates the side. Here we will get us underway. See how impressive they can be off the uh, penalty restart. But this time they're facing a very well set Ivy Ridge College defence, but not well set enough, it seems. Lovely work from the number 15. Another great offload and a score. A beautiful try from Halebury. A really excellent finish there. The number 15 just stepping through the gap and a couple of offloads was all that was needed to break down Ivy Ridge Community College's defence. And in these early stages, it's 12-0. To Halebury. Lovely step inside. Testing the defence. Halebury, sorry, lovely step inside. And the big fend. Another big fend there. Could have gone all the way himself, but unselfish. And a great score. Well, Halebury will get us underway once more from the kickoff. Excellent work to tap it back. Quick hands. No let off. On the Haleybury side, but forward pass is the call there. Bit of a let off for Ivy Bridge Community College. You have a lot of work to do in these opening stages. When you're in a group of the likes of Stowe School, you can't afford to slip up at any opportunity if you'd like to make it through to the latter stages of this very impressive competition. There's plenty of action from the under-18 boys vase coming up. Tombridge against Iskol E. Priscelli up next on this pitch. But Ivory Community College looks to get us away there. Flung out the back. Looks as though there might have been a hand in there from Haley Brew, but referee says play on. Great running from the number 15 once more. No releasing is the call, the tackler that is. Swung wide once more, but Ivy Bridge will take it back to the short side and they go to the boot. Well gathered, race to the line, and through contact. It's a lovely score for Ivy Bridge Community College. Five back, as they look to ring in a few changes. Really excellent stuff. A great score. Well, once again, it's discipline that's uh, leaving its mark on this game. Another penalty. And Ivy Bridge have just uh, capitalised excellently well from their opportunity. A lovely finish by the number 10. Chipped through really well. And they'll get us underway once more. Unfortunately, their kick does not go 10. No contact from 
Haley Bree, and they'll tap from the half. A little bit loose, but big contact in the midfield, and a lovely lofted pass into the wide channels. Haley Bree cut back inside. It's a great offload, and that's Newton, the number 15, who will run it under the post and score. Well, talk about cleaning up, following a bit of loose play. It's exactly what Aylibri did really well. It's just really loose from this tap and go. Don't worry, everyone, I've got it. Great momentum, lovely lofted pass. Cuts it inside, Newton's there. Perfect score to swing the momentum back in their favour. Contestable kickoff. Exactly what you need in the game of sevens. Filippetto gathers on the floor and now Helby put the hammer down, swung back inside. Play on, says the referee. Ivy Bridge Community College will look to gather under pressure from inside their 15. And that will bring an end to the first half here in our opening exchange in the under-18 Vars competition. In this opening fixture between Haleybury and Ivy Bridge Community College, 19-5 Haleybury lead. A commanding lead. Ivy Bridge Community College have shown sparks though. They have a mountain to climb in this second half if they wish to take anything out of their opening encounter in a very competitive Group A. We'll be back very shortly for the second half here on Pitch RE2, Next Gen 15's coverage of the Roslyn Park National School Sevens. Well, welcome back here for the uh, second half here with this under-18 Vars competition between Ivy Ridge Community College and Haleybury. Haleybury have rung in a couple of changes, but there's an interception there. Well, not the start that Ivy Ridge wanted, but they've recovered well. That looked dangerous. They'll tap and go quickly, as is the way in the game of sevens, especially when you are trailing. They take it all the way to the wide channel. Two-man tackle to bring down. Ivy Bridge Community College's wide player could contest in that ruck. Once again, they play from inside their 22, looking for that breakthrough moment. Excellent footwork through two tackles, and that's the breakaway they were after. One on one with the last man. There's a race into the corner. Excellent covering tackle, and a good counter ruck too. Play on, says the referee. Still, Ivy Bridge retain possession. Now up to the halfway, a little bit shorter numbers. Back to the short side. Show and go, offloaded inside, well gathered by two Haleybridge men. Testing footwork, just drifting across the field. Wrapped up by Haleybury. There's a knock on there, so advantage for the side in maroon and white. Here's Newton. Newton beats two. And Newton could be away here. And it will be a stroll into the corner. They'll jog underneath the posts. Excellent footwork. And that's what Haley Brew have done so well all day. They've just punished the mis every easy mistake. 
Ivy Bridge Community College have performed well, but Newton, perhaps Ailey Bruce, star man, beat two with the step, and then not enough from uh, Ivy Bridge's last defender. Stroll under the post to maybe kill the game, but we'll wait and see what Ivy Bridge Community College have to offer. Another very contestable kickoff, this time gathered well by Ivy Bridge. Could have been a turnover at the breakdown. Not legally, says the referee. Penalty for Ivy Bridge Community College. As it is to play away from inside their own half once more. Two and one in that wide channel. Congested on this short side. But good KBA from Ivy Bridge Community College. Show and go through the hole in behind. Lovely last ditch tackle and great work to get back to feet and a clean turnover. That's just fantastic work from Haley Brees, number 13. To the boot they go now and the race is on. No men in the backfield for Ivy Bridge. Second touch is there. And in the end, it was easy enough. A really great finish. And once again, just capitalizing off the mistakes of your opposition will allow certain teams to run away in this competition when you're as clinical as Ivy Bridge have lacked. If you're as clinical as a Halebury, that's exactly what you'll do. Just spotted the grass in behind and the fresher legs of Halebury. Allow them to touch down. Number 13, Robinson, the scorer. Another contestable kickoff. That's been a feature of uh, Halebury's game so far. Great counter ruck. The ball is loose. Picked up by the maroon and white once more. And there's some physicality through two tackles just to draw some men into the game. Swung wide, intercepted, really well gathered. Try scored for Ivory Ridge Community College. There'll be no one to disrupt. Well, a great score from Ivory Ridge. Really clever reading of the play. The man knew he may be in trouble if they reach those wide channels after sucking all those defenders. Clever stuff by the number 14 and a great finish. Well, Ivy Ridge will need a bit more of that sevens acumen if they want to get out of this group. A very impressive group with Pollock Cigar and Stowe School as well. They're currently facing off elsewhere. Well held off the kickoff. Wide once more. Lovely fizz across the face into the wide channel. Good fend to beat the first man. Filippetto with some good physicality there. A little bit short of options inside their own half. So Helbury will put the foot down and go themselves. Great work, great KBA. Ball's just behind, but Helbury won't panic. Big fend through two contacts already. So unfortunate just to knock it on there. But Helby have presented not only some really lovely running lines and some great options off the boots, but some physicality that uh, perhaps Ivy Ridge have just lacked in these closing stages. On RE2, Priselli versus Tunbridge School. On RE3, Warwick School. One at the base. Excellent show and go once on more RE4, from Ivy Bridge. A lovely School offload. It's a race to the line on here. RE5, Victoria College Excellent work by Halebury. It's Filippetto to chase Saint down. Ball is out in the ruck and Halebury will come away so with it. Filippetto once more. Was that a knock on at the base? It was and there will be time to play this scrum. Well, it was really good play off the base of the scrum by Ivy Bridges, number nine. And a great offload out wide. So Filippetto, number 17, working so hard to get back and 
and force a turnover. An unfortunate knock-on will allow Ivory Bridge just one more opportunity. Who knows, points scored could mean all the difference in this competition as they'll dart under the posts. A simple score, really. Keen to get the way back, game back on the way. But there'll be no time to close the gap any further. Well, a very commanding and clinical performance from Haleybury. 31-17, they've beaten Ivy Bridge Community College in the opening round of fixtures in the under-18 Vars here. For the boys' sides at the Roslyn Park National School Sevens. We'll let you know how Stowe School and College Cigar get on in that opening round of fixtures as well. But there's more rugby, of course, here on RE2 with Next Gen up next. Some Group C action. Iskol E. Preseli, the Welsh side, up against Tonbridge School in Group C of the under 18. Vars will be back very shortly for the next round of fixtures here on RE2 with Next Gen 15. Well, it's the uh, first round of pool fixtures here in the boys' under-18 Vars. It's Tombridge School in the black and white up against East Gawley Priscelli from the west of Wales. Quick line-out for Tombridge. The first line-out of the day, which could you imagine, in our fourth round of fixtures. And it's a loose pass there to first receiver. And a knock-on is the call, cool, so... East Gawley Priscelli will have some possession in these early stages. Well, this is another interesting group with Reed School and St. Cecilia's Church of England School also involved. Both these sides will fancy topping that group and uh, heading into the latter stages of this tournament but it's East Gawley Priscelli who will take the ball to the halfway with some physical carries turnover at the base of the ruck but not legally for the referee East Gawley Priscelli will get us underway it looks to go into the wide channels excellent little show and go good footwork Great work to hold on to possession, a lovely offload. Big physical contact came in there from Tombridge who are all over themselves in the ruck. That's another penalty in that area of the game that they've given away. Big physical side from the west of Wales. Two men in the tackle there for Tombridge who are under loads of pressure in these early stages. This is the first attacking site set for Iscoli Priscelli. Great hands into the wide channel once again. Really patient stuff from the Welsh side. Tombridge looks to get hands in once more. And they look to go wide again. Change of direction. Big Fen to beat the first man. 
just short now. Must be a try here. East goalie Priscelli. Good counter up from Tonbridge. And a knock on is the call. Really great disruption. A really big moment two and a half minutes into this first game. And Tonbridge have turned it over. And now Tonbridge School will have their first opportunity to exit. From right on their five metre. A really difficult task. Little bit of movement. And the switch inside. Offloaded off the base. Good decision to hold on to the ball there at first time of asking, but the offload was once again given. Still Tombridge possession. That's the second time they've broken the line. And now it's on wide is the call from the sideline. And now it's a foot race to the line. Well, no out, says the call from anyone on the linesman. So Tombridge will just saunter under the post. There was a moment there where everything stopped. East goalie Priscelli was certain they dragged the Tombridge player off field. But that's the score and the first score of this game, a game in which Priscelli scored it so well to drive their way all the way down to the five metre of Tombridge. An excellent turnover there and a uh, little bit of patience and a little bit of gas at Tombridge under the sticks and the opening exchange here. Wow, some lovely bit of work to stay in field, as is the lawful case. And a great finish. Under no oppositional pressure. So Tombridge will get us way off the kickoff as well. Straight out, unfortunately. So a free kick for the Welsh side once more. All the way into the wide channel as they go. Great physical carry to tie in two defenders. Playing the nine is the call, so penalty goes up the Welsh side's way once more. East goalie Priscelli did so well to carve an opportunity right in Tombridge's 22. They did that from a Tombridge mistake on the penalty there. Let's go to the scrum. A very interesting call. But a good attacking opportunity. Great counter from Tombridge who have turned it over at the scrum. And they look to counter from the same position they scored their opening try. With a bit of broken field in front of them. Good offload to keep the ball alive. This time they've got some work to do at the breakdown. Fizzed across the face. He's got Lee Priscelli shot out of the line and left a hole. Lovely pass. But forward is the call from the referee. And that is a massive missed opportunity for Tom Bridge, who would have been well away there if they could have executed that two on one. Very unfortunate stuff for Tom Bridge. But another great opportunity for Eskol E. Priscelli. The Reed School also in this group, very talented rugby school. St. Cecilia is also there. A very even group as it's shaping up to be at the moment. Tombridge just a little bit more ruthless off their uh, opportunities. That's what separates these two sides. Another scrum which Tombridge managed to turn over at the last. Once again, Tombridge get the shove on. East goal, East Priscelli seem to have the weight on the uh, Tombridge scrum, but they need to secure some ball here in this crucial stage of the game, right at the end of this first half. Hands in the scrum and a turnover but tapped outside of the peripherals of the referee. Another opportunity for Tombridge right on halfway to finish this first half with a flurry. They want to go 
back into the huddle. 14 points up instead of seven. They've got possession inside Iskol E. Priscelli's half. They've been so clinical from here. Good pressure on the uh, man in at number nine. Just stepped against the grain, flicked up. Back to the short side come Tombridge. Loose on the floor and knock on is the call. And that'll bring an end to the first half here in the second round of fixtures we've seen here on RE2. This is still the first match in the pool. Pool C between Tombridge School and Iskol E. Priscelli. Tombridge just capitalizing off uh, their mistakes so far. A very tight game, the tightest we've seen perhaps so far on pitch RE2 at the Rosen Park National School 7s. We'll be back very shortly for the second half. back here for the uh, second half of the under 18 Vars competition this is the first round of pool fixtures Tombridge currently lead by seven but they might look to extend this advantage lovely two on one oh, the, the Tombridge man may have pulled up short with a injury there to the hamstring that's their opening try scorer as well in loads of pain but didn't he do amazingly well to finish and what an excellent start for Tombridge. Well, that's a huge start to this second half. Unfortunately, uh, that Tombridge player will need to leave the field. At least Golly Priscilla were very disappointed having turned over possession in the early stages of this uh, second half. Great effort for the conversion, but unsuccessful. So 12-10, Tombridge will currently lead. Simple enough, really, for Tombridge. They just went wide. Broke through two tackles there. That's unfortunate. Just can't be missing uh, those kind of tackles in the game of sevens. Just aren't enough players to cover. And just about, Tombridge have scored their second try of the Roslyn Park National School sevens as they ring in the changes. Another excellent kickoff there, a bit of miscommunication on whose ball it was, but Iskoli Priscelli have gathered well. Another great counter ruck by Tombridge, but they fling the ball out there and spilled, unfortunately, for Tombridge, who did well to gather the loose ball. Well, we return to the uh, under 16 girls later in the afternoon, but up next, 11.20, Park House against Seven Oaks. Two famous old names in schoolboy sports here on RE2. That's more pool action in the Vars competition. Miskol E. Priscelli through the first contact, great offload to keep the ball alive. Bouncing miss pass as they search for the space on that far side of where we're stood in the uh, commentary tent. Picked down the short side through the first contact. The big man's got a race to the line that he does not fancy, but 
Iscoli Priscelli are almost up to Tombridge's 22. They've been here before and have been unable to convert. But there's space in the wide channel once more. Lovely footwork. Great defence from Tombridge. Good counter ruck, but Iscoli Priscelli have done excellently well to fish the ball out of there. And once again, they go sideline to sideline, switch around the corner. Excellent flick inside, but just asking a bit too much. of themselves there to keep the ball alive. They went sideline to sideline, which is executed very well to wear out that Tombridge defence, but just one pass too many. Lacking a little bit of patience, but given the stage of the game they're in, it's understandable, trailing by two. Tombridge now with the opportunity to exit. Tombridge with a feed in this scrum. It's come out the short side. We'll have a reset. Just three minutes to go in this second half. Second half has absolutely flown by here at the Roslyn Park National School Sevens. Tombridge in control. They look to exit cleanly from this position little switch of play well read by Iskol Ypresseli but there's a bit of space on this wide channel great exit and Tombridge are up to their 15 now they're shaping up we get some go forward good little hitch kick there and through the gap go Tombridge once more looking to play the ball inside but touch was found rugby's most reliable defender the touchline. A good running from Tombridge. Made it all the way up to Iscoli Priscelli's 15. And the side from the very west of Wales currently trailing. Two minutes is certainly enough time to get themselves back into the game. Short they go from the line out. Our second line out of the day executed well as they look to take it into the wide channels bit of kba to keep the ball alive but lovely line speed from tombridge to put the pressure in but and no release there from the tackler so this golly priscelli will go quickly great offload to keep the ball alive all still alive little cut inside great kba Another great offload. Uh, Priscelli just can't keep up with the pace of their own game so far. Plenty of tired legs after the opening fixture. That's really great work once again to keep the ball alive, but they just lack options to the boots, but it wasn't really as convincing as it could have been, and now Tombridge will counter. They suddenly come alive. Great counter ruck. Iskoli Priscelli have turned it over again. Lovely footwork to beat two men. And now it could be a race to the line here. That lovely tackle, great offload. Tombridge have the numbers back in defence. Clean turnover. And Iskoli Priscelli have few bodies on feet. And those tired legs that both sides now have, assessing their options, show and go, and a step on the outside, and Tombridge will kill the game. At 11.20 on the RE pitches in the Fars Boys Under 18s tournament, Newcastle under Well, oh, that's so unfortunate. Scully Priscelli were pushing hard right to the end, but once the ball was turned over, they just didn't have the legs to come back and control the Tombridge counter-attack. It's great from work Ripley, from the try score in that Lane, wide channel. Lovely four. show and go, little step, and an easy Lane, score. Lane, Tombridge will finish the game 19 nil the victors. A game that was really tight after that first half, but Tombridge just had enough in the tank to finish off the mistakes made by Iskol E. Priscelli. There'll be plenty more rugby for both of these sides. But we will continue with more action from the under-18 Vars competition here on day one, Monday morning, of the Rosin Park National School Sevens tournament.
up next at 1120 Park House against Seven Oaks. A very good morning, everybody, and welcome to RE2. And if you're just tuning in for Park House School against Seven Oaks, you're in the right place. It's group stages this morning. 200 schools whittled down to 28 in the under 18 bars. By the end of tonight, it is one of the most competitive divisions here at the Roslyn Park. National School Sevens what makes this tournament so unique. There is not a more difficult tournament in the world to try and win in terms of competition. And we're underway. Seven Oaks kicking us off in the red and white. Parkhouse School running it through the hands and nicely on the outside. Great chance early on as Parkhouse School show the wheels. Not 30 seconds played, and there, Roslyn Parks beginning with a score from 80 metres. Hello. Look at the hands here. It's uh, a bit under pressure, and then that little pullback to provide enough space for. Parkhouse School Speedster in those flashy yellow boots to show what he's all about. Lovely beginning. Well, this group consists of Seven Oaks Parkhouse School, Newcastle under Lime. As well as colleagues here, Ben Front. And uh, they'll be in action on pitches elsewhere, contesting their first match today. Parkhouse. School now having to put pressure on Seven Oaks. Fantastic ball playing rugby school that Seven Oaks are. Tend to produce individuals of, of real class. Going forward. Defensive press, excellent from Parkhouse School. The next gen 15 tents you can see in the background here that's where we're broadcasting from today and re2 being streamed really for the first time at the roslyn park national school sevens there is the main pitch as well which has traditionally for almost 10 years been broadcast but opening up the rest of this competition provides us with so much access and we're going to see some of the best rugby on display on this pitch today and across the next five days Park House School with possession and working it along to that edge where they scored their first try. Here is the first try scorer and he'll set off again. Ball strip though by Seven Oaks. Out! 
That's uh, nicely worked too. But the Parkhouse press is causing Seven Oaks to take a little more contact. Parkhouse reset, and this will be put in behind. Back to the short side, and then the gap opens up, and Seven Oaks with a wonderful jink and a burst of speed have their first try. Well, it's that pitch that backs onto the main pitch here, RE1. So if you can, you don't want to kick it beyond the marquee, and that's well judged indeed by Seven Oaks' number 10. Lovely individual score. Getting his hands on the ball as much as possible and just spotting the dog leg between Parkhouse school defenders. They've been on it defensively. So far, that just uh, a tiny creak, and Seven Oaks exploits it. Seven points all. Release! Parkhouse securing the ball, keeping it alive until then. Well, your first game at Roslyn Park on the morning of day one. It's always an assault on the senses. So rare to be playing rugby before midday at under 18 level. It just catches you a little off guard sometimes. Some of the skills you normally rely on are, are as elusive. As can be, and Seven Oaks looking to be elusive themselves right from the base. Good speed here in the little finish to go under the sticks. Great awareness not to dive into the corner and make the conversion uh, almost impossible. Instead, seven guaranteed. And it's a well set marquee, isn't it? To bring the ball back to you. And this is what Seven Oaks are about creating space for their individuals to then expose weaknesses in the defense. For anyone tuning in and uh, expecting Park, expecting Didcot Girls School against Dubai College, that is the next match on. So you haven't missed it. You are in the right place. Didcot Girls School against Dubai College is next. And then we'll have more action from the Under-16 Girls Cup after that as well. Kingsdale Foundation School in action as well as Bring Kellanog Comprehensive School. So girls, Under-16 action coming right up. Some of the rugby we'll see in this under-18 Vars will be Crouch. right up there with the very best in this right. competition. Having Set. the under-18s on day one, it makes it an exciting prospect for everyone coming down here, really mixing up the age categories. Hold. Hold. And Seven Oaks looking to stamp their authority now on this first half as it edges towards a conclusion and they edge towards the touchline carefully, daintily, kept alive. Nice cutting back. It's a lovely loop pass too. And there's chances here. Seven Oaks knocking for a third. Parkhouse School scrambling really well. Excellent tackle around the legs just to force another play to be in. But that's a decisive piece of play and taking control of Don't possession for a second time. score. Seven Oaks is number 10. Living up to the number, living up to the socks around the ankles. Excellent from the conversion as well. 
21 points to seven at half time to Seven Oaks. Thank you. Well, Park Askell did their best to just keep Seven Oaks having to make an extra pass, an extra play. But that was really nice and actually excellent from Park House's number one. The awareness not to take him down. He would have seen himself in the sin bin had he not let go there. So 21 points to seven at halftime. Parkhouse School uh, with that first try and then in defence, contain Seven Oaks. I'll need to do it again here, but look at the depth that Seven Oaks now putting on the ball. There's a bit more confidence to their play, and that's good hands. A couple of substitutions made at halftime, and those getting in on the act. a festival feel to Point! the world's greatest sevens festival Set! Roslyn Park National School sevens the Pipers are here already and looking to play a tune of his own making goes Seven Oaks's scrum half again much deeper now they're setting and that's giving them more space to avoid the press from Parkhouse School Woo! scrap on the floor for the ball here just about kept by Seven Oaks. Little stall of the defence in the midfield, and that's released some space. And there's a good cover tackle. Again, the scrum half in support does well. High tackle. High tackle by five. Blindside sorts. And the man who made that initial thrust is going to run it in from five metres. Clayson with that last try. The Seven Oaks bench uh, are informing me. Yeah. Hamish McQueen gets Seven Oaks off uh, and running in the 10 shirt. Parkhouse school reload. And got the players to be able to take teams on physically like that then why not it's worked out forcing a penalty I like the variation in tactics and using their strengths here comes Parkhouse schools strike runner and the speedster who uh, 
scored their seven. All right. No. So. And here Park House scored goal again. A little subtlety to offload that from 16. Out! No! Thank you! Good period of possession this for the Newbury School. It's a nice offload. Can he stay in though? Defence is good from Seven Oaks. with the short line out. Option, not so you got to get that straight line if you're going to go quickly. Okay. Well, it's going to be uh, a comfortable victory for Seven Oaks in their first game here. But for Parkhouse School, a chance to challenge Seven Oaks again from a nice piece of field position. school go eating up the yards seven oaks oh! and mcqueen strong in the tackle oh, mcqueen and co swallowing up park house school that's a, a fine piece of defense sucking the attackers onto them and then holding the ball up That's gone through the legs. Has gone uh, forward in, in the process. Knock on only. And here go Park House School. Knock on only. The knock on. Knock on only. Come on. I'm sure you can hear at home the uh, conversation being picked up between our referee and the players. Crouch. It's only the first game of the day, and uh, Bind. those types of conversations Set. occurring. That's good to hear. Good scrum from Out Seven Oaks. Reset only. Good ball. No matter how far behind uh, the scrum it goes, that's a lovely line cut. Lovely score. Two for this dashing number 20 in Parkhouse school colours. And he'll have all the points for his side. Parkhouse school ending as they started, but Seven Oaks in between were the better side and 28 points to 40. They win this under 18 Vars fixture. Good morning, an announcement of the 11.40 round of fixtures on the RE pitches in the girls under 16 tournament on RE1, Kings High School versus Langley School. On RE2, Dubai versus Didcot Girls School. On RE3, Bab Lake and King Henry VIII School versus Rygate Grammar School. On RE4, King's College Taunton versus Samuel Whitbread Academy. On RE5, the Maynard School versus Catrum School. 
on RE6, St. John's Leatherhead versus Bryn Gwen School, and on RE7, Rotepi versus Mill Hill and Belmont Schools. Those matches do get underway at 11.40. Our attention is now switched to the under 16 girls competition on RE2. Didcot Girls School against Dubai College. Both these two teams played a match earlier on today as well. Both of them won. So within this group, which includes Langley School and the King's High School for girls, well, they are the fast starters, the leaders in the competition and they'll be vying for top position in the group. Group winners mean you go through to quarter-finals in the under-16 girls' competition. So this could well be the match which decides which of these two teams goes through to the quarters. Dubai College, one of the many international teams that come down to Roslyn Park National School. So I say come down, they travel a little further than that, don't they? But they've been a familiar presence in different guises in the boys teams as well through the years and Dubai College in the darker jerseys and Didcot in the orange so Dubai securing possession strong carry through the midfield to go over halfway and the captain now looks to spread the play on the outside excellent covering tackling from Didcot's number seven. Big press as well from Didcot. Pouring through the middle and maybe taking the ball. Advantage is being played. Lovely little deaf slip of the ball there from Didcot's number eight and they'll work it to the edge. Good discipline in attack, making sure that Didcot stretched Dubai as much as possible. Just getting sucked into that physical battle as the tackles fly in from Dubai, and that's a brilliant hit. Searching to steal it. Still with Didcot. They've done well just to keep possession after the force of some of those tackles.
good scrum from Dubai. They're going to switch things up behind the scrum and look to profit on this left wing. Tackling is good from Dikot School for Girls. But the alignment excellent from Dubai and they've created a two on one here. Just looks to go herself rather than use the winger and Dikot have pinched it on the floor. Can they keep this in? Done well to get that out of a tight corner. Hi. High tackle from Dubai College. High, High tackle on the net. And they swarm the tight space as well, Digcott. Forcing Dubai to have to make numerous tackles and commit yep. to defenders. Penalised. It's going to bounce nicely. Bend and a step to the inside, and now needing Tackle. support. They realign really well. Dubai College and lovely dummy to then provide the pass, and it's a scoring pass. Dubai College with the first try after an arm wrestle between the sides. For nearly three minutes. No. Lovely zip on the attack here after they reloaded from the initial drive down the left. The alignment is good, the depth of running excellent, and that step delivered right on the gain line, allowing the supporting player to set her sights on the line. Almost everyone to the left for Dubai, but they go roughly down the middle. And so Dikot might open this up to the open side. Pinched on the floor by the try scorer, and they're on the attack again, Dubai. And it's a two on one, and there's a gap through the middle that had to be taken. It'll switch of play again, and maybe a rumble towards that try line. Work back across. What's another good fend and same results. <laughs> number one for Dubai College gets number two. <laughs> well, they hail from one of the other meccas of rugby sevens in Dubai. Place where the International Sevens has been held over 50 occasions in Dubai at the Seven Stadium. And here is really the only other turf outside of Hong Kong that could rival Dubai as a Sevens mecca. They really would be the top three, I think. Southwest London, these pitches here, the Richardson Evans playing fields, the Seven Stadium in Dubai and Hong Kong. You'd probably have to add uh, the birthplace of the game, wouldn't you, as well, oh, no. Melrose? Oh, no. I think that would be a, that might be a, a fair one to chuck in there. The list could go on though. Advantage. Might have to start compiling a list actually throughout the course of the proceedings across these five days. It's a nice bit of uh, homework for us all to have in our minds. I think we've got a top four, which is uh, which is a good place to start. Pressure. Did cut school for girls, not just in the scrum. Then the scrum half piles in, and it's another good turnover. Dubai College are hitting higher levels as this first half wears on. Great tackling back. Another good cover tackle from Dick Cott's 10. 
Well, she's been brilliant in scrambling and she saved her team there again. So Didcot will play it quickly with less than 30 seconds in this first half remaining. But a long, long way to go in this pitch. 95 meters and Dubai have it again. So can they just hold on for half time and stay in this game at 12 points to nil? Be very difficult if another try scored from Dubai, but that's where things look like they're going and it'll be a hat trick. A brilliant hat trick. Dubai, their number one. And she's been uh, a source of all the points almost in this uh, match, all the tries so far. Excellent beginning. So 17 points to nil at half time. Dubai College leading three tries to zip at half time. Both these teams having won their first games convincingly, and this does seem to be the battle to be the group leader, and therefore we would expect uh, the group winner ultimately. And it is the winner of the group which goes through to the quarterfinals. Dubai College in a great position. They look to have a, a fantastic organization about them in attack, especially in the discipline with which they attack no, with. But Didcot School for Girls have a great cohesion when they attack and they back each other up, get close to each other and keep the offloads flying. So just need to deliver that type of play, but a little further up the field. Out the back, lovely little pop pass to Didcot School for Girls speedster, and she has shown a clean pair of heels to get down that short side. But Dubai College eventually closed the door on her, and now they'll play away. Look at the way they realign so quickly. And it's a two on two here. Can they exploit that with a break through the middle and then the offload? And this will be a foot race here from halfway to the try line. Five on 11 and just enough to see off her chasers. <whistles> Defence turned into attack in the blink of an eye. Oh. Oh. 
It was a clear two on two here, and instead of just shipping it along the line, she knew she had the physical edge on her opponents and a little bit of distance, so she burst through, knowing that she could have offloaded, but in the end, she may have been able to run it in herself, but such was the force of her break. Going back for a second and then a third Tackle. tackler to beat. Number seven, five. Seven on the side. So looking to keep this pressure on now, Dubai College. And show their ruthless side. Big fend here. And then a second burst. And that'll be enough. Thank you very much. I'm off to the races. Really slick hands, and at this point, you knew that with the size which number three had on her opponent, she was likely going to tuck it into the back pocket and get that big right arm working. Deep kickoff and a good one too. It's going to bounce enough times to cause a few problems. Just about kept in. I remind you, if you're looking to stay across this group today, Langley School, the one of the other teams in this group against the Kings High School for Girls, they're on at 11.40 at the moment on the main pitch as well. So keep an eye on the score there to see how things play out. But both these two schools are in action later on at 1.20. However, neither team will be on one of the televised pitches. So have to keep an eye on results there but that's 120 to see the final group stages for both these schools and if Dubai College can see this uh, match through which from this point uh, you would back them to do this is a fine run however and they will be the uh, league leaders the group leaders rather which is good from Didcot School for Girls I'll get a penalty from the back of it. Now here is the danger runner. Seven. Tap the ball in front of me. That's okay. Plays provider. Doesn't go to hand, but that's okay. Good skills to pick the ball up. And now number seven goes off on a run of her own and needs support. Look at the defence again from Dubai College. They keep on coming. And they've fought hard for that penalty. And they just seem to drift into position so naturally to get their attack going. Driving through the middle, space spotted, and this will put the cap on the victory. Number six, and she will convert this herself, I'm sure. It's a squad effort, isn't it, Sevens? But you start to pick out a couple of three or four even in this side anyway, consistent performers who do most of the 
driving and attack and the leadership and Dubai College's number six try score here. It's certainly one of those, along with number one and their number and seven. So 38 points to nil. Dubai beats Didcot Girls side. School. And uh, they are the pace setters now in this under 16s girls group. So under 16s action coming up shortly. And do stay with us if you're looking to follow Kingsdale Foundation School or Bryn Kellenog Comprehensive School. On RE4, Luxemburg High School will play Quegg Penrith. On RE5, Kingsbridge Community College will play Cardiff High School. And on RE6, Wellington School will play Holyrood Academy. Those games due to get underway at midday. Kingsdale Foundation School against Bryn Kelenog Comprehensive School. The next match on our screens and our referee just getting his microphone ready so we can hear the conversation from the middle. Kingsdale Foundation School. Kick us off and uh, the Welsh side, Bryn Kelenog, kicking to touch. Kingsdale going back to where the line out was. Brinkelenog with a press defense, but that's left them a little isolated on the left wing. Switch on the edge. This is uh, confident attacking from Kingsdale. And they've managed to cause a rupture in the defensive line. And they're keeping the ball as well. So space again now on the right wing. Brinkelenog have regathered. Very good continuity from Kingsdale. And now there's a chance, a real chance on that left-hand side. Looking for support, though. Being careful not to get isolated. Three on one here for Kingsdale and a big step on the outside. And then back on the inside. They were patient and they built that attack with real determination. So Kingsdale off the mark. The first points scored today by Kingsdale Foundation School. They lost their first match against Royal Wooten Bassett Academy, 20 points to nil. But now on the board here, on 
RE2 under our camera's glare and they performed brilliantly here just to keep their nerve and their she has, she's coming. skills. Yes, you're kicking. And this was a lovely in and out, wasn't it? To go round the sweeper and then the cover defence beaten by number 10. Red ball. Now Bryn Kalenog, can they get on the ball here? They won their first match of this group and now showing what they're about in attack. Good tracking back, but still tucked under this left arm and weaving a blue and black mazy run around Kingsdale Foundation School. This is brilliant. What a tackle that is too, to shut that attack down. Still with Bryn Kalenog. counter-up and the Welsh school keep coming and with a similar level of patience and precision to what Kingsdale showed Brinkelenog now one-on-one -on -one here great tussle between two and eleven little blindside sort here can Brinkelenog reply and it is Punch and counterpunch between these two early on. It's good to watch. Red, can you leave someone behind the post for the ball? Five points apiece in this Anglo-Welsh encounter. Very smart kickoff, pinning Kingsdale right back. And here is the woman that made such a good cover tackle earlier on, Brinkelenog. And having to build from the baseline. that this match is uh, Rest of you back five. played out so far. Rest of you blue, back five. Uh, surely won't be time for, yeah, that's for Kingsdale to the score themselves if Brinkelenog can score five. here, at least for the rest of this first Set. half, because his tries have taken a while to come to break down their yep. opponent's defence. Maybe a quick strike here because there's some wheels on the corner and Kingsdale cover so well. Brilliant from number nine. Tackle, red, release. And stop just short. But there's the ball. There's the line. Kingsdale recover. And here again. Taken high above her head. Had to bring it down, and that's another super snaffle. And then powering forward, great drive. Well, Kingsdale, with 30 seconds remaining in this first half, can they make the breakdown fields? that gives them the score themselves. The tracking back is good. The cut has to be excellent. It is number 10 looking to dice up as she did earlier on. Release Tackles. But what a run and her teammates are there to support. And Bryn Kalenog still have two who haven't managed to get back on side. That's an important hand here. Now one on one again with the halftime hooter knocking. More good defense from Bryn Kalenog. Stirring stuff from both teams here. And here is Kingsdale's most dangerous attacker. Back. She kept that alive. And her teammates now looking to profit and maybe right through the middle. They'll go. Time off. But an injury. Sorry, I didn't see her. So time off. Uh, okay? Yeah. 
says Neil Sweeney, and everyone needs that time off in Brinkelenog ranks to just <laughs> breathe. And so at half time, it is seven points each. It is compelling, absolutely compelling between Kingsdale Foundation School and Brinkelenog Comprehensive. It is too close to call between Kingsdale Foundation School, Bryn Kalenog Comprehensive, and not just the scoreline, it's the way the two teams have played. Quite con similar styles, but with different personnel in different positions that mean that they have a, a variance to their threat. But Kingsdale here have really had to go through the motions, go through the no, phases no. to get their points. <laughs> Bryn Kalenog have been able to strike it a little bit quicker. But I just love the commitment that Kingsdale are playing with to try and get their first win at Roslyn Park. They lost their first game early this morning. But in Kalenog won their first game. So if Kingsdale can get the victory here, then it is going to be so tight for who tops this pool Leave and gets through to the quarterfinal. The Leave it. Kingsdale's ability to get the ball away under pressure has been really impressive. Back. And that's good speed now. And that's a lovely fend on the outside. But then the second attempt is good. Support is there. Pass doesn't go to hand. Five, roll. Bring Kalanog dive on the ball. Little stutter, then a go. And really good resilience in contact from Kingsdale's number six. What a wrestle this is. Tackle and they're going to secure the ball. Thank you. Being well ref this, actually, to keep that contest alive and yet be fair to the attacking side and defending side. Here come Kingsdale, their ball retention is so good. And they're just slowly ticking off defenders, and now a bit of speed might see them go in from distance. Just there, but, oh, a pass was it? No, off the leg. And so surely here, the try will come for Kingsdale. This is the breakthrough score to go under the sticks as well. Great presence of mind. Wow. The time on the ball, which Kingsdale are executing. There won't be a team possibly across the week here at Roslyn Park that has as much ball in play time as Kingsdale Foundation School. Because they're having to, it's how they play the game. They just keep it alive until there's no defenders left. This here, you thought, well, could have been a knock on. And I'm sure bring Kalenog fans watching will be thinking, why on earth Red, wasn't it? Kick. Neil Sweeney was there. It came off his leg, Red. came off the thigh. Red, I think kick. that's what the referee was thinking. I don't think below the waistline. Of course, in rugby, is not Whenever not a knock-on. Yeah. How can Brinkelenog reply? That is a tough, tough mistake Scrum. to have to process because it gives 
the red jerseys. Another chance to dominate play. It's 5 10. It is those two points which were missed from the kick, which could prove crucial for both teams. Bring Kalenov, no. They'll just have to go the distance, and they can do that with some of the speed in their side. Kingsdale. Nice swerve. Central position. And they're very flat, Kingsdale, but Good tackle. that's an excellent tackle. Good tackle. And Brinkelenog are there to secure yeah. the ball. That's pinched nicely. Was it out, though? Back ten. Neil Sweeney thought it was. Quick tap and go. That's excellent. Impetus put on the ball here. And then the step and Brinkelenog are free. There's two tracking back for Kingsdale. Brinkelenog, can they draw and pass? What a tackle once again from Kingsdale's number one. Entry she is a tracking back hero for her team today. Swerving, running, finding space, and now hitting the afterburners. It's all about where the touchdown is. Can she go under the sticks now? Whoa. <laughs> She's been their key attacking threat. A lot of pressure on this kick, but time to play. So there'll surely be more points in this game. You might fancy, but if there isn't, well, that is the kick that will win it for Bryn Kalenek. Time left. Two. This is great. The swerve we've seen already from this very balanced runner. But then the pace to go all the way around the outside. From the middle, please. Yep. Yeah. So Kingsdale with it all to do. Two points behind. We know they can do That's it from contest. anywhere. Good what a contest. And the try scorer has ripped it on the floor, looking for confirmation from the referee. And she's away again going laterally to then find the green space and maybe go on the outside. Instead, it's the support she needs. Holding on the floor. And Kingsdale have the ball. got there in numbers themselves now. Holding by so just Back over 10. a minute to play. Back 10. If Kingsdale are to progress from this group, they need to win this match. And there's a bit of space here. High tackle. High. Penalty only. Back ten. Here, nine, nine. Still all very close and flat, and that's the knock on which Brinkoleneg might not look back from because off and running is 21. What a desperate last attempt. And again, it's unbelievable defense. From Red Kingsdale's ball. number one, how many times has she bailed out an attack from Brinkoleneg with a super try saver? That's the best of the lot, however. Are we okay, 21? You're here. Thank Both you. players uh, taking their time after that one. Red, your ball. So You're just 10 in. seconds left or so for Kingsdale. Your ball. No, you've got to look, throw it in. You, you need two m minimum here. They've only got two. You need to drop one player. Yeah, thank you. Back ten reds. Ten back red. Blue drop. Yeah, just down the middle, please. Yeah. Can Kingsdale do it? Good. Line out secured. Kick ahead. Oh, it's given it straight back to bring Kolenek. And they can just see this home from here, but they'll look to try and score more points. A win would be a second win of today for bring Kolenek and put them in pole position for the next rounds. They've done it. The final whistle goes between two schools who have thrown everything at this. 
uh, it's been a brilliant school. game to watch Kingsdale Foundation School almost upsetting the group leaders Bryn Kalenag so close but not quite enough so they are the uh, group leaders still and in pole position now to go through as group winners but what a game we've seen on RE2 and on RE6, Robert Clack School versus the Kings of Wessex Academy. Those games due to get underway at 20 past 12. Epsom College against Northampton School for Boys, the next match on. Our attention's back to the under-18 bars competition. This should be a humdinger. Oh, NSB won their first match of the day against Fulham Boys School, 29 points to nil. Epsom College lost their first match to Christ College, 22-14. So it is the winner, and then there are lucky loser positions as well that will mean you can go through, but you need to be at the top of the group as much as you can to go through in this competitive under-18s VARS competition. 200 schools have come here today, and they'll be whittled down today, and Epsom want to be amongst them, but go through to the knockouts, and that's a wonderful fend, and then the speed comes in, but the coverage is so good. Tom Austin, though, that purring into the wide goes. channels. The number 10 for Epsom. Your mark, OK? Hold on, hold on. Shall I know? Your mark. Yeah, have it. And you're ready. That's good. NSB secure the line out. Oh. Ruben Hansen I'm in the middle. thrown up in the air. And what a week it's been for Northampton yeah, School okay. for Boys. The last seven days, their under-15s won the National Hello. Schools yes. Cup at Hello. Twickenham. Nine. With a comprehensive win over KCS Wimbledon. Set. Hold the push. But this is the turn of the under-18s. And they're not short of success in recent seasons either. So here they come, putting momentum on the ball out of their 22. Little flick through the back and then... A change of direction. Hansen loops this over. Good skills from the big man who won this line out earlier on and stuttering, stepping through the middle. And here come NSB looking to put points on the board for the first time. Great tackling back. Epsom pinch it. George Holmes who gratefully swallowed up the ball. And now Epsom in those classic white and blue jerseys for Epsom College will play away and comfortably unpicking defenders here as they go through the gears and Owen Beswick is the man in the red scrum hat. Oh, they scrambled well. Our Spanish referee uh, today making sure that there is not a quibble in terms of back chat. I'll be penalised if there is. So NSB back to this short side, making sure with Ollie Holiday, captain in that seven jersey, but Epsom will take it back and going all the way here from distance, striding forward. Callum Sharp, Epsom with the first score.
dinked over. Well, Sharp did it all himself. Stole the ball, placed the fend on Hansen, and then went into sprinter mode. Full chariots of fire stuff from Callum Sharp. Kick off from Tom Austin. Just made it 10. Could take up above his shoulder, but kept it alive. That was Ben Hunter. Epsom again with the ball. NSB being a little wasteful with their possession. Sharp. We had Ollie Holiday for company there. George Holmes. Fend after the big throw of the dummy. And now Austin can go. And there's a race on to the try line. It'll be won by Epsom. And won comfortably in the end by Tom Austin. Coolly done by Austin. And Epsom, 14 points to the good. Oh, the muscle men in midfield for Epsom. Softening up NSB here. And then the transition was good. Austin loitering and just waiting to get those fast fibers twitching. Northampton, school for boys. Looking to fire a shot for the first time in the match. Got their captain off the pitch, Ollie Holiday at the moment. He's stalking the touchline. Needs his team to get themselves into the game before half time. Minute to play. The pressure from NSB. But look at the distance on the pass as Austin now releases his winger. And this looks promising from Epsom again. Covering was good. was good. Run was from Harry Addington. And then Austin is the man to saunter this one home. And put an underline <laughs> under the score ahead of half time. to really set off with intent, didn't he? And tackling was good on the halfway, but Austin running the best support line diagonally through the red and blue jerseys. And Epsom get a better restart now. And looking to put that loss to Christ College behind them in their first game. Big intent here from NSB. Tackling from Addington. Harrison Abraham was motoring. There's Hansen. And NSB do keep the ball. The captain is back on in holiday. And he'll do this himself, will he? Yes. Looks for the line, doesn't get it down. Tracking back of the very highest order from Epsom. Sam War threw himself at Ollie Holiday and he trusted his luck and he got the knockdown. This is brilliant stuff. War comes out of nowhere on the blind side and then with a little extra nudge from Joe Patient, Epsom 
keep their line intact. 21 points to nil to Epsom College at halftime. So Tom Austin turns around, there's mud down the right leg and the right shoulder. And he's been in action in that first half. Two tries for Austin and Epsom three to the good. NSB with it all to do. And pinched again, Epsom away. Speed from Will White. And NSB survive that, and they might reply here because that's a two-on-one as they draw the sweeper. Holiday onto the inside to Harrison Abraham, who hits top speed. But the tracking back from War is excellent. Epsom excellence again. And they're going to escape down this five-metre channel and toy with the sweeper, eventually having to play on the inside. George Holmes. In defence and Sam War in defence. Those four and five numbers for Epsom are causing serious problems for NSB every time they think they can score. Callum Sharp, or rather NSB's number six, excuse me, Seb Henry, member of the Saints Academy. Hansen gets it onto Scuola, and Scuola's got power, and he keeps it alive. Going to Holiday again. Back to Luca Williams. Has a fly Good half job. in 15, so he Good looks job. to Good exploit the space well. Now, can NSB get on the board here? Scuola yeah. looks for the line, gets it, and NSB have five minutes or just under to try and claw their way back into Epsom College's territory. Our okay, first have to hit the conversion from a difficult angle for a drop goal. Will Nichols. <laughs> Sets it off. Doesn't make it, so from here... Well, things will be tricky here. But they'll have to chance their arm, NSB, and this is the type of play that can unpick Epsom. Really, Epsom College making their opponents go through phase after phase, having to score the try almost three times over. Just when you think you're going to get it, another tackle comes in. Scuola. Doing the job in the end, so... Epsom with ball in hand. McLeod, Seamus McLeod, good slip pass. And then keeping it to George Holmes, who looks on for Will Raymond. And NSB have it back, Epsom take it back. All the fun of the fair out on RE2. Both these teams in action later on as well in their third group games. If you're looking to catch up with that, 
they won't be on uh, televised pitches, unfortunately, but NSB will play Christ College and Epsom College will play Fulham Boys School. Christ College are in action at the moment with Fulham Boys School. They're in control of this group, really, having beaten Epsom College. So I have to keep an eye on their results if you're watching on from an Epsom perspective. And NSB, having won their first game, will really need a result against Christ College. Things could get really interesting in this group a little later on. And Epsom looking to seal this out. Sam Waugh going for the big flipper. Ted Hansen. Holiday. Hansen. Well, Ruben Hansen, I should say, called him Ted Hansen. Uh, huge apologies. Ruben Hansen. That's going to fall for War. And War striding home. A quick check so that there's no blind side coming for him. You know, the big man, he's been to the four in defence and in attack. That was nice. Pounced it, didn't he? And once he got a bit of daylight, he wasn't going to be caught. High kickoff from Epsom as they look to add more points to this. And they have time to do so as well. George Holmes, strong scrum, scrum half. Looks to go himself, there'll be space here. Just gets beyond the first man. But NSB, palm it back. And quite flat, their attacking line. So they have to engage with contact. And Epsom ball again. Holmes, jinx to the left and then releases Will White. Has to do marvellously well to keep that. And that's the benefit of just going through an extra phase because White is there. Can't take it. Red ball. Unlucky, guys. Five seconds, OK? Last play of the game. They're in the action now, aren't they, Epsom? They're on the board with this victory at Roslyn Park. They're contenders in this group now. It was a big pressure game for them. And they answered all those questions. And they're looking to put a few full stops on this one. Five, 28 points to five. Epsom College beat Northampton School for Boys. And their next match against Christ College will be one to keep track of on the online scores or from people here, wherever you can get hold of. Maybe you can get them to WhatsApp, WhatsApp you live. It's uh, 2 p.m. That's when things get interesting for Epsom and Northampton School for Boys again.
Well, we're back, ladies and gentlemen, for the continuation of the under-18s VARs here on RE2 at the Roslyn Clark National Schools Rugby Festival. Action here from Pool E, John Collett School against Duke of York's Royal Military College. It's the Royal Military College Backwards. with the kickoff claimed well by John Collett in the orange and navy. But a loose ball just lets that ball run wide. Ball has been touched. Well, that's a difficult start for John Collett against this uh, aggressive sure Duke of York side. They all how they got on earlier in the day. Line-out ball is won cleanly as they look to go to the wide channels straight away. And they're shrugging off defenders left, right and centre. And they will go over in the corner. <laughs> Kiefer Ige has scored really well, beating off two men. And it's a lovely finish in the end. Dream start for Duke of York. Well, a lovely first score. Great start to the game. Short line out move excellently executed and then played wide simple enough for Duke of York Dukies as they are affectionately known this of course is the second round of group fixtures both these sides were defeated in the opening rounds oh excellent work off the kickoff straight away excellent running by Liam Beer he's a large figure to play sevens but he's made ground really well there but We've it's a penalty, a unfortunately. And all of Liam Beer's hard work has been undone. As I was Very saying, St Paul's school were uh, victorious in the first round against Duke of York's military school, a 38-5 defeat. So big result there. Victoria College from abroad also saw off John Collett ball score 32 to 24. More points on the ball for them. Liam Beer putting in the tackle, show and go. Lovely footwork to break the line. Still going is Duke of York School. Lofted pass, loose ball. <laughs> that horse is looking to sweep it up, but there could be a card no, here. And there will be a card. And deliberate knock on is the call. And George Hooper, I believe, will be leaving the field for John Collip. So already a try down, and now a man down for two minutes. Brett Smith will get us underway quickly. Aggressive running once more from Duke of York. Patient play. Looks for the switch inside. Aggressive work from Moral Swain, but all backwards calls the referee. Could fetch a two on one on the outside. Kiefer Ige might not need anyone. Gets the offload aware. David Mboa has got one man. Mboa is dragged down. And it's swept up once again. Ben Louis. And they look to go wide here. Ben Kirlishian. Yes. Dragged down. Ball was out, called the official. Bit of disruption in there. You can't play the ball on the ground. They're playing the ball. It was Jan uh, <laughs> Kirlishian who Talk took contact for John Collett. Him and his brother Chuma are both playing at number four yes, and number fine. eight. They've both come the over floor. from Ukraine. The ball, then play for back obvious ball. reasons and uh, it's a lovely story for them to both be able to link up with the John Collett side here looking for their first win at the Ros National Tackle. Rugby Sevens here at Roslyn Park turnover in the breakdown however great work by Blessings Afalabi and they come back to this far side now a bit of space opening up gathered well by Dave Mbawo and the Duke of York's Royal Military School have scored their second try here. Well, they're performing second. They've already done better than they did in that opening round of fixtures when they only managed the one try against Duke of York's Royal Military School, but they've looked very impressive so far. 
ruthless, really. So shaping up to be a tough group, St Paul's School and Victoria College with very impressive performances, both in their opening round of fixtures. So these two sides both fighting for a top two position to progress through to tomorrow's group stage, which is how this uh, bars competition will shape up. Well gathered. Ryan Barlow and a lovely finish. Duke of York with a kickoff. Cleanly taken this time by Ben Louis. Ben Louis is looking out the first tackle. Offloading well to Hawes. And Hawes will break the line here. Great footwork once more. One man to beat. A lovely offload to George Morrill Swain. Turned over on the floor, however. Duke of Yorks will come away with it. It's been nudged through. There's no men back in this counter attack. And it's been picked up well by Brett Smith. It will saunter in. Duke of York's Royal Military School's third try. And in the end of this first half, the game just slowly slipping away from John Collett. John Collett just didn't have the uh, support that was needed. Side from Wendover. There's an easy run in for Brett Smith. Just went to the boot, saw the uh, backfield was in disarray. An easy finish on number 18. And a bit of pace has just been taken out of the game at this stage. But no lead is insurmountable in the game of sevens, not with so much rugby left in this tie as we come to the closing stages of the first half. Really aggressive contact. It's in that wide channel. Duke of York piling on the pressure. Taku! John Collett go to the short side. Flick back in field. Really loose play from both sides, really. Still feeling the effects of their uh, defeats in the first round of fixtures. But Louis Beer with a show and go. Beats the first man, and it's a lovely offload away. The moral swain. Beer's back on the ball. Pause. Still playing his Underwood, the captain. Tackle! Tackle is the call. Clear release by Smith. Finally ripped off the field. And, time's up. and that will be a rather anticlimactic end to what has been a very exciting first half here at the under 18 Vars competition. The Duke of York's Royal Military School have looked far more dangerous in all areas of the field with their tough tackling and ruthless finishing. John Collett's School have a lot of work to do in this second half. We'll be back very shortly for the second half of the second round of fixtures in the Vars competition for the under-18 boys here at the National Rugby Schools Festival. Well, the uh, Duke of York's Royal Military School from the east coast of England have just been uh, very ruthless in these opening exchanges between themselves and John Collett, something that we didn't see in their first fixture when they were defeated heavily by St Paul's School. But St Paul's, of course, very impressive rugby institution 
at this age group. John Collett School still has plenty to offer in this second half. And they'll get us underway from the kickoff. This must be contestable. In 10 minutes, time at one o'clock, the Riera. And it is a very contestable kickoff, but away will come the Duke of York's Royal Military College steaming towards the post. It's Sal Maka. Looks to go all the way. An excellent tackle. But a clean offload to Stanley Bull, who will profit off Sal Maka's excellent work. The perfect start. The Duke's in this second half. And the heads are just a little bit down from John Collett, who still have plenty of time to get themselves back into this game. As Stanley Bull will look to add the extras, and he does with a clean conversion. Perhaps the right man for Sal Maka to offload. It was from the kickoff, found a bit of space, get those legs pumping, but fantastic work, really, to get back and make that covering caffle covering tackle. Simple enough offload. Sal Maka to make, did really well, really clean. And the game may just be on. Be beyond John Collett now, but we will wait and see. Things can change very quickly, the momentum could swing either way. Here in the Sao with the kickoff this time. Just over everyone. But it's not straight out, so it'll be line out ball for John Collett to play with. Just under five and a half minutes left to go in this second half. A win here for Duke of York's Royal Military School will mean that they uh, will have to see off Victoria College in their final group game in order to find a space for themselves in the top two. That, of course, if St Paul's school fail to beat John Collett. But on form so far, it looks like a very long afternoon ahead for John Collett. Still with plenty of time left to play in this game, however. From inside their own half, they look to build. The pass just finds the middle of two players, but still they come forward as a lovely offload and a great change of direction. And this could be the moment for John Collett. This could be the switch and the mo momentum that they needed. And it's Ben Lewis who goes all the way from inside his own half. Important moment for John Collett. Their first score in front of our cameras today. Despite conceding 33, they did put 24 points on uh, Victoria College. We know they have that scoring potential in them, but is there time left for them to surmount this 21-point gap? That's three converted scores. John Collett are now chasing as a lovely offload there. Drew three defenders in, and Ben Lewis just had the pace. See off his unrushing defender. Don Elpwen stayed with him all the way, but uh, John Collett now with perhaps a bit of momentum. Hooked into the wide channel once more. Very contestable kick. The captain was herring after it, but uh, away come the Duke of York's Royal Military College. There's a man over here, but unfortunately spilled. Well gathered by Kiefer Ige. But a knock-on is the call. On me. Comes on me. Must bind over, you can't bind under. Bind over the top. Crouch! Bind! Well, there's a scrum here then for Set. John Collett, who will restart this game. Big tackles in there from Duke of York, but shrugged off well. John Collett looked to retain right, possession right. just inside Duke of York's 15. Liam Beer caught in possession. Offload out the back, but it could have been intercepted there. And it has been turned over 
and steaming away go Duke of York once more. And it's going to be Dom Upwin who might finish in the corner here. He's under pressure from John Collett's captain, looks to drag him away, but a great finish. Well, what a lovely finish that was, and that may well put the game beyond John Collett. Joining me, of course, now is Kim Oliver to talk us through that score. What a lovely finish that was down the right-hand side. Yeah, wonderful finish. Um, just the way they kept the ball alive, and then and then uh, a really good, really good run down the wing, and a really strong finish. Well, lovely stuff. Thank you so much for being with us here today, repping the Ealing Trail Finders, of course. Yep, always. Uh, yeah, so I coach at Henley College, and we're we're going to be here on Thursday. Um, in the Ace League, so looking forward to that. Very impressive Henley College side. Of course, Ealing Trailfinders are here with their own stand, of course, set up along with uh, Brunel University, looking to recruit. Do head over and have a chat to them at any point. If you are on ground throughout this very long week of rugby. In the boys bars under 18 tournament. Now, of course, we've seen uh, Rosen Park love to talk about the, uh, the level of international pedigree that comes with the tournament, the amount of international players that come through. But with the expansion of the women's tournament again this year, bringing in this under-16 tournament, which we'll be seeing later on in a few games' time, the stage is really set for Rosen Park to start breeding not just all these male international players, but as well like women's sides coming through from schoolboy to university, which is where the big gap is at the moment. And yeah, so we, we've actually we've watched a few games, tournament. we've seen there's a, a college over from Dubai, there's a lot of colleges here from, from Wales, um, it's, it's really good to see the women's game or the, and the girls game growing um, year on year, so it's, it's really exciting time to be a part of it to be honest. Well that was a fantastic score as we were talking from the Duke of York's military college who have really put this game to bed there, it was a great turnover in the midfield and then simple hands into the wide channels and the man who got us all started, Kiefer Rige, has just finished off a lovely score. Ruthless stuff Game from the Duke restart. of York's military college and we'll have time for just the restart. He was just stripped in the contact. That's a lovely footwork from Nassau. Time and then up, simple yeah. hands, really. A good fend. That's all it took. Yeah. Time is up now. Well, that's time up on this fixture. We'll see what uh, John Collett can play with in these closing stages. Played well in the air. And they will look to finish with a flurry. Ball still in play. Beer standing over it. Wide is the call from the sideline. Tackle! Hands really away! Aggressive rugby from Duke of York. Lovely cut inside. Still going is John Collett. Still in, still in. Determined to uh, finish this game with something positive. They've shown sparks throughout the fixture, but that pass has just gone forward. And that will bring an end to it. And the Duke of York's Military College have kept their chances of progressing through to the uh, next round of fixtures tomorrow alive, really, with their big win here over John Collett's school. We may see their uh, Vaz chances slipping away from them. Well, it was a rather one-sided game in the end. Yeah, unfortunately. Um, you know, I think uh, the main thing is that they just stuck at it. John Collett stuck at it the whole time and kept kept going. So it uh, made it more competitive. Both these sides still have rugby to play, of course. John Collett up against St Paul's School. who had a commanding victory over the Duke of York in their first game. But things can change fixture to fixture in big tournaments like this. Duke of York will be hoping that's the case as they go into their last game against some pools. Well, we'll be back very shortly for more under-18 Vars rugby here on RE2 Pitch 2. Up next in this game, it's going to be KCS Wimbledon against Claysmore in the second round of pool fixtures here. The rugby sevens.
Well, it's another round of fixtures here at the uh, under-18s Vars. It's Claysmore up against KCS Wimbledon. Another big game, second round of pool fixtures. This is where the uh, games really decide the rest of your afternoon. This is Group G we're now into. <laughs> Turnover now for Claysmore in an attacking position. They'll have a scrum. Claysmore with victory in their first game over East School, Giffen come Rumney. Welsh school from the Rumney Valley. Nelson College, the other school in this group. Nelson College over from New Zealand registered a 17-10 win over King's Col College School, Wimbledon. But uh, a very close game between Giffen come Rumney and uh, Claysmore School. 19-17 it was. Conversion is all that was in it. Here is Claysmore. The AJP with a throw. Squires goes to the toe. Howard Grant goes herring after it. Touchdown well by KCS Wimbledon. You want a scrum or you want a drop out? Drop out. 22. Drop out was the decision. KS, KCS Wimbledon will clear their own lines. Plays more will be uh, desperate to for their second win. Excellently claimed by Wimbledon who look to go to the edge. This could be the moment for Wimbledon. There's no men anywhere near him. And KCS Wimbledon will steam in unopposed. It was quite simple in the end, just fantastically worked from that <laughs> drop kick. Can you kick from inside? Inexplicably claimed in the air by Wimbledon's number four, and then it was just simple hands into the outside channel. Very difficult in the game of sevens because of how rare those dropouts are really to get properly set and cover every area of the field. Claysmore were unable to do that and currently trail by seven. It was excellently well done to claim in the air. It's good draw and give. Textbook sevens, really. Yep. And in the end, it was a lovely score. Offside. Well, offside is the call from the kickoff, so Claysmore will go quickly. It's Arthur Moore taking contact. Good offload. Back to Moore. Moore's through the centre. What a response this is. <laughs> Outstanding work from Claysmore once again, and it was all Arthur Moore, really. Great interchange from him. Hit the gap well. Conversion is good. And we're all, elite. We're all even once more. How quickly can things change in the game of sevens? Sheer determination from Moore. Great offload to Squires. Back to Moore. Just between two men. And back on level terms. And it will be that man, Arthur Moore, to get us underway once again in the under-18s Vars here at the Roslyn Park National School Sevens. A testing kick. Straight out, unfortunately, is a call. So we'll have another free kick the very same position that uh, Claysmore just equalised from. No ball available, a time for Claysmore to catch their breath and set their defensive line. The game's been frantic so far. Wimbledon take it to the short side. Big contact in the midfield. Ball was just knocked on there in contact. Hamish McQueen was penalised for. Uh, sorry, Zav Cook was penalised there for uh, Crawley on the floor, but they had a knock on advantage. So it will be KCS Wimbledon to get us underway. First scrum of the day here Crouch. for uh, either side on our cameras. Boy. KCS Wimbledon have possession. Fed by Cook. Clean ball. Little switch play as they take it to the wide channels. And it's all the way into the hands of Barnett. Barnett's dragged down excellently well. And Squires goes fishing for it in the scrum and he's turned and the ruck and has turned it over. And now they could break. It's Moore once more who breaks the first tackle. Still going is Moore. Ambitious offload. Sorry, I guess touch the ball. No quick line out. Touch 
Well, that was a lovely bit of lovely turnaround there, and Moore did really well. Yeah. Good attempt at the offload, not enough depth in the uh, Bazemir attack. And this is a thrilling game of rugby, one of the closest we've seen all day. This whole group, of course, has been very close so far. On the white line, please. Thank you. Short line out. Lovely offload from Saunders. And the ball's played away. And through the tackle, burst Matt Yields. Spilled, unfortunately, though. The AJP will put it to the shoe. And now there's a chase on. Platt is the one man back for Wimbledon. Does very well to beat the first two men. Hugo Platt sells the kick, doesn't use it. And turned over on the floor, not releasing. You saw Hugo Platt pull the ball back into his chest. Moore. Swings it wide. Great offload out the back. Squires hits the line hard, picked at the base by Vincent, who breaks the first tackle. But it's been turned over on the floor again, this time by KCS Wimbledon. Cook is in a, a real hurry to get us underway. Saunders goes herring away, sells and goes. Here is Saunders looking for options, lifts it well. Matt Young, turned over again, this time by Moore. Neither side can hold on to possession, but this time Claysmere could break away. Howard Grant looking to go all the way. Pulled back by Sonny Dillon. And again, it's been turned over at the base. But this time the call is forward. And uh, with no support around him. Well, it was going to be a wonderful attacking set piece for Claysmere, but. Half time is the call, and what a frantic end to end game of rugby we've had so far. Neither side really holding on to possession for long enough to stamp their authority on this game, but still plenty more to come as we look forward to the second half of this thrilling under 18 Vars fixture between KCS Wimbledon and Claysmore. Both sides looking to continue their campaign in the Vars as strong as can possibly be. couple of tired legs across both sides these days are so demanding on uh, all the players involved but there's still so much rugby to play especially in this group which is so undecided Nelson College and Claysmore both would want to win a piece both by incredibly fine margin If KCS Wimbledon can get a result here, then they back themselves to get a result against Iskol Giffen Cum Rumney. We'll wait to see what their result is against the mighty Nelson College of New Zealand. Excellent offload right from the start. Perhaps one too many, but excellently taken that by Simba Ingram. Number four Ingram took it, number four Ingram took it so well. And Moore will play away. This is a lovely attacking set to start the half. Moore from Moore was through two Knocked tackles. Knocked back by Reg. Excellent tackle by Ingram. <laughs> and enforced the turnover. Oh, Neo Mitsuashi has won the ball back, and Theo JP goes to this short left hand side. And it's another yeah. try. Ollie Vincent 
yes. will eventually crash over and score after a wonderful tap tackle on the far side, but a lovely score from Ollie Vincent to put Claysmere in front on the side from Wimbledon Trail. Conversion is no good, but Claysmere will take the five point advantage. A really, really lovely, well worked score. Lovely hands all around. Big contact in the wide channel, but excellent work to get back to the feet. The side from the southwest currently take the lead. Saunders with a big physical contact off the kickoff. The OJP does so well to take him down. Show and go by KCS Wimbledon. They're building really, really great momentum here. Through the tackles they go once more until it's finally spilled. Hugo Platt was so unlucky there, but backwards was the call, so still in possession. And this is a lovely breakaway from KCS Wimbledon. And finally, the score. <laughs> well, KCS Wimbledon will feel like they deserve that after their uh, excellent attacking build-up play, but what a finish in the end by KCS Wimbledon. A really lovely try and a lovely finish as well to put them in perfect position to convert in a game as fine as with finer margins as this, the kick is so important, and that is two crucial points for KCS Wimbledon. It's just great work to keep the ball alive by the likes of Jay Battier. And Sam Barnett finally through the hole. They fed the ball, and KCS Wimbledon have scored right under the post. Just perfect play from them. Really great sevens overall. And Zav Cook will get us underway. Claysmere in need of a response. They now trail by two, despite having more of the uh, possession in this fixture so far, you'd argue. More is sucking in defenders as he has all day. Ingram on the short line to Squires. Great offload back to Ingram, and they look to go to the wide channels. Oh, a little show and go by Howard Grant, who looks to take on his man. Dragged down in the end, and now it's Jason near to Nia Tuku on the chase. Scrum is the call. Jason Nia Tuku saw his name go up in lights there, but this is a fantastic opportunity for Claysmore. In the closing stages of this second half here, KCS Wimbledon fighting for their first defeat of the first win, sorry, of the pool stage following their defeat to Nelson's College of New Zealand. Crouch! Find! Set! Well, it was easy scrum ball now, and away go. Plays more. Squires just shrugs off his man. One step and he's over. A wonderful finish that is from Claysmore. To the jubilation of their supporters around us here in the uh, next gen tent. Really lovely stuff there. Wasn't very clean out of the back of the scrum, but uh, excellent work. And Squires has dotted down, put Claysmore back in front with two minutes to go. Hello. <laughs> 17-14, currently the score. This is a crucial kick. That's great connection. One and a half minutes. Not converted is the decision made. Good work out the base of the scrum. Ingram just cuts back inside. They reach the wide channels. 
shrugs off one man, a great step. To the Eddie Wang, the number eight. But KCF Wimbledon have possession. Pays a shit. And they take possession there through Max Robinson. Show and go by their number seven, Sammy Dillon, who breaks the line really well, looking for support. It's on in the wide channels. Penalty advantage. KCS Wimbledon have only seconds remaining. Saunders gets the game underway. They trail by three. Out, 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 out the back it goes. This could be the moment for KCS Wimbledon to steer the game away from Claysmore. This could be their first win of the Roslyn Park National School Sevens with only 20 seconds remaining. A great finish by Hugo Platt. He's been working so hard today for KCS Wimbledon. On RE6, St John's School, Leatherhead will play Catron School. And on RE7, Lampath will play Quest Henry. And that is so game, calls the match official. And this was the final moment. Saunders, who was so crucial for the first try, flicked it out the back. And Hugo Young went in unopposed. He had the pace to beat the very impressive Arthur Moore and wins the game for KCS Wimbledon who keep their hopes of progressing through to that championship group tomorrow alive. The top two groups in each pool will make it into the group stages themselves. Plays more full to KCS Wimbledon who have a big task ahead of them to take down Iskall Giffen Cum Rumney to guarantee themselves a place in the cup. Claysmore, on the other hand, have Nelson College up next. A very, very tough set of opposition for both these sides on the hunt to make it into those Vars champion groups tomorrow. Well, we return next to the Under-16 Cup competition. Some Pool C action, King's College Taunton against Rygate Grammar School in the Girls' Under-16 Cup. We'll be back very shortly for that fixture. Well, it's the under 16. Well, it's the under 16's cup competition here on pitch RE2 on day one of the Roslyn Park Sevens. Rygate Grammar School up against King's College Taunton. Rygate Grammar School enjoyed it. Uh, this is their third game in the group. They enjoyed a. Uh, 21 all draw in their first game, which was a fantastic encounter before beating Bad Blake and King Henry VIII School 35 5. King's College Taunton with one win Forward. and one loss Scored in their Lattis first Blue. two games. So, Rygate Grammar School currently back. top this group. And if they win Backwards. here, they will go through as group winners into the next round of the cup competition. It is Rygate in possession with another good handoff. Great offload play from Rygate. Bit of space in the wide channel now if they can use it. They've still got one player over if they wish to use her. Great cut back inside to beat the first defender. Lock on. But a really excellent tackle by King's College Scrum Taunton. Advantage. Scrum advantage, so King's College Taunton will play over. the little show and go, the little goose step. Excellent tackle, however. Rygate Grammar School will claw back possession inside up, their own half lads gents can you move your stuff back a bit please it's all right well a thrilling start to the game this is crucial for both sides king's college taunton need a win here to progress to the next round of the cup competition 
They're in a group with Samuel Whitbread and Bab Lake and King Henry VIII School. Blue ball. Samuel Whitbread currently on four points, having drawn just and won. You don't won. all have to come in, just get someone in. And someone, in, someone has to go in here as they well. They beat King's College Taunton 22 7. Blue. So Bab Blue, Lake and King Henry VIII School on line. zero points, having lost. One in there. To King's College Taunton in the first game, 25. So they've scored plenty of points already in this tournament. Of Taunton. It's Rygate who will come away with it from the set piece. Change of angle, some direct running. The ball knock has on. forward. Knock on is the call. Knock on by Blues, come back. And they made it just up to their 15 before the ball was turned over. Here's your mark, can we come? Black ball. Take a step. Oh, yes, you're fine there. Nine, are you coming in or not? Then you come then. Ladies, the mark's here. Well, the best opportunity perhaps so far Crouch. for King's College Taunton with a set piece Find. inside Rygate's half. Set. They are desperate for a win here that would put them on six points and put them above Rygate. But it's been Roll turned 15. over at the scrum. You've got to get out faster. And King's College Taunton Hansen. have been penalised from that set going, piece turnover. Rygate now really with the advantage, a little show and go. Roll 15, get, get out. into the half. Good contest at this breakdown, but it comes Rygate's way. Backwards. Just lacking a bit of go forward so far, Rygate, but good direct running from 14. Once again, the yeah, offload so is behind the player. And once again, these offloads just aren't going to hand for Rygate. Knock and it really on. is slowing down there. Attacking play. So unfortunately there, King's College Taunton will have another set piece in the same position they had one previously. Another opportunity for King's College Taunton to open the scoring here. Three and a half minutes in. One or the other. To the final pool encounter here. So Samuel Whitbread Academy currently playing Bab Lake and King Henry the eighth school on another pitch. If they win that game. Set! And Drygate lose, they will top that group. And King's Challenge Taunton will progress. Knock on. Just knock a knock on, on at first receiver, okay. unfortunately. And neither side has really bedded themselves into this game. So Please important for these two sides if they wish to progress any further in this competition. That's fine now. A win for Rygate. Crouch! Bind! Set! Well, a big contest in the scrum, but Taunton have come away with it, and this time it's held at first receiver and breaks through three tacklers and four, but stripped yeah, by stripped the final the contestant, stripped by Rygate. Backwards. You see why they were so keen to use their number five, King College Taunton. Backwards yeah, is the call the by the referee, so the ball is available to whoever will grab it. It's with the number five once more. Excellent running nines from King Lock College on. Taunton. <laughs> and offside Seven is the call. In front. Here's your mark. Go back, Black. Back. Keep going. Well, Rygate will come away with it. An excellent show and go. And a change of direction. Just a slip there in midfield. But they've carved out a bit of space in the wide channels now. Where go Rygate? Down this near side. But the Black ball is up. loose. And it'll be a line out for King's College Taunton. Rygate just unable to break away from their first half. Blue, this is your mark, OK? In their, uh, in their own half, sorry, in this first half. Take the line as you. You're on there, OK? You're standing there. So. King's Swallows Taunton with the line out. They've sorted out their scrum as we work our way through this first half. See if the line out will progress. Claimed well by King Swallows Taunton. Little basketball pass over the top, but that one is forward. They like to use their number five as their strike runner off set piece. You can see why. It's a scrum. Effective running lines, but for that forward pass will be a scrum. Here's your mark. As both sides make some changes. Crouch! Find! Set! Rygate Grammar to feed the scrum. Shoots out this near side. And then just an injection of pace as Rygate take it to the line. And they're in behind a few defenders. Sorry, one. Excellent change of direction just to make some good meters. Number 14 just shrugs off another tackle. 
<laughs> Very inventive pass by Rygate. One too many as the ball goes behind them once more. Just a little knock on on the Unfortunately, there, just a knock on either side, really able to carve out any uh, consistent Rob. phases here. But good progression made by Rygate up the yeah, field. Fine. Still no scores in this Crouch. part of the game. We've yet to have a game that uh, remains scoreless Set. at half time, I believe. But King yeah, Scholars talked about it to change that as they break from inside their own half. It's a lofted ball forward. They take it back towards the short side. Beats the first defender, beats the second. And what a massive tackle that is. Fantastic work by Rygate Grammar School to end that King's College Taunton attack. And the score will remain nil all as we go into this break. A really tight game between two sides desperate for a win in their final group game. All to play for in Pool C here at the Under-16 Cup competition for the women's. King's College Taunton currently level with Rygate Grammar School with seven minutes left to play. We'll be back very shortly for the second half here at the Rosen Park National School Sevens. Well, we're back here for the second half of this uh, final game in Pool C of the Under-16 Cup competition for the women's side. Currently no tries apiece between Rygate Grammar School and King's College Taunton. King's College desperate for a win to keep their hopes of progressing through this Backwards. competition alive. Second one was forward. Second one Rygate Grammar School currently top this pool, but only on points difference over Samuel Whitbread Academy, who they drew with earlier in the morning. Once again, Rygate Grammar School love to inject some pace. They take it to the line, but turned over. So King's College Taunton will play away once more from the set Bye. piece, just a touch inside their own set. half. Clean scrum. And down the short side go King's College Taunton. Drew in a few defenders. And great KBA to keep the ball alive. Simple hands will do it in the wide channel. Roll blue. Off a leg. Loose offload but it is still in the possession of King's College Taunton as they look to find an edge. Backwards. Unfortunately, just spilled once more, so away come Rygate Grammar School. There was a no, hand in the there place. from just in the tackle. King's College Taunton. So now Rygate will have the chance to exit. Just a scrub. Now, if the scores remain level, that will be enough for Rygate Grammar School to progress through to the next round of this competition. And it Gross. may be enough for King's College Taunton, Fine. depending on the Samuel Set. Whitbread Academy result. Yeah, the ball's out. However, they are looking very strong, that Samuel Whitbread side, with two undefeated so far. Interception by King's College Taunton, just outside the 22. Great work to keep the ball alive once more. Backwards. Both Back sides just looking advantage. too narrow so far. Advantage Spoiling over. The tackle. Rygate come away with it as they look to go to an edge. And this could be the moment for Rygate Grammar School. A great finish. <laughs> Both sides looked far too narrow at that point Take of play. Kick. And it was capitalised by Rygate following that turnover. A great score as they look to add the extras. Just off the bar. So 5-0 is the current score. Rygate lead. Great wheels on this wide channel. 
bit of broken play, just spotted the space on the outside and a lovely finish. Whenever you're ready, Blue. Really Let's excellent go. work from Rygate, who are in Can no rush run. at all to get the game underway. There's some tired legs here on either side as Rygate Grammar School look to top their pool here at the National School Sevens at Roslyn Park. Lock on, a massive advantage. tackle Leave coming in from the number floor. seven. And Rygate play away with it. Third advantage from the black knock on that pass was forward. Forward pass calls the referee. That was a huge defensive hit. Really Scrum important. Hit. Blue ball. Exactly the kind of uh, black knock on and then blue forward defensive pass. play you need in a game with, of such fine margins. Just three and a half minutes to go here, King's College Taunton. We're in need of something to turn this game around. Rygate Bro. will have scrum possession Bye. in midfield, just outside Set. their 22. Rygate come away with it. Excellent running from first receiver to draw in the defenders. Picked up well by the 14 backwards. in the wide channel. Always backwards, calls the official. But King's College Taunton have dived on it bravely as they look to break from inside their own 22. Good work to keep the ball alive. Backwards. Always backwards once more, They'll calls the referee. Backwards. And it's a messy offload this time. They'll Putting go backwards. themselves under yeah, lots of pressure. Rygate come away with it. Got to let go of the ball, seven. King's College Taunton. A let off there, really. They were just a bit too Good frantic point. in their play. Perhaps a bit too aware of their need to uh, turn the score around. Lock on. Knocked on once more, Come though. Blue. This Rygate defending is really the difference between the two Manage sides. Over. A lovely offload, but just can't be held. So King's College Taunton once away, will break away. There's only one score in it. It's King Charlie Taunton where the first tackle. Great offload to keep the ball alive once more. Still got quick ball for King Charlie Taunton. Backwards. They can use it. But once again, the balls just don't go to hand. Still going backwards. And you feel Rygate could pounce on this pressure, or King's College Taunton could break. And once again, it's Not a wonderful tackle blue. in the wide Back channel that is the difference the between these two sides. What a crucial intervention that was by Rygate Grammar School just when you thought King's College lot, Taunton like. might break away and go the distance. Close the gap a tiny bit. Drop, flat. We've got to at least make well, an attempt. Not to straight is the line out call. Option. It's uh, not common that that call is given line. in the game of sevens, but Good ball now. completely fair That's enough to our referee. Scrum again or line. Line again or scrum. So it will be line out or scrum for King's College Taunton this time. And this is perhaps their Same final level. opportunity. Take a step, you have to be. A huge moment level. this will be for King's College Taunton, currently trailing by five. Back you go then, Blue. Back you go then, Blue. Rike at the moment will top got Pool C, well. regardless of other yeah, results. Claimed by King's College Taunton, who look to turn and break away, but Rygate once again defend ferociously. King's College Taunton looks to take it to the edge. Roll, Blue! They just don't have the width at the moment to get outside of Rygate Grammar, Lock who on, once again advantage. have pounced on the scrappy play as they have been doing all game. And they've turned it over once more. Great work to the free the ball. Over. And Rygate could look to kill the game here as they go to an edge. Roll, Black, get out of there. Let go. <laughs> you can't play the ball on the floor. You've got to get out quicker. Well, it's a penalty for Royal Grammar School. School. I think uh, lacking support, they got very lucky there. This could be the uh, best penalty. opportunity Drop, of the game. Drop. You have to be 10. You can go whenever. Rygate Grammar School to back. end the game. There's a bit of space to run into whenever. right in front of the Rygate player. But they go wide with quick hands. And now they cut back across the short side. It's a one-on-one -on -one to the line. Roll back, roll. Same Not again. rolling Portion once again. Got to get out of the way. It's Penalty the same here. call by Box the referee. Box here. It's got to leave your hands, okay? Tap quickly Penalty once more. Advantage. Not ten. We're past the end of the game here, but Rygate will look to finish strongly, and they should saunter in now. And finally, <laughs> after a whole heap of pressure, Kings College Taunton being kept in their own half for the majority of this game. Rygate Grammar School have doubled their advantage Seven. and see Thanks themselves topping this group, regardless of Samuel Whitbread's results no, okay. against 
Bab Lake and King Henry VIII School. Well, that will bring an end to this fixture here on RE2 at the Roslyn Park National School 7's well Royal played, Grammar Rygate Grammar School have topped the group, while King's College Taunton unfortunately just miss out on a place in the next round of the Cup competition. There's more action from the conclusion of the group stages here at the Roslyn Park National School 7's. Up next, it's Wellington School, that rugby institution, up against Cardiff High School in their final group games here at the National School 7s at Roslyn Park in the under-16 cup competition. Well, we're back for the uh, penultimate round of the final round, even, of uh, pool fixtures here. This is Group F. It's Wellington School up against Cardiff Higher School. Both sides yet to record a win here at the uh, under-16s cup competition. Both sides will not be progressing in this competition, but still very keen to get themselves underway. And that kickoff is claimed well by Cardiff. I'm joined by Lulu, one of the Cardiff players. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for having me. And it's a turnover there for Wellington, who looks to break away in this wide channel. So Edith Rees, the number eight, breaking through the contact. This is a great run by Rees. Good offload two to Crow. Crow to the short side. And Crow will open the scoring. Well, that is a lovely score in all fairness. A great run by Rees, who broke through plenty of tackles and uh, then to the short side to score. But we'll talk more about uh, Cardiff High School's uh, involvement throughout the day. Have you enjoyed being in uh, Roslyn Park's National School 7s? Yes, it's been um, really fun. We've um, played a few games now. We've played two games, and this is our third one, our final one. Yeah, of course, we're in this group, of course, Kingsbridge Community College and uh, Holyrood Academy are both on six points. Uh, Kingsbridge Community College with a 46-0 and 44-0 wins. So they were a very impressive team. Very good teams, very hard to play against. So they're a great side as we look forward to the uh, penultimate rounds of this cup competition where the winners will be decided. But Cardiff High School and Wellington School both looking for something to take home with them in this fixture with that deep kickoff. So it was a long drive up to uh, Roslyn Park. Yeah, very long. Um, three hours, no, closer to four hours it took us. There's sides from all over the place. We've got um, Nelson's College come over from New Zealand. We've got Dubai? Uh, with the, the, the yeah. Jess at Dubai College and uh, the Jess 
Arab Ranchers School both coming over from Dubai. Doesn't make Cardiff seem that far no, away. It doesn't you know, really. that's it. No, it was. It definitely was. Made a similar journey myself from Bristol uh, yesterday. We've come from far and wide for some of the best <laughs> rugby sevens there is to find anywhere in the world at school level. And the, the, the introduction of the under-16 girls competition, uh, you must think it's a great step forward for someone like yourself who wants to play women's rugby. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Like, it's, we've never had opportunities like this before to play in big tournaments like this. So I think it's good that they've gotten under-16s to start playing. But of course, we'll have all the action from the under-18s. Mm -hmm. Women's Cup as well come Thursday and Friday. But this is great work by Crow, who wants more from the base of that scrum. It's a really lovely finish. Not much you could do about a hard direct running like that. Of course, uh, Cardiff High School, 17-24 against Holyrood Academy. That was a much closer game. Yeah, much closer. The first half was a bit, we were a bit like nervous at the start, I'd say. But with the second half, we played a lot better. And how much rugby have you played together as a side? Not very much. We haven't had um, too many training sessions, but we've only played in a few tournaments now. But it's good to get that experience. Think by the time Definitely. you're back here at the under-18 yeah. level. I've been um, speaking to the girls about an under-18s team as well. Well, it's good to see that progression in the game at every level. That's a huge tackle there from Wellington College. Well, look, Wellington College, who have... Uh, winless so far they were beaten by king's bridge community so college by a larger margin and by holyrood academy by a large on. margin but they've really Bingo. brought something to this yeah. final fixture so far very good. they've really brought some energy and aggression that perhaps they were lacking in the uh, early stages on Will you be uh, pestering your coaches to stick around and watch the rest of the tournament unfold, do you yes, think? Yes, we're hoping our under-18s boys are playing, so we're hoping to watch their last match, but not too sure if we're going to stay. We'll see if we, we, like, uh, like the rest of us, we're all hoping to stick around at Rosny mm -hmm. Park for as long as they can. Yes. That's why I'm here for all five days. <laughs> as, uh, Wellington School Drive towards the line once more. Great finish there by the <laughs> number 11, Izzy Ain, which I believe. As Crow will look to add the extras. Well, it was a lovely competition so far. And this game has certainly been uh, full of excellent rugby, all from... Uh, Wellington School, unfortunately. <laughs> unfortunately, yes. <laughs> but they have looked very impressive with their mm -hmm. offload play. And this is just a great finish, great leg drive. Powerful side. Yeah, we need to go school. for the legs, I think. Well, we'll see how uh, Cardiff High School can respond. With two minutes to go in this first half, they're currently trailed by 19. It'd be nice to see uh, what Cardiff can do with a little bit of possession. Another great take okay. off the kickoff. Flicked inside well, a good direct running towards the line. And now they're cut to the uh, far side. Some good offload play by Cardiff High School, a little bit isolated in this wide channel. And that pass falls behind their opposite map player. But a, once again, lovely line of running. A good period of play strung together by Cardiff High School. Yes, they're um, working together now, I think. Unfortunately, just oh. just uh, one pass too many, and Wellington School will come away with it. It takes uh, two players to bring down each one of these Wellington College players who've got great power. Good work to keep the ball alive. Back on, release. Perfect. Offloaded once more. And a bit of space opens up for Wellington. Great tackle on the last man, but just bumped off there. And this is a great finish in the end. And Wellington School have scored another, 24-0. So lucky there, because it was a good bit of attacking yeah. play by Carlos High School showing together. Then, I think. And then uh, just uh, left that attacking uh, mm -hmm. 
promise just left too much space on the wide channel but I mean this is a great carry mm -hmm. just hunting for the space two players outside allows oh. number 14 to step inside and that's just a huge collision mm -hmm. that's a rugby incident as they say but Cardiff High School looking to keep the pressure applied it's just perhaps the case of just been a very long day of rugby yes probably they um I think we did play better in our first match and I think we're a bit tired and now knowing we've lost most of our matches now but I think we might be able to bring it a bit closer in the second half well is it second half now second half will soon be starting we're still in our first yeah, half still in the first half and it's Cardiff High School look to finish the first half strong oh. intercepted oh, almost but nice. only backwards so I believe it will be well, backwards from that attempted interception, so Wellington College will come away with it. Kept alive well once more. Nice tackle. Great direct line of running this time yes. through through tackles. Wellington College looked to break once more. Nice tackle. Great last ditch defending by Cardiff High School, who have aligned themselves well. But once again, really physical carrying from Wellington College, but a space in this left hand channel. Cuts back across the grain and another score for Wellington. Edith Reese this time at number eight. And that will be half time. 29 nil will be the score at half time. And that will be. Uh, the half-time score, 29 nil in the end. Wellington College lead by Cardiff High School. A difficult game so far for Cardiff High School. What, so I just stand here? Well, next gen, of course, getting very excited because we've got our uh, next gen, of course, getting very excited because we've got our uh, front camera working, which means I'm able to chat to you, Lulu, face to face in our second half period of the game. Yes. So uh, a tough game so far for Cardiff High School, training yes. by 29. But we were talking earlier about what this competition means to someone who wants to play more rugby at whatever level that may be. Of course, this is a really high standard at mm -hmm. under 16s cup level. But for anyone who just wants to play rugby in the women's game, how important do you think this tournament is? I think it's it's really good for women now to have this ability to play in massive tournaments, which was normally just for boys. But I think now that we've got the opportunity, a lot more girls are going to get involved. And there's a pedigree to it because you're travelling as well yes. with your senior men's mm -hmm. sides. And when you, you're talking about putting together an under 18 team, so yeah. at a point in the future, Cardiff High School mm -hmm. will be travelling with a senior men's time, a senior women's side, yes, as well as under 16, yeah. under 16. Mm -hmm. That's a really like, it brings together the school in yeah. a lot of ways, do you think? It look, it's something to look forward to, I think. And it's like the whole journey. Something and that the, it's talked about a lot in like the inequalities between schools is there's a sort of bonding that is experienced yeah, by I think following so. your senior team and mm -hmm. this tournament makes that possible yeah even um just between matches asking them for tips it's like really okay, bringing us in, together i think well it's lovely to hear what this tournament can do to schools around the country's return to the game where wellington school are really stamping their authority on this fixture but as we spoke about at half time this tournament means a whole lot more than that as they look to steam towards the touchline once more Lovely step and cut inside Pack by on, Wellington. Release, release Loose ball, which Cardiff looked to pounce on. Good line speed, but some space in this wide channel. If they can oh. use it instead, they'll skip through. And it's another score for Wellington College. Izzy Ainge this time with the finish. And is it perhaps with uh, when you get to this stage of these big tournaments where there's slightly less on the line? Mm -hmm. We know now, like, we can't go through to the second round, so I don't know if the girls have given up a bit. Hopefully not, though. Perhaps less about giving up yeah. and more about... Um, Tiredness, I yeah. think. 
fatigue yes <laughs> and not wanting to tackle someone mm -hmm. of that power I think it straight at you. can be quite daunting when people are running at you that's something we all experience at the yes. highest level <laughs> that's lovely footwork from Cardiff High School a great attacking set for them so far as they look to take it to an edge good offload to keep the ball alive Cardiff High School in possession as they break into the half for the first time. Forward pass, unfortunately, Unlucky. as they search from it for an edge. Come, Blue. Come, ladies. Here's your mark. Mark, ladies. Wellington College back in possession. Wellington School, sorry, back in possession. Really impressive performance from them. Six tries they've run in. Just a little bit too late for Wellington School. As unfortunately, the uh, regardless of other results, okay. Kingsbridge Community College and Five. Holyrood Academy will go through to top this group. Set. Some very exciting sides, however, still left in this competition. We've seen the Dubai that. College in action throughout the tournament. They'll be going through top of their group on a 72 point difference. So if you're, if, you're not, if you're a hooker, come towards me. Foot's got to be where I am. Uh, we're going to have a quick change from the commentary box Grouch. so we can uh, speak to some more people from um, Cardiff High School. Yeah. Thank you so much Set. for being with us, Lily. It's been great to have oh, you. Okay, that's fine. I'll play that one. Oh, foot. You can go back 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 one. One. As I continue to talk through the action, of course, Cardiff High School have got themselves on the score sheet. <laughs> Right, thank you so much for joining me then, Rihanna, on the crunch box. You must be happy to see that uh, Cardiff High School have got their yeah, tip name on the score sheet. A good finish as well. Yes, from Heidi there. Doesn't seem yeah, too happy to be kicking the ball. <laughs> she's a goalkeeper, so she's she good at it. Well, we'll wait and see. Yeah. That's good. So, Lulu Thorne, our commentary uh, co-commentator, is now on the field, hence the change. But a really lovely finish. I've talked a little bit about uh, the tournament itself and how, how it's been to like travel down to this part of the country. Have you enjoyed what Roslyn Park's had to offer so far? Yeah, it's been really good fun. Um, good experience for us all, but unfortunately we couldn't like win any matches. In a very tough group, of course, though. You see, Wellington School have really turned it on in that final yeah. fixture. And uh, Holyrood and Kingsbridge have just ran away with the whole tournament and in in this whole group, in all fairness. They both look very strong. And uh, you've just missed the rain, of course, by coming off at that time, which is incredibly <laughs> lucky. Good. A wet afternoon yeah. would certainly yeah. change the dynamic of this competition as well as the VARs, which uh, we'll be returning to next, of course. Up next in the VARs, it's Colleague Cigar against Halebury. Halebury, who we saw earlier in action. It was a big win for them. Very impressive win against Ivory Bridge Community College, so they'll be looking to go through as group winners in their group, of course, with Stowe in there as well. The Cardiff High School look to add the pressure as the ball is booted away. A penalty there for playing off the ball, unfortunately. So in terms of coming together as a group for this tournament, back 10, how do you think this change your 10, dynamic go, as a group go. of players? Do you feel closer together from this Yeah, like, travel I feel like we've all bonded quite a lot. Um, we've obviously made good friends with lots of people that we wouldn't normally have spoken to. Yeah. That is fantastic. That's a big part of what rugby is about, the social side of it, the community side of it, especially schools that are much newer to the game. And that's what this uh, branch of the tournament allows. It really gives women's rock, rugby an opportunity at areas where it has yet to fully develop, to expand. It will be uh, Cardiff High School to feed this scrum following that knock-on as the rain continues to pour. Hoping that clears out towards the end of the afternoon. Free kick for Cardiff High School with a minute to go in this game. Do you think you'll look to run it all the way in from here? I hope so. <laughs> uh, with one minute to go here, Cardiff High School oh, looked to break. 
unfortunately just knocked yeah, on there in the wet weather that we're currently experiencing. Just here, guys. Just here. Drum, blue. Hold fast. Big mark. Well, in these closing stages of the tournament, we, of course, look forward to the under-16 cup Ouch! knockout rounds, which will be beginning very shortly. We will have the semi-final here at 3.40, as well as a quarter-final at 20 past two. Can't play that. Come straight out. Plenty of rugby still to go. There's just 10 seconds left in this comprehensive 34-5 win for Wellington School over Cardiff High School. So when you play these sort of tournaments, do you think they encourage people to stick with the game of rugby? I'm discussing over with Lulu, like First? thinking about building an under-18 yeah, side perfect. and coming back here in a few years. Yeah, Is that something that, that interests you in the squad? Yeah, definitely. And then we'd have like more people who want to do it as well. Because we'd have been like doing it for longer. Go back and tell everyone about how great it was yeah. to be at Roslyn Park, despite the results. This final game in the uh, pool stages of the Cup will end with a 34-5 win for Cardiff High School who have lost 35, 34-5 apologies to Wellington School. Cardiff High School really stuck with it throughout the game but Wellington School who have not had the uh, morning session they perhaps wanted have stuck in there for a big win. Thank you so much Rihanna for thank joining you so me in the co-commentary and thank you very much everyone for listening in to the end of the pool stages here at uh, the under 16 competition at the Rosen Park National Sevens. We'll return now with some more pool stage action from the uh, under 18 VARS competition. Good afternoon, an announcement for the two o'clock round of fixtures on the RE pitches in the boys under 18 VARS tournament on RE1, So School versus Ivy Bridge Community College. On RE2, Colleague Cigar versus Haleybury. On RE3, Christ College Brecon versus Northampton School for Boys. On RE4, Epsom College versus Fulham Boys School. On RE5, St. Cecilia School versus Tunbridge School. And on RE6, Reed School versus Priselli. Those games due to get underway at 2 o'clock. Welcome back to RE2, where Colleg Cigar are about to face Halebury in the rain as it starts to pelt it down. Halebury's team coming in uh, to this final group stage game, second in the pool, and Halebury need to win to go through. to tomorrow's phase of play. So that's what's at stake here for Halebury, those in white and red, and they're gonna open up Colleg Cigar early on. Lovely dash on the inside, and now Speed will win the race. And doing just that, in go Halebury. That's a cracking score to uh, open up with. So Colleg Cigar trailing now and without a win today so far. So coming up against Halebury when everything's on the line for them, it's a tough ask to try and get this final 
win or the first win for them in this final match today. And that try scored by Finn Newton. Oh, sorry about the break in uh, transmission. We were just getting ourselves organized here in our tent uh, as the rain starts to continue to pelt it down. It's not stopping Halebury, is it? They are on fire. Two tries to nil and looking for a third already. And this is going to be run in so easily. They are having a right royal time in the uh, wet out there. And they lead 14 points to nil. Now, the reason we were a little off air, we were just getting Alex Good in place, who's joined us here on the Next Gen 15 stream. Uh, the first time we're properly covering this pitch, and it's the first time you get to see just how extensive the whole pitches here are in South Wimbledon, because they go on and on and on. And in this cup alone, there are 200 schools vying for competition and vying for a place in the next round. It gets whittled down to 24 or so, I think, at the end of today. Halebury looking to qualify automatically, and those watching on from Halebury will have know that already, but they'll have got off to the best possible start here. And Alex, uh, it's great to have your company. We, we are at the business end of proceedings. It's so tight for these schoolboys here because they want to be coming back tomorrow and they want to be fighting for the Vars. And this is a long field run, which is going to... Uh, what a start for Halebury. Um, Alex, uh, you would have played at um, Roslyn Park yourself, I'm sure, and uh, uh, the wet, the muds and everything together. Has it been a, a nice day so far, reminiscing? Yeah, it's uh, it's an amazing tournament. It's uh, You see the purity of rugby here, you know, just kids enjoying it, being out there, having fun. Um, and there's a lot of uh, ex-players and uh, coaches who I, I played with or was involved with who are here as well, which is great. Um, and then uh, including Halebury, you've got Michael Owen, who I play with, uh, the Welsh International, uh, as, uh, as their coach. And clearly they've started off well here, trying to score as many points as possible, quickly. Yeah, that last try, by the way, scored by Marco Filippetto. And that is the Halebury uh, staff and the players who aren't in this uh, team of ten, with three on the bench. They're all supporting and wanting to come back here for day two. Because what an achievement it is to make it to day two at Roslyn Park. It is so hard to do. And colleague Cigar chasing a few more shadows as Halebury keep it alive and spread it along the line. Looking, it's a really interesting to see a different style here. I mean, Halebury are really trying to move the ball, playing a really traditional sevens way, um, and even in the wet, they're showing great skills out there. And the last carry from Tom Watkins, and there's the try again. So Halebury hitting three and. Um, Clearly on the on the mission, as I said, to score as many points as possible quickly. They're, they're not messing around to take their kicks. Yeah, yeah the uh, group that they're in, by the way, they're trailing Stowe School coming into this match. Ivy Bridge College uh, in this group as well, but Halebury in second. So looking to finish above Stowe School with uh, racking up as many points as they can against Coleg Cigar. Uh, Alex, um, the wet, just how hard is it when you're trying to play sevens and you're obviously trying to play expansively uh, and the rain lashes down? We see it at your level and sometimes the game looks pretty similar given how, how the, the level that you can compete at, at at the professional level. But it is so hard to do, isn't it? I think, I think especially in sevens, you're trying to get as much ball movement as possible and as quick as possible. You want to get the defenders moving around, change direction a lot, and it is hard. Um, but you can see here, if you're given time and space, Halebury are showing great skill set. Um, I say that as the, the kick doesn't quite make the 10, but it's the skill set ability to catch and pass nice and early, give the, the catcher time so then he can use his footwork and keep the defence on the back foot. It'll be interesting here for Collar Cigar to see if they can get on the front foot, try and get themselves into the game. Well, in case you were uh, confused about pitches, yeah, Alex Good on screen uh, joining us today. A limitless ambassador, one of uh, Next Gen's uh, kit supplies. Great to have that support. Allows us to bring this match to you on RE2 today. Colleague Cigar. 
with ball for the first time. And Halebury looking to close them down, but nice little burst of speed. What it does challenge a lot in the wet as well as the breakdown skills, because a lot of people slipping and change direction. If you're not there quick enough in sevens, the support isn't there, then you'll get turned over a lot. Uh, Halebury really hard onto the ball, but a good clear out from Collie Cigar. They make sure that they quickly move the point of contact. You don't want to be stuck in the rucks, putting two or three men in there, and then it becomes a very hard day. Yourself, Alex, an Oakham schoolboy, all of 20 or so years ago, I guess now. Yeah, I actually just bumped into my old school coach, who's still still the coach there, uh, Ian Smith, Dossa, uh, the Tigers legend. Oh, it's oh, lovely, that, isn't it? Ooh. <laughs> it doesn't get better for a first half of sevens from Halebury. Four tries to zip and uh, looking to do everything within their power to get into that top 24 schools that qualify for tomorrow automatically. There's Michael Owen, you'll uh, reference him earlier uh, with the, the tinge of salt and pepper on top of his head. He uh, had a little that, older than when we last saw him. I don't on. know, I was going to say he had that when we played, I think. He's, uh, <laughs> he, he looks like he's got younger from, from being a coach. Well, it's certainly it's a rare thing you. these days, I must say, that the stress and the pressure of it usually drags people down a bit, but uh, he's obviously doing a fine job there at Halebury. And, from all accounts, with Jamie George pops back there, I think most weeks anyway, so tells me he's doing a great job. <laughs> uh, well, you're 17 years at Saracens, not a, not a grey hair on your head, Alex, and I'm up close oh, and God. able to expect it's not, it. It's not examining it, but the hair's falling out, I think. I should have put the hat back on, but um, yeah, no, no, hanging in there a bit. Um, <clears throat> luckily, I don't do too much tackling or, or rocking, so I basically run, a, run, a, run around and kick the ball before anyone tackles me, which does help you and gives you longevity in the game. Seeing some ex-players with me, they... They sort of they said, "Oh, how are you still doing it?" I said, yeah, "I'm still avoiding contact, basically." So <laughs> I thought that was a smart play. I heard that on a podcast you did recently, uh, Sam Roberts' Inheritance Rugby podcast, which uh, is a great listen. Yeah, if anyone is. is very niche from you. I didn't know how wide it went out there, but he's, uh, it's, uh, it was a very fun podcast. I, I had fun with Sam and uh, Ed Slater, obviously, in such uh, difficult circumstances for him and his family, but great men both of them really enjoyed it yeah and it is, it is if you want to catch here alex's whole rugby story really because they go into detail it's uh, it's out there on all, all the usual places yeah all of two minutes long that <laughs> so, struck it into an ad and how they did that here go colleague cigar though lovely break from the kickoff and that's good hands as well in support and they fire their first shots in this match so it's really impressive there from Halebury that the line break from College Cigar, but they all got back in behind the ball. Obviously, well drilled, fit side who are working very hard for the team there. To get back into shape after a line break that quickly is impressive. And now on the counter. And that's nice hands on from Iki Osibo on the field at half time. Just seeing now as, as it gets so tiring after a break there's one break then a turnover then another turnover that's where the best sides there are looking to this transition as quick as possible turnovers unstructured defense and really make their line breaks and you see a lot of boys gasping for breath i, I know that feeling it's, it's a horrible place on the sevens field when you you can't find any oxygen for your lungs what was the uh, extent of oakham's success when you were a school Alex? do you remember how far you went at the roslyn park stands um, well, I think we got to the quarterfinals or so. We, we were uh, prioritised a lot of the Daily Mail, really, um, for us. We, we went into the sevens and we did all right, but um, the bigger school, I think the schools like Millfield and Wellington were, were pretty impressive with that at my age. <clears throat> I think they're still pretty good at it from all accounts. They, they don't even get any worse. Um, but, uh, yeah, it wasn't part... I remember it just being a great trip, really. We came up from the Midlands and... We knew, regardless of what happened, we were staying out, staying in Richmond for the night. Um, nothing debaucherous at that age, but uh, you know, very much just uh, a great trip up to London and with your mates, really. Um, so yeah, it was a lot of fun. Oh, Finn Newton, looks like Halebury are going to be booking themselves into oh. a hotel to stay for tomorrow and fight for silverware in the under-18 Vars, doing everything they can in this third pool match and they've won their first two today, so it's all about points difference against Stowe School in their match against Ivy Bridge, which is running right now. And Finn Newton's done an awful lot to keep, keep the points off. rolling. It's a harsh call, that's a great kick-up, I thought. You see, every time that there's a, a second ball or something like that, Haleby are really scrapping for it, kick-offs, they're fighting hard. 
Um, as I said, they're, they're working as a team very well here. It's impressive to see. A little more share of the possession in this half for Coleg Segal, but they are being locked out. It's interesting as well, Halebury, they've got the, the seven men in the front line. In, in this weather, you think maybe Koleksegar might look at just a kick at some stage in behind, just as a chase. Uh, they've got some quick guys out there. It would be a good tactic in the wet, even just to turn around. Because every breakdown, as I said, Halebury are fighting so hard to get in there and, and spoil it. Here Coleg Cigar go again, but they don't look to go in behind. It's still in the hand. And, and this is the transition now for Halebury. They've got a turnover, and you can see they're just picking them off there really nicely. Big chase there. They'll go forward. Coleg Cigar tracking back slowly, but they're going to stop that attack before it gets going. Joe Robinson uh, had a few players outside him, but unfortunately the, the weather beating him. Uh, yeah, I just think back to the, the sevens here. It's such a fantastic tournament. So many, you know, kids, um, both women, men playing. Um, and it's just, fasc it's just fascinating to see it as an older, older player who's come through and, and see everyone pretty much playing with a smile on their face, doing whatever they want to do and play and not being too structured and organised, but just enjoying it. And, um, you see the guys walking around and, you know, everyone's got the best stash in the world these days. And we looked a bit ragged, I, I think, when I was younger. Right. All these kit suppliers now, I should probably get a quick tab in there for uh, Limitless. Well yeah, they're all wearing this wonderful Limitless kit, um, a lot of them. But they all they look a million dollars. And uh, I remember as a kid, you'd turn up to these tournaments and, go, oh, that's so-and-so, that's that quick kid, or that's the big kid. And you're always so scared. And then you get on the field and, you know, no, nothing ever materialises. <laughs> Everyone drops a ball still. <laughs> Well, Finn Newton, I think a few people might be uh, pointing him out tomorrow. He's uh, on the hat-trick and knocking over more points, too, from this scrum. Yeah, well, we had a hoodie. I think that was the extent of our kit when I was at Rosalind Park. It probably was uh, pretty similar this, to yourselves. I would have had a bit Finn, more than that. Yeah, this Finn Smith, as you said, he's, he's, a, he's a natural... Finn Newton. Nat Finn, Newton. Nat Finn Newton, sorry. Finn Smith, the ten, ten at <laughs> <laughs> Northampton. Um, he's, uh, he's a gifted runner there, you can see. He glides really well with the ball. Um, very comfortable with two, two hands on the ball uh, and a real organiser here for Halebury. Munn. Oh, that's a good offload, very good offload. And Osman rounds things off. Lucas Osman. It's, it's, it's often tough in the sevens when the momentum goes against you and you feel like you're on the back foot because it's one team, it happens in, we've seen it in 15s all the time, but especially in sevens, you just every kick off they get the ball back kick off they get the ball back and it just feels like a wave after wave it's really hard to sort of get yourself into the game and especially a team like Halebury who are competing at all the breakdowns it's very hard um, because they get a penalty off they go and I think one phase and offload and they score um, so it's important here for Collie Cigar to get hold of the ball and try as they did at the start of the second half play some phases in, in and get into the game, or as I said, look at that kicking behind and try and break up the rhythm. Now, how important, Alex, uh, is seven structure compared to the 15s games? You always think it's fast and loose and it's about throwing it around, but is there actually much more structure to, to what we're seeing on the World Series as well and here is, than, than it might look? I think certainly in the World Series it is, it is pretty structured and everyone does know their role and, you know, it, it, it's it's very professional in that set system there, the top end. But even here, the better sides, you can see they have a, an organisation and structure to how they want to play. And that allows people like Finn Newton and other top players out there to play in that system. You need that framework to then allow them to flourish and then use their footwork, take people on. Um, and, and, and that's key. And it, this is really interesting to see. Halebury are up, but yet... The chase here, I think he's going to catch him. I think he's going to catch him. That is a great chase there. You know, credit to, to that player for getting back there. It's unbelievable work. Um, you know, he's winning by 45 points to nil, and yet he's chased all the way back to get, to get a, a turnover. And that is what you want to see as a coach. Them, them really digging in and fighting every moment. 
to make your way towards the Roslyn Park information tent, please. Yeah, we will uh, um, find out the number and name and get a shout out correct for that. Uh, that player who tracked back, but what speed here for it? He is going to score. <laughs> the good dive at the end there. Well, we know who that is, Charlie Nunn. Good di dive there, Charlie. Going the distance. Good to see 50 up for Halebury. Well, they couldn't have done any more, could they? So it was, yeah, I, was, oh, I can't get his number. Number 20, but then is the next 22, challenge. 22, was it? Oh, it's number 20. 20, you got better the eyes than me. next challenge is then to, fight, to match the number to the name, and uh, we'll get there, we'll get there. But Charlie Nunn, swan dive, almost. Um, I know, but again, as I said, you know, you have to have an element of structure to allow players to flourish and to use their ability, as I said, footwork, offloading, kicks, whatever. Um, and then it's just about the team defensively really working as a unit. But whatever you do in sevens, the best teams are the ones who work together as a team, work hard. And that's a great example at the end, someone who's willing to chase back the whole way. You know, there's two uh, Colossi Gar players there with him, but yet because he gets back, gets over the breakdown, they make a mistake and that gives their team another fight. So, um, yeah, brilliant work from them and that is the, the defensive effort that you need. And we've spotted him, Alex, uh, the man who impressed you so much, Dan McKenna, tracking back all the way. Well, you know, credit, as I said, it's the, the th things that people perhaps don't give credit for. It's not the, the flashy bits of scoring a try or doing an offload or doing a nice kick over the top, but it's the bit that the team appreciates, the coach will appreciate, the bit, you know, the hard work. He doesn't have to do that, they're 45 nil up. No one's going to berate him if he doesn't quite give 100%, but he bust a gut to run all the way back there, make the tackle, and got a turnover. So, you know, huge credit to him. And uh, congratulations. Pl player of the game for me. Hey, Lebrou. Well, there we go. Dan McKenna, take that. Uh, selected by Alex Good. And uh, hopefully, well, we'll see either Hey, or Stowe School certainly tomorrow. And the other one of those two who finishes in second place will have to fight through elimination rounds in order to get through to this ultra, ultra competitive second day. It doesn't get more competitive and, and Michael Owen is making his way over here, Hayley Bruce coach, and maybe if he's up for an interview, I might just leave the mic in your hands, Alex, and, uh, okay. and you can have a chat with him. I don't know if he's gonna reach you yet. Well, I'll get Michael on here. Goody. Good to see you, you, you yeah, well. Good to see you as well, yeah, Just yeah, crediting how, uh, how good your team were there. Very organised, working hard, and <laughs> especially at the thank end there, I was, uh, I think it was Dan McKenna. Players. That was unbelievable, wasn't it? Yeah, wasn't it? Yeah. I was just saying, as a, as a coach, that must be the thing that yeah. impressed you more than anything. Is are we, are we interviewing that, yeah? We are, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, we, we are <laughs> cool. interviewing, yeah. 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 Um, I thought that was the most impressive thing for me, and for, as a coach, that must be really nice to see. You know, you're 45 nil up, he doesn't need to give 100% there, but he does, and you get a turnover, and that, that's very pleasing. Yeah, Dan's a phenomenal uh, player. He works like, incredibly hard, and yeah, you saw it there. It gets his reward for all the sprint training he's been doing, so um, yeah, phenomenal, and uh, the boys are incredible, and scored some great tries, and we had to get as many points as we could on the board, so they've really gone for it, and fingers crossed we can get through the next uh, round. Yeah, and you, t the team looked very organised. You've done a lot of sevens training for this in anticipation of this tournament. Any tournaments before this? Yeah, we, have, we haven't been lucky enough to play in any tournaments. We had like a run out on um, Thursday uh, before, so we played against Bedford and Burko, which was brilliant. Mm -hmm. um, and the boys, like I say, have been training really hard and working really hard. And boys playing either a club or playing some academy stuff, and uh, they've just been uh, they're a pleasure to work with, and uh, they've really done themselves justice in that last game. Perfect. And, and scoring that many points, hopefully, is it a playoff next? Hopefully for you guys. So yeah, so we had a controversial draw with Stowe. Uh, we thought we kicked two conversions, um, but only one was awarded. Oh. Um, so a bit of a. So hopefully we get to go through, but we'll see. But um, yeah, it's been a brilliant day, and as always, the tournament uh, doesn't let you down. I, I don't miss those uh, schoolboy you know, fights <laughs> with the, the linesman. Yeah. Or the no, I kicked it. No, you yeah, didn't. No, yeah. but my, my dad said Definitely. it went over. But yeah, you know, it's, I can it's, imagine it's, you just took it, Alex. Yeah, you yeah. wouldn't get, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, wouldn't, get angry wouldn't about complain it, at all. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. I was a very passive Perfect. young child, but um, congratulations, you. mate. Cheers. Really good well done. Great Take care. Cheers. Thank right. you very much. Thank you. Thanks Cheers. for coming. Cheers. It's good to see Great you. Good right? Yeah, good luck in the tournament. So the past couple of times in two years. <laughs> our next match uh, on RE2. <laughs> Alex Good is uh, staying with us for now, which we're very excited uh, about. Uh, not yet. I'm, I'm, I'll give myself 18 months this year and next year to yeah. work out something. Yeah. Um, in third I, position, I said I wouldn't do any coaching. Pool, and the Perth School leading the way, two wins from two. And if they can book another win here, then they will be topping this under 18 Vars. So. The purse 
in a very good position in this group. Crash in the purple oh. colours, Campion in the white. And Campion could really do with a, a victory here. It would be very interesting to indeed if they can come up with a victory against the pass here. That would make things very tied at the top of this group as to who goes through automatically. Come on, come on, Campion. Come Sorry. On, Sorry. Campion fan. Uh, well, uh, I'm not, but the person, my local rival, is in Cambridge, so uh, you know, I had many a big battle, so I shouldn't, shouldn't start that rivalry too quickly, but um, yeah, come on, Campion. Well, Campion are off the mark, uh, Alex. Yeah. The big old boy there, he's strong. Oh, looks like he's been in the gym. Campion, one of the great great cup match schools they won the uh, 2001 daily mail cup growing up they were the the really the, they were a massive side coming out of essex um big team always used to be right on the circuit number one number two or in the top top couple um and i obviously i've not been following schools rugby as much recently but it's great to see them here and doing well um because they were a big big school when i was younger so it says, shows my age really you didn't go to campion and win all that often there's a the worst that away was, place to go was. ever yeah and they really made it count yeah john but it was also a st joseph's tournament they used to go down there and they were the brilliant side and i think there was a, a backs move that everyone used to call campion because they ran it in the final and, and, and won i think and um you know, everyone just used to call it ever since, really. <laughs> Quite a universal name. How far did that go? That's some serious rugby... Uh... Yeah, not, not so much in a professional game, but um, although I did bring it back, actually, for one of our games the other day. I didn't call it Campion, though. For Saracens? Uh, yes, yeah. Uh, whoever that was in the early 2000s who designed the move should get some credit for that. <laughs> so I, I effectively stole it. I think that's John Davis. John Davis, the old uh, head, of, head, head of rugby at uh, Campion. Uh, Welshman who uh, who masterminded their success. It must be, it must be here. Anyway, they're doing well here today, but it's the Purse who are ahead in the group table coming into this match. So, so this is a decider, or not quite. If if Campion can can win it though, it'll be three teams possibly level. Wow. Well, it's a, it's a, the group. It's a big start already. We can see the breakdown is a huge battle and very physical game, which I think we're going to see more of in the wet now. Um, as I said that breakdown battle is going to be huge. So the Perth school, your school in Cambridge, uh, Alex? I was at the Lees. Uh, the I was Lees. trying to say to people, I've been to a few schools, not because I got kicked out of lots of them, um, just, just moved to a few, but the Lees and then Oakham for my sixth form were, so the Lees particularly in, in the school before that, uh, the Perth were the biggest rivals in Cambridge, two big schools, and uh, we had some big, big battles, some some low points, some, some great moments, um, and uh, also a lot of my friends actually went to the Perth as well from my rugby club, so... Yeah, that's a great clear out. Oh, you can see there's some ferocity here at this breakdown. Every single one is a fight, so it's going to be a tight game, this one. Two good sides, well organised. As the game goes on, be interested to see who, who starts to fatigue. And Perth are obviously adopting the kicking game early with no sweeper for Campion, but that is a dangerous move. Oh, great tackle. Awesome contact. Tackle now, three. Another kick. They really are going for it, but it's a good chase here. And then Campion got ahead. This is the key now for Perth. They've got to back it up with a chase. A couple of them. Get to get him down as quick as possible. And then there, turnover. Ooh. Campion looked like struggling to get back there, fitness wise. No purple, no hands now. Yeah, this is third game of the day for both teams. And a little bit more boot to ball than what we saw in the last game, Alex. Well, two, two, I said two even teams. Um, the key with the kicking game, though, is you've got to get a good chase here. See, Campion, you've got three players up there. They've got to make those tackles. If they let them out like that, it's, 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 oh, it's a struggle. Great offload, that. Another big chase. Oh, what a tackle. Number eight, was that? Number nine. Oh, number nine, uh, pick up. God, my eyes are really terrible, aren't they? You, you, <laughs> you have to get the right numbers every time for me. I said that, that is an example as we said before, of as the game long passages, it gets really tough. The, the purse hung in there. They just fell off the kick chase there, Campion. The purse got in behind and they, they made it count. They a great pick up here. Great pick up from number six. 
We've seen some good games on RE2. This one's shaping up to be uh, one of the best. And, and quite interesting is that they're adapting with the weather, the uh, kicking game. Both teams are starting to put boot to ball. The key now is to make sure when you do kick, you're either going to get it to regather or you're squeezing the opposition with a good chase and you've got more numbers than they have in, in an attack. Uh, it's John Collett School are here, please. You should be on pitch four now. The purse kick us off again with that slender two-point lead. So as things stand on the scoreboard, they are topping this group at the moment. But there's a lot of rugby to be played in this one. A minute to go to half-time. Campion on the ball. He's there. He's done well to survive that. And this man shows what he's all about already. Yeah, very physical player. Oh, slow into the breakdown, unfortunately, for Campion. It's a big thing, the purse, uh, the kicking game, and then they're squeezing at the breakdown. That's proving very yeah, difficult. You're off your feet now. You're on the body, not the ball. Stretching Campion here, lovely skills. Still damp out there as well, and the purse looking for number two, and it will be number six that gets it. So, yeah, the, the, the tactic here from the purse, very clever. They're, they're actually letting Campion have the ball there, they're kicking along, the and then they're ball. going really hard at the breakdown, and Campion's got to be a bit quicker into the, the ball, breakdown, really. Uh, but really ball. clever from the purse, the wet weather, they're fighting every ball. breakdown, getting turnovers, and then you can see two passes to the outside, and they, they score in the transition. Well said, Alex. So you, got, you got through that as a former student of the Lees. Uh, well, well done. <laughs> Half time then, 12 points to five. Good to see you. It's a good skills here as well, Alexander. It's good 15 or so metres between some of these passes. It's really impressive because it's not easy in wet conditions. We see many a premiership side drop lots of balls in this weather, um, but they're doing really well to transfer the ball nice and quickly and then, as I said, allow the guys on the outside to run at the opposition. The whole thing, main thing of rugby in sevens as well is you don't want the opposition to be running at you consistently. You want to either get up defensively or take away time and space. And you can see here that by putting good passes out in front of players coming at depth, the attackers are then running at defenders and when you've got space either side that's when it's really hard for the defenders because they're good athletes they can go outside with their pace they can go inside uh, and that's what you're looking for in sevens is constantly is two on twos but people are allowed to run and use their feet and it's dangerous at saracens alex how much are the first team and academy members working on their skills even at an advanced stage in their career how much percentage of your of your time at work is on skills I don't know about percentage, but um, every morning in the, we have a skills block for the backs. Um, that is all catch and pass, catch and pass. There'll be some bits of technical, other bits like I don't know, high balls or breakdown or defensive shape, but it's all catch and pass mainly. And then the start of every main session, there'll be catch and pass. Um, the, the skills side of things, you know, has gone up and up and up really. Um, and I think it's the mo it's the most important. Um, you know, you, you, for years you never saw New Zealanders miss two on ones or three on twos because their skill sets were so good. And you can you can get better physically, you can improve uh, physically. You know, but the, you know, skill wise, I think it's a hard thing to teach later on in life. You, the more you do it as a young kid, the more skills you have, whether it's kicking, passing, even just technical skills defensively, the better you'll be as a rug player. You know, I would say the best rug players of the era I came through were probably uh, Richie McCaw, Dan Carter, Brian O'Driscoll, and none of them were particularly strong in the gym or that, but they were brilliant, brilliant rug players who had great understanding of the game. So you see here the champion, they're, they're mainly at a half break there, they're just a bit slow to that breakdown. Um, oh. Oh. I've got to say that the first player has taken that really well, that fly hack to the fingers. I'd be down for a few hours probably, <laughs> going off the field. That's, that's just a little bit of professional experience. <laughs> not because not I'm looking for a penalty, just purely because my fingers will be sore and he's a lot tougher than I am, which is a low bar, obviously. Sit! Again, employing the kick there. Your 
So yeah, the person carrying on with this tactic is good coaching and a good understanding of it because every time they do, their chase backs it up with a brilliant, brilliant chase. They're in behind and then the ball's on the floor and they're winning those battles on the floor, which again, wet weather is really important and, it, and it's good to see. And it's taking a lot out of Campion. They're constantly turning around, having to get out of their own half, having to fight. And even if they make a half line break, they're still in their own half. So um, not a tactic you often see in sevens, but employed well like this uh, by the purse is uh, very effective. Well, that player who uh, so impressed you, Alex, um, with his tracking back earlier in the match from Campion, uh, having to hobble off and take some time out on the side, but give him everything for his school, that's all he can ask. Be interesting to see what the purse run here. You know, oh! scrum's a great opportunity to let your fast men have a go one on one. A lot of space on the outside here. Crouch! Bind! Set! It's an up and under. Here we go again. But great weight on it. Great chase. You know, it's... See, it may not be classical sevens play, but it is so effective. They're getting the kicks perfect just before the, the line, and then they're chasing so well. Oh, it's just, just a little mistake there for Campion. Been very impressed with Campion number 20 there. Um, his fitness, his chase has been great. Good ball player. Um, Campion now just got to find some momentum here. They're just a bit tired. Got to make sure they give themselves, keep themselves in the game, one score away, and anything can happen in sevens at the end of the game. They're still out there for Campion if they win this match to qualify directly for tomorrow. And if not, it's still there for them through an elimination round later in this competition. So a lot at stake still, but the purse can book their ticket oh, here. Good if fee. They oh. can get in, which they do. Great footwork there from 13 to get on the outside and then speed to score it. Your time. We're changing microphones there, aren't we? My thanks to Alex Good uh, for his time. Uh, really great to have you uh, down here, Alex, uh, as an ambassador for Limitless. And uh, thanks for your thoughts. Have a good rest of the day. So the purse is last try with excellent passing catches. Alex Good was preaching the importance of practicing those daily, no matter the level you're at. And under still very damp conditions here, the purse get that part absolutely right. And Campion with a lot to do now. Keep going. Nice gap. And a good block from the purse to stop the next pass making its way to the winger. And now they'll attack. Good hitch kick and the purse is number six, the danger man for the Cambridgeshire School. And that rounds off this match as a contest. 22 points to five. Campion opened up by the purse's hard running number six. Perfectly judged kickoff. Perfectly weighted. Go 
Everyone's marked up here. Good afternoon, we have a result from groups A and B in the boys under 18 bars tournament. The what a place, Rosalind Park is. Stowell, and the winners of group B are Those willowy Brecken. figures waving in the they wind, looking for their picks to play rugby on. One, one of the great sights of this tournament, in Campion, looking to keep playing. Brecken. And a little on dance on the inside, which was in the boys under sold well. The purse <laughs> right in on the ball and spreading the play. And there's danger knocking again. Keep going, 20. A chance to really round off this match, which was in the balance at half time, at 12 points to five in the girls under 16 Down tournament 20. the quarter finals on re1 ivy bridge good support line College. after the first on break RE2, and then more Whitbread purple jersey bodies on RE3, flying up in the wing mirrors Penrith versus Kingsbridge. oh no and on re4 Brin oh, no, no, no. versus kings of wessex and in the boys under 18 bars tournament oh, that rips your heart out five nelson college no claysmore school surely and that was RE6, down before Casey the line Wimbledon versus Crim Rimney. those games you offer 240. no i think we're going to give it to him i think we're going to award him that <sighs> that's not fair Crouch. last play of this one our next match on, Set. by the way, is the quarter-final in the girls' under-16s <laughs> competition. Since he's gone in and straight out the tunnel. Three sets. Same mark. Crouch! Bind! Set! So, Campion running from deep and this man here has shown a great pair of wheels today as well as power and composure on the ball two has to roll you two illegal two has to roll nice draw and pass back to number seven and maybe from here campion will go in here foot race to the line it'll be won by their number seven Second try of the contest. Right at the death. They kept fighting, Campion. And all seven. So 24 points. The Perth School have beaten Campion. 24-12. And this is the score which rounds things off and a reward for how hard Campion worked.
Well, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Roslyn Park National School Sevens. We are into crunch time of the under-16 Women's Cup competition. We are the quarterfinals, and joining me is the Director of Sport for Rugby, Devi. Thank you so much for being with me this afternoon. Thank you very much for having me and for putting me on a fantastic game. Great to see the girls play. And we're very excited to talk all about uh, what's coming up at rugby, a huge weekend of sevens, which has a drastic consequence on this competition with the likes of uh, Newells from New Zealand putting themselves into the Vars to get themselves ready for that competition. They're a massive team to be in there. But uh, we're watching at the moment Samuel Whitbread against Maynard. Samuel Whitbread in the yellow and black. Maynard in the blue and black. We'll let you know how they got on in their perspective groups. Samuel Whitbread, a great story. They were behind on goal difference to Rygate Grammar School, uh, points difference, sorry, to Rygate Grammar School. As Maynard looked to storm towards the corner, but it's a huge tackle to keep the ball in play. Still wrapped up as the Maynard school. And a knock on there will leave the advantage up to Sammy Whitbread, who may just play away with it. Oh, it's, it's too much pace for the game at the moment for me to tell you all about the uh, Sammy Whitbread's fantastic group performance that got them to this point. But they're still playing out from inside their own half. Leia Bramwell, it was under 12, who made that significant turnover. And still play on, they will, with the Advantage. This time Maynard are in behind. They kick the advantage away, so the game will continue. What a frantic start to this cup quarter final. No release. So finally a penalty and a chance for Sam Rupert to, to exit. They were second in their group, and uh, what got them through to this stage was a 41 0 uh, destruction of Bab Lake and King Henry VIII school, which turned the tide of the points difference in their favour, which gave them this more favourable tie against the Maynard School, which is a huge result right at the very end of uh, their group proceedings. Maynard School also topped their group as well with nine points. They're, the, they're undefeated in this tournament, which Samuel Whitbread also are with their draw against uh, Rygate Grammar School in their earlier group stages. They've had a really, really impressive run in so far. Here's the stats. Uh, the Maynard School have only conceded five points all day. It's only one try. That's impressive for a start. This looks like it's going to be a really tight game, doesn't it, at the moment? Um, you can't see anybody dominating at this stage, so you can tell why they've both topped their groups. Really impressive stuff, and it'll be the Maynard School to feed this scrum. Good contest in there, but away comes Gullet. Good switch of play by Easy Gullet, who can take it all the way to the edge. Oh, Still going, Gullet. Great running, great Gullet's running. Come on, going. let's finish it off. Fantastic. Well, what a great try that is. A really clever little play. Just one switch around off the scrum and uh, Izzy Gullet went all the way. Can someone stay behind? A lovely first try. That was fantastic impression that she's made up there on the pitch. It was really good running and she absolutely accelerated to just finish that off. Well done. Charlotte Rayford, their captain, also plays for Devon. Looking to add the extras, but unable to. And yeah, perfect start really for the Maynard School, who've had a very impressive tournament. From Exeter, of course, they hail. A region where plenty of women's rugby is played. It is fantastic to see so many teams here at this tournament. It really is growing the women's game. Um, rugby school ourselves, we've brought our, our under 18s for the first time ever, but just seeing so many schools that we see on our fixture card with lots of other sports, it's great to see them here uh, for girls' rugby. We'll see rugby in action later on on Thursday when the Women's Cup starts at under 18 level. It's, of course, the under 16 iteration, a new iteration into the tournament, which is great to see this. One of many Set. cup quarterfinals. We'll have the semi-final for you later as well. Our final game of the day on RE2. And away come the main art school looking to add to that extra. It's a great tackle there. By Samuel Whitbread, great line speed. Rock. Olivia Zien with the tackle there. Seven. Wrapped up by Samuel Whitbread, who can counter from inside their own half now. And a penalty goes their way. 
High tackle, haven't been too many of them today. Not 10 will be the call from the official. I might see a card here very early on. Number 13, not back 10. I love the image of Esther Cook sprinting back into line, sprinting away from the referee, <laughs> attempting to give her a yellow card. It was like, if I don't look at her, she might not give me that card. If I can just turn my back and get into line. We've all been there. <laughs> Can't Unfo blame her for that. Unfortunate, though, <laughs> Sophie Finley, just, the ball didn't leave her hand from the tap pen, so the scrum will go to the Maynard School's way. Little Five. mistakes like that can be so costly in these uh, cup quarter-finals. Not happy with how the scrum is set so far, but now player down. Very difficult to play with a player down in sevens. Absolutely, yeah, especially when you've just got that slight advantage with that first try. That's the last thing that they need right now. Hopefully they can dwindle down that time without any disadvantage. Well, it's been swung wide. The main art skills school still oh, pushing. Great inside step. Huge tackle though on uh, Susie Hawkins, but still the main art school look to play wide, even with a player down. Rolston, great offload to Gibbs. High tackle is the call. Rolston comes back round the corner, kept in play well. Gibbs goes to the boot and just cannons off a. Uh, Sammy Whitbread player, but it will be hacked forward once more. Gathered well by Hawkins, who cuts inside. Gullet. Backwards is the call, so away goes Rainford with the offload. It's another great tackle by Samuel Whitbread. And a lovely turnover. And now with a player down, Samuel Whitbread could break from here. It's an excellent run from Olivia Zien. Still going. Fantastic and catch. a lovely oh. supporting line. Well, it's a lovely finish by <laughs> Lavinia Natui. And a great score, really. I think that Sammy Whitbread uh, deserved that from their great defensive work. Absolutely. Maynard School were putting in the passes. They were really trying to play that fluid game, but unfortunately, um, the, the school have just totally dominated with their tackles and turned that ball over. Well, a thrilling half in this cup quarter final, a game that really means everything for these two sides that have worked so hard to get here. Samuel Whitbread were joyous when they uh, managed to scrape through their group with their massive points turnover in their final group game. Lovely support from Natui to finish off that score and tie things up five all as we go into the break. Well, in the break, we can talk about everything that's coming up at the rugby school, including this weekend's massive international sevens tournament. Yeah, it is a great time to be at rugby school. We're celebrating our 200th anniversary um, since William Webb Ellis caught that ball and uh, ran with it in his hands. So we've got a whole year long program. We started in January uh, with our Global Pass launch. Um, we were really honored to have uh, Mike Tyndall came down to rugby school and, and set us off with that. Then this weekend, yes, as you say, we've got an international National Sevens competition taking place on Saturday and Sunday at the school. Uh, we're really honoured um, that we've got teams from New Zealand, Australia, Canada, um, Chile coming to see us and, and play. We have done it before, we did it for our 450th and it was just an amazing event to have um, such a talented bunch of under 18 boys on the close uh, where the game began. Well, I was just running through some of the schools that we have available, the likes of Fetz College from Scotland, who are a fantastic side, Nelson College from New Zealand, and Swanigan Lake, who are both here today playing as well. So it's a really unbelievably talented uh, set of schools, like Cedar High coming over from Japan as well. Like it, From everywhere, from every rugby playing <laughs> country, it seems. Well, that's it. When we put the invites out, we literally um, had a waiting list in the end. Everybody wanted to come. I think it really is a bit of a shrine to everybody, the close, and we do really love getting everybody into the school and having that opportunity to play on the close. And what's been really nice is with tying it in with Roslyn Park, putting it at the end of this week means a lot of schools have been able to make a real tour of it. So quite a lot of schools here now playing at Roslyn Park and then we'll go on to play with us at the weekend. Well, you'll see the likes of uh, Schwanigan Lake from Canada and Nelson from New Zealand are both in action in the uh, vast competition. Great start for Samuel Whitbread in this second half, however. Winning a penalty deep inside uh, the Maynard School's territory. Natui, great offload. Samuel Whitbread come back 
to where there's space in the wide channels. Bradwell oh, takes on running. a defender. And what a start for Samuel Whitbread. A massive tackle by Leia Bramwell on Leia Bramwell and no score is the call from the referee. I think she took it too far, didn't she? Went out the back before she actually grounded the ball. Well, Leia Bramwell looks to take it under the post and there's a shot in here. As you say, a massive from, uh, tackle. From the opposite number of uh, Maynard School. That's Charlotte Rayford, the captain. He's playing for Devon as well as DPP with Exeter's lady side. That's a huge captain's intervention to knock Leia Bramwell, who did so well to uh, find herself in a scoring position off the field. What a big moment that is in this tie. That is a really big one. That is a really steep learning curve for any rugby player. Whilst you do want to get that ball under the post, you really do need to secure that try. And it's been spilled by Samuel Whitbread, and the main old school will come with it straight away. Impressive clear out there from the ruck, but they're a bit narrow at the moment are the Maynard School. Ralston takes on Bramwell, taken down well. Bramwell did well in the tackle there. I believe we're just making a substitution. A possible injury. Important that that is able to take place at this level of the game. Bailey Dixon is on the field. Well, we hope that all affected parties are all right following that uh, injury change. And we'll restart with a scrum to the Maynard School, just in between the 15 and 22. A very promising attacking position. The scores are levels following that try saving tackle from uh, the Maynard School's captain, Charlotte Rayford. Knocking her opposite number into touch. And great defence by Samuel Whitbread, loads of pressure, but they've made it into the wide channels to Rolston. And now it's Rayford. Rayford looks to take oh. it to the edge. Great offload. Gullet, all wrapped up. Oh, and an steal. excellent steal. Perfect, called the referee. Now Bramwell will look to play away. Natui. Patient play from Samuel Whitbread. May not have really stepped up in this half with their tackling. So a very physical encounter. Still five all. Mavini and Natui gets us underway. Excellent ball by Natui into the wide channels. That pass doesn't Lucky. find its intended target. Offload into the hands of Natui once more. Spreads the ball wide, just spilled by Olivia Zien. Oh, what a great dummy. That is a show and go. Fantastic. Olivia and Natui could go all the way here. That is fantastic stuff. And it's another try for Olivia and Natui. It's another try for Samuel Whitbread, who lead by 10 to 5 with just under three minutes 15 left in this quarter final that is a try worthy of winning any cup tie that was absolutely sensational and uh, really deserved with that lovely move she should be really proud of that try and now Lavinia Nitui with her second try such an important player it seems to Samuel Whitbread converted as well so 12-5 the main high school in this half have looked very impressive but unable to convert from the positions they found themselves in they started off strong in the first half they played a fantastically wide passing game but they've now just seemed to come in a little bit narrow but their tackling is fantastic but once they turn ball over we just need to get them out wide so that they've got more strength and depth to be able to drive forward a really deep kick returned excellently well so far by the Maynard it's great School. running well, without a single ruck form, Ooh. they've gone straight through the hole here. This is really excellent play by the Maynard School. McElligot finally there, took contact. And Nancy Bubb takes it back into uh, a congested area. Gibbs shows and goes. Gullet cuts back inside once more. Good McElligot again. Now for the three round Great clearance. 
Uh, the ball is all wrapped up there by Samuel Whitbread. And going to get clears. Rayford, the captain, spreads it wide once more. Lovely pass to Cook back against the grain. That ball is always backwards. Bub, Rayford. Changes direction. Constance spread it wide now. Yes, that's the way. They need to get some more width. And I think this try is theirs. Mayo, Scoop, Detrail, Gullet, the captain, Rayford. Oh, unfortunately spilled at the last and cleared away. And an excellent clearance that finds touch. That was such a shame for Maynard there. They were really passing that ball from left to right and really generating a lot of space. And they were so close to that try line, line there. Up, Louis. Here's your mark. Well, that's really disappointing, but uh, they will have another opportunity from this line out, a crucial opportunity. With only a minute to go, ball. they trail by seven the in this Back quarter final. Thank you. you can see on the pitch Thank behind that rugby is ongoing Back. at every angle. Sammy Whitbread wrap, wrap up, up, up possession, up, but it's Ruck was called by the referee, so it's a penalty instead. Rayford, the captain, gets us underway. Surely not back ten is the call. Indeed it is. And a yellow card for Samuel Whitbread. Well, that's a massive moment. They'll now play the rest of the game. A player down, trying to defend this lead. Wow, that could be a true test of character for a team now when they're down, one down with Maynard. a lead of 12-5. Well, look at the pace that oh. Gullet still possesses. And Gullet might go over here. Well, they've scored, but at the moment that won't be enough. They still need to convert. This is a huge moment for the captain, Charlotte Rayford. Tipped by their coach to be there. Real star player. It is full time. So this kick will level the game. It's a great effort. It had the distance, but it just drifted to the left hand side of the post. And Samuel Whitbread will progress to the cup semi final. A huge effort by them who only snuck into this competition, this stage of the competition, with a huge 41 0 win. And it's very gracious of them to head over to their uh, losing opposition, the main article, who were very impressive today, just unable to convert quick enough to turn the game around. What a fantastic game of rugby, and what a fantastic advert for the women's game at this level as well. Oh, that was a fabulous quarterfinal. Both, it could have gone either way for both teams, um, but that was a fa fabulous viewing for us. And like you say, that just really puts a pedestal for girls' rugby and how far it's come. Well done, both teams. Well, it's the final round of pool fixtures as well in the under-18 Vars up next before some elimination rugby ahead of the championship groups being formed ahead of the Vars and Bowl tomorrow. And then it will be a cup semi-final in the women's rugby. Here for you are on RE2 ahead of the cup final on pitch one. Thank you so much for joining us, Debbie. We look forward massively to this Saturday, the international rugby sevens. What a fantastic opportunity that is for everyone involved yeah definitely like we say everybody is welcome to come to the close come to rugby school come and visit us and um, check out our website we've got so many events going on and um, we've just recently held the under 18 women's england versus wales game and um, we had one of the biggest audiences um, that that women's game has ever had we had nearly 3,000 people come and visit us um, and the girls put on a fantastic performance um, on the day the weather was glorious um, so yeah come and see us we look and forward rugby to being stand is also here today if anyone is uh, listening from home and will be here throughout the week, rugby have got their stand going as well. And a couple of little games for the players I've oh, seen being played we've as We've well. got a fantastic Blaze Pod stand oh. going in. So we're on number 33, so come and see us. Come and have some food, come and have some beverages, come and say hi. And, uh, yeah, come and try and join our leaderboard to win one of our um, limited edition uh, Global Pass Balls. Fantastic. Thank you so much for being with us. We look forward to this weekend where the uh, Rugby Sevens will be live on Next Gen. I'll be up there in uh, Coventry Way for a bit of rugby then. Thank you so much. Well done. Thank you. Well, the rugby doesn't stop, of course, here on Next Gen on RE2. It's Repton up against Campion. The final round of pool fixtures 
and the under-18 game. And it's all to play for as we come. It's Repton against the Grange School Northwick as the final round of group games. I apologize. The Grange School Northwick in the uh, green tinted finish, while Repton are in the black, uh, the, black ah. the navy, sorry, with a yellow trim. I'll run you through everything this game means for both sides. So the Grange School need a huge win here to overturn Richard Challoner schools. Points deficit of 47, whereas the Repton School, unfortunately, on zero points, are out of this competition. So the Grange School, currently not in possession, in desperate need of a victory here to keep their hopes of cup rugby alive. But it's Repton in possession. It's been turned over the breakdown by the Grange School, but only a knock-on is the call. Well, it will be a scrum to the Grange. Crouch, fine, set. And a great opportunity for them to get their uh, important Crouch. fixture underway. Good afternoon. A switch the back towards the short side. The ball doesn't go to hand. Great line speed by Repton. Davis is under it, on but uh, RE1, the the Grange School has got the ball away. Back to the short side they come, where they've stacked up the numbers. Them. Clever the bit of play by them. A, and those numbers are forced to hold, which the Grange Price School will Britain. go steaming through. And this is a big moment for them. A great and start. And back to the pool games on RE2, the Grange School versus Repton School. And on RE3, Winchester College versus Richard Challoner School. As you may have well heard over the tannoy, Richard Challoner School are playing Winchester College. If Winchester College win that game and the Grange School win this game, then they have a great chance of going through. But the points difference is what matters because Richard Challoner School are currently on a points difference of 47, while Winchester sit on seven and the Grange School four. Now, if Richard Challoner School beat Winchester College by a significant amount and the Grange School win, they'll go through in second place which will at least allow them into the playoff section, the elimination round, as they hunt for Vars Rugby on day two. The bowl is also taking place tomorrow for the sides that do not progress straight through that competition. So much rugby. Dante Ohai takes contact. Repton looking for a response, but it's been spilled just in the wet weather that started to fall here. Well, the Grange School enjoyed a 38-21 win over Winchester College earlier in the day before losing to Richard Challoner School by 20 points to seven. Back five. Winchester College also beat Crowley. Repton School 31-7. Richard Challoner School beat Repton 34-0. So they haven't had a fantastic day at the Roslyn Park, but that can all change for them if they can keep out the Grange School here with a fantastic last-ditch tackle. And Hugo G comes away with it. Not rolling. Not rolling is the call, so a good chance for Repton to exit and get the game back on track. Three minutes gone, they trail by seven. They would love to leave the Roslyn Park Sevens with something no impressive here, of course. If Repton win this game by a large enough points margin and Winchester lose by a large enough points margin, they will also finish in second. So there is still something to play for for every side. But with that impressive turnover by the Grange School disrupting in the ruck. Yeah. It now looks like uh, the Grange School have another opportunity to extend their advantage. A very promising position for them. Yeah. Crouch. Bind. Set. Push. Early push is the call, and he has not retreated 10 metres, which is required from the free kick. That's a yellow card. Back 10, please. And Davis is now off the field, so this will make it even harder now. Keep going, go. Yes. Davis is now off the field for two minutes for the remainder of this half, perhaps, so that yellow card. 
just flicked off the boot Hit me. creatively but uh, off the referee so now this really is the perfect opportunity for the Grange school to score This is, of course, the Grange School in Northwick, for no uh, confusion. In between Set. Liverpool and Manchester, just south of Warrington. North of Crewe. So they've travelled a long way to take part in the Rosen Park Seven. This little switch inside, lovely line. <laughs> and a penalty. Eleven not rolling. Eleven not rolled. Off the mark, unfortunately, but the Grange School now had a perfect opportunity to score from here. They're a player to the advantage. Another penalty. Macy, another card. Oh, dear. That's the second yellow card for Repton. That's Hugo G now leaving the field. And would you believe it? The Grange School are playing against five men. Surely they must score here. Finally, they do. Even then, taking the selfish option, but uh, one could say... Driving it closer towards the post. And the conversion is good. Well, Repton have five men on the field currently. There are two yellow cards in quick succession, which has led to that. So I, uh, I struggle to see how Repton keep this game alive for the remainder of the half. It'll be exciting to see nonetheless Vars rugby could be slipping away from Repton a deep kickoff despite all the green grass does find a Repton player as they look to try and stretch the Grange school as much as they can knocked on unfortunately and Five-man teams cannot make those sort of mistakes. There's holes all over the field and just knocked on at the last. Well, in the end, very good defending from Repton to cover those spaces with the, uh, the two-man advantage that the Grange School currently uh, has. Still only 12-0 in the closing stage of this first half. One player will be allowed back King onto the field. Ivy Bridge and Samuel Whitbread. The end of the half, uh, and that is the case as they've gone back to six players now. And clearing it off the RE1, field seems Kingsbridge to be the smartest uh, option. And on RE2, well, things haven't Ivy exactly Bridge, gone to plan uh, for either Samuel side, Whitbread. really. The Grange School so could not use the two man the advantage they had to any greater effect uh, than scoring the one try. 12 0, they currently lead after their very early score. Repton currently trail them by 12 in a game that they absolutely must win if they wish to keep any hope of. Vars Rugby alive. The Grange School are doing what they need to do. A few more points would do them a world of good with the points difference currently mattering so much if they wish to catch Richard Chandler School. That's all dependent on other results, which we'll get to you as soon as we have them. It's half time between the Grange School and Repton. Currently, the Grange School lead by 12 in the final round of pool fixtures here in the under 18 Vars competition at the Rosin Park National School Sevens. Repton will get us underway. The final round of pool fixtures here. Up next on this field, lovely switch of play by the Grange School. It could be on the corner here, it's off the boot. Twice it's been hacked through. Repton maintains no. possession. Still not back to a full complement of players just yet. Down by one. Hence why they 
cut the short line. Still Repton in possession, O'Brien. Davis back on the field, goes to the boots. Gathered, but not cleanly by the Grange School. And Repton are making a nuisance of themselves in the breakdown. Forced to clear, and now there's a chase on in the backfield. It's been missed by everyone, but Repton have gathered. Lovely footwork by uh, the number five. And a lovely offload too. Davis once again. Short running line by Ed Pass. All good. Really loose play. Archie Ramspot at number one gets the offload away. O'Brien shoots out at the base of that ruck. And there was no advantage from that knock on. So it's a knock on by Repton. Unfortunately, that will bring an end to their promising attack. Well, yes, of course, the cup final, the elimination round, sorry, that comes up next here is the winner of Pool E against okay. the winner of Pool F. Yeah, I, I called him on at half time. That's St. Paul's School. Crouch. Who have won Pool E. Fine. Set. Against Seven Oaks. A big game between two massive sides as they fight for a place in the uh, pool stages <laughs> tomorrow. There'll be another pool before the uh, bowl is decided. And uh, the vase and bowl will come into effect tomorrow once all the dust has settled. Well, that was great defence by Repton, who managed to pull the Grange School right back past the dead bull line. Just wait. You've, got, you've got to wait for command, yeah? Crouch! Fine! Set! Max Whittingham with the feed and let the go wide once more. Little show and go and a dart inside twice. <laughs> the footwork of Davis has sent him over. Great work. The show and go, ducking under the uh, challenge of the Grange School player. And then again, another step inside. Max Whittingham here with the feed from this scrum. It was clean ball. And then with options inside and out yes. for one show and go and Behind. then ducking under the challenge a great finish and repton will get us underway once more gathered well by the grange school off this kickoff through two defenders excellent leg drive and up to the 15. Maul. well maul is the call by the official and repton look to kill the ball and do a great turnover really from a very promising take off the kickoff Powerful running. But Repton will play away with it and perhaps look to turn this game around. They really would spoil the Grange School's day with a win here. Let's go. A tight, a narrow win doesn't really do Repton any good, but every place matters Crouch. in these pools from Fine. first to fourth. We certainly do their That's assessment of the day seven. some good. But a win for the Grange School is really crucial here. Set. Currently level on points. Change straight out. Reset. Currently level on points with Richard Challoner School. Uh, with Winchester Crouch. College, sorry, who are playing Richard Challoner Five. School across the way. Set. Shoots straight out the scrum Reset. twice. The referee not, happen it, not happy with uh, how the set piece is forming up so far for either side. Crouch. Bind. Set. As we come to the closing stage of this back, half, great back. pressure. And the Grange School have turned it over. This could be a turnover at the scrum, however, the ruck time, however. And it is penalty <laughs> advantage for Repton. Well, it was excellent work by the nine of uh, the Grange School to turn over, but didn't have the support with him. So now Repton will play away. Uh, excellent switch inside by Hugo G, e, who's back on the first. field following his yellow card. And great footwork from our pass. Attempted counter uh, from the Grange School come flying through. G beats the first player excellently well. Picked at the base. 
And a bit of afters between two players. It's another yellow for Repton. Archie Ramsbottom is leaving the field for a bit of afters between him and the man who tackled him. That is unfortunate and will perhaps seal this game for the Grange School. But once again, Repton are down to six. These boys must be absolutely shattered, having played uh, with five men. We've stayed played with six, then five. And now six again, as the Grange School look to use this advantage. It's a lovely run, a knocked on though there, unfortunately. Well, Repton have an awful lot to do now with six players yet again to play out from inside their own half. But both sides seem to be lacking a bit of energy in this final minute. The game is still there for either side. Repton will play with six players for the remainder of this game. The Grange School would love a few more scores to really aid their points difference. As at the moment they are still dependent on results elsewhere. Well, the ball was straight out so once again we'll reset at the ruck there's let's go more time bind spent up. at the scrum here than let's go bind up please in most sevens games it must be said crouch bind set okay. ball is won by repton davis options inside now goes back to the short side shows and goes yet again puts his man on the ground but Clings on in the tackle. It's loose at the breakdown. Good contest. <laughs> Lost forward on the floor. Knocked on once again. <laughs> and that'll bring an end to it. The Grange School have done all they can, registering a victory here against a uh, frantic but hard fought Repton School who didn't matter how many players they had on the field, they put in a real fight to make this game really tight in the end. Who knows if it's enough for either side to progress to the areas of the tournament they wish to. But that will bring an end to the pool game. And up next, we have the uh, elimination round. Talk me through the uh, elimination round. The business end, isn't it, really? Um, Wilf, yeah, it's uh, going to be quite exciting between these two. Two undefeated teams in St Paul's and Seven Oaks and they meet for a winner takes all because the winner gets to come back tomorrow and really what could be a better incentive or reward than to get another day at Roslyn Park. So many schools experience of this great tournament is, is as a one day affair because so few schools are able to make it through such as the competition and how tough it is. So to get a bonus day, another day off school, another day back on these pitches, uh, that's what's at stake for both Seven Oaks and St Paul. So uh, that's going to be coming up. But Will, uh, thank you very much for your commentary today. It's been fantastic uh, to have you alongside. Are we going to have you for the one more match at the under-16s girls final? Perhaps we'll see how the semi-cup plays out. We'll see yeah. how it plays out. OK, fantastic. So, Seven Oaks will kick us off. Playing in their usual colours. Against St Paul's in their usual, in their all black. So RE2. The destination for this knockout elimination round between Seven Oaks and St Paul's. And the winner goes through into a pool stage system tomorrow. That's uh, how it works. Red, it's that's you. Red, that's you. Day two, but it's not quite full knockouts tomorrow. You get an early knockout chance here, and then that books you a ticket into pool stages again tomorrow. Did you need a nine in? Before things get really busy at the back end of tomorrow, and it's uh, quarterfinals, semis, and then the finals. So who will be there between these two? Seven Oaks whipping the ball down the line with miss pass from McQueen. The talented number 10 for Seven Oaks scored a couple of tries in their opening match, and he's on the ball again here. Burgess spreads the play, and Harry Clayson, someone who really impressed in that first game on Go this on pitch ball, as well. Clayson, McQueen, Burgess takes the responsibility to make the call himself. Burgess finds Ian Shoebridge. Count is good. But St Paul's take it away. 
and now their first chance to attack in this contest. Don Fitzpatrick in the eight jersey. Loop that over. Andres Hajilozu. Big fence on McQueen and then to a good break up field. Backwards. Can't quite find on the, the pass onto Zach Newsome. But it's still with St. Paul's, Josh Thomas. And they're working hard, St. Paul's, to keep this in their hands. The as game is just due to get underway the press at defense from Seth Oaks is good. It's uh, a high stakes one this encounter. And the winners both of Group C, Tunbridge, going and on the into the well. The first, in order to pitch RE1. Make the first and the winners of Group E, St. Piece of progress versus the winners of Group this F, knockout game. Seven Oaks. That's Here's Alex Palmer. Palmer driving at 3 hard. Has support as well on the inside from Newsom. The call is there and it just about makes it into the hands of Fitzpatrick. But not into the man who might have run that in. And Seven Oaks wipe the mud off their brow and breathe a little easier. They shut that down well. So, Seven Oaks ball. Bind! It's been a long time since Next. they beat Parkhouse School on this pitch in their first game, and then that was backed up against Colleg Cigar from Wales. And then a really good match earlier today against Newcastle on the line, 31-21. Seven Oaks won that encounter. For St Paul's progress, it's been a little more straightforward. They've not been challenged by those in their group today. Beating uh, Duke of York's Royal Military School early on convincingly, and then Victoria College were beaten 29-7 before beating John Collett School 50 points to nil. So here comes Seven Oaks, looking to put them under pressure for the first time here at Roslyn Park. Freddie Poynton in that nine shirt. He's been a menace with ball in hand today. Oh, knocking on. Freddie Burgess as the ball came back for him. There were a few hands in there from St. Paul's and that disrupted things. Crouch! Find! That! Oaks edge up. Don't put too much pressure on them, but they've still worked an opening here, St. Paul's. And now it's a race for the try line and it'll be won by Andres Hajilozu, a man who's on the radar of the Cyprus national team. Hajilozu. And we saw just how speedy he can be. Well, that's good credentials for Cypriot Flyers out there in the Premiership. Jalozu running in try number one. We've had some a good source of intel from St Paul's. Uh, they've been very good to share us information about these players, including uh, Hajilozu. <laughs> Able to ease up from the 22. That's a good start. Now the kickoff so important. And Seven Oaks no, don't claim it, so St. Paul's are rampaging forward over. again. And Hajilozu yeah. racing away for a second. He's coming at Seven Oaks from all angles. And that all about the quality of the restart here because the chase is so good and it was Hajilozu who put the pressure on. No, excuse me, it wasn't. It was Ned Bowman who put that pressure on and the chase offered the opportunity to Hajilozu. <laughs> Yeah, early, 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 early. 
So Seven Oaks will get the ball back here. This is a good chance for the Kent School with 30 seconds remaining of the half. Really feel they have to be on the board here. McQueen. Being dragged into touch by Fitzpatrick. Just kept in and nicely done. Hobbs. Now into the arms of Moulton. Moulton wants support on the inside, gets it with Burgess. McQueen, big miss pass. Seven Oaks have to stop their momentum and start again. And Hobbs does that, but it's in the hands of St Paul's again. And here they come with half time knocking, gathered back in. Speed to take him all the way from Zach Newsom. Time is up anyway. So three from St Paul's in a first half, which they've taken their chances when they presented them. And have had to work hard in defence to stop Seven Oaks. Fuck around the pussy. Fuck around the pussy. <laughs> half time called. 19 points to nil for St Paul's. And the London School. Such ruthlessness in attack, and that was a well timed ball to Newsholm. St Paul's turning around with a healthy 19-point advantage in this knockout game. The winner goes through to tomorrow. Another day at Roslyn Park is the reward for victory in this game. And don't Seven Oaks have it all to do? But they have the personnel to be able to do it. Just need a few breaks like that. And I'm joined for the second half by Angus Savage of Next Gen 15. Uh, really the man who could not be more in the know about schools rugby. And uh, Angus... You were just saying how this is a proper under-18 bars knockout game. It has a, a nice feel to it. Yeah, it really does. It's, you know, these two teams, are, without wishing to discredit them, I suppose, it probably wouldn't be knocking around in this sort of stage if it was if it was Thursday or Friday in the cup. But they're in the bars, and they're two teams that have got a real opportunity here to go really deep. And that's what this competition is all about. It's about lots of different teams being able to compete at this top end and this elimination game is fantastic. Here's Alex Palmer to put another try to the title <laughs> that they already have, St Paul's, of 19 points. And that's just the beginning. And it, well, there's seven minutes to play, but when you start second half like that with the foothold you've given yourself, it's a long way back. Um, yeah, yeah, it's a it's a tough comeback from here, but all credit to St Paul's. You know, I've I've been coming here for a long time now, and I, I've seen a few good St Paul's teams down the years. They uh, 
Well, well, all the years blend together pre-COVID, don't they? But uh, there was a, a 2018 or 2019, they had a fantastic run. Um, I think they got to the to the final of this Vars competition. And, and this team look, at the, look as though they've got every chance of doing that. This is a really impressive elimination round performance. Palmer just had that chance to go himself and didn't uh, hand it to Andreas Hadjilozu, who would have been in for a hat trick had he taken that. Hold, but he went and hold, got himself up. And Seven Oaks. Offside, have a penalty hit. It's worth saying as well. This is game four for these guys on what is a wet, boggy, difficult, tiring day to play sevens. Yeah, and that's reflected a little bit in uh, in how hard these guys are having to work just to get the wheels turning sometimes. Charlie Moulton uh, working hard in contact there. On the field is uh, Victor Fister. And he sets uh, those outside him off and running in the form of Burgess. You're fine. Got a run. Got a run. Back to Moulton. Real talented... Um, Scrum half is uh, young Freddie Poynton. Oh, sorry, Freddie Poynton, not Freddie Moulton. And this is back to Harry Clayson, who's one of their power carriers. He's off now, leave it! St Paul's, though, working hard in defence. Seven Oaks into the 22, a rare occasion that they've been this close to St Paul's in this match. Could have worked out. Poynton was chasing hard, and now he's defending hard. And that's a carry from Imnadze. Harrison ships this along. Palmer again. Oh, that's missed out everybody. It's going to bounce around. No chance for Seven Oaks's uh, Victor Fister to get on it. But they're in, they're in the zone they need to be in. This. They certainly are. And it's an interesting tactic, that one, the, uh, the crossfield kick. You, you, don't often see it in sevens, but actually when the pitches are sticky and you know it's it's very very muddy out there, it's not a bad it's not a bad play. The ball's going to do something that the defence isn't expecting. You know we're used to seeing those if they don't go to hand, it sits up pretty nicely. Well, it's going to do something weird. It may just sit and not bounce at all. It may just sit and slide. So suddenly everyone's guessing a little bit as to what can happen. And you know if you're chasing a game, why not take that chance? That pointed doesn't get a chance to play offside the referee McQueen loops this wide little dance here and then Ian Shoebridge carries hard McQueen plays scrum half there's a there's some of the things you hear around a rugby pitch which are as old as time, aren't they? And, uh, and what we heard there, well, it's A, never true, and B, it's, not, it's been said you. since you very start playing contact at a very young age. Ah, it's, uh, you can but tick a box. If you're playing bingo, that would be one of the ones you need to tick off. The chat never gets any better, does it? <laughs> Come on, guys. Find. Be imaginative. That! St Paul's have played a, a really strong game here and they might try and make things a little better with Palmer. And he escapes the first and Seven Oaks get back. Don't pull him through, Red. Yes, Good well, pressure from Seven Oaks. No advantage. Angus, sometimes with, with the way Roslyn Park can work, it's why there's so many question marks over who can get through to the next day because you could be a team like Seven Oaks, have won every game today um, and they did have they were within 10 points of one of their Ouch. teams, but they might not really have been tested until this Boys. point. And if you're suddenly two Set. tries down, things can get so much harder for you. you and that, in many ways, that's the very purpose of this elimination game, because when you're dealing with, you know, however many teams are in this Vars competition, I think it's 226 or, so, or something in that in that neck of the woods. Ouch. Inevitably, some groups are so strong, some are weak. There's a bit of imbalance. The because you know, you're asking an awful lot of people to make that judgment in the seeding process. This elimination game just works that out and goes, well, have you been tested in your group? Or were you not tested? And now we're, now we're finding out just how tested you've been, perhaps. Good speed. Oh, yeah. For seven Oaks. 
and surely the penalty try will come. Oh, perhaps cover was there. Seven Oaks are going to have to do it the old-fashioned way. It's good running round to make the extra man, and here it is for Seven Oaks. And that's nicely finished. Ian Shoebridge touching down for Seven Oaks. I love that. That's a real touch of class with that final pass. Just the delay on the pass, waiting, waiting, waiting. Let the defenders bite and then just put that pass away. And it may not count for too much, but there's a lot of pride in that, isn't there? Yeah, well played, Seven Oaks, to stick at it against a team which have uh, racked up a few points. They were really in the fight as well. This is good hands under a degree of pressure here. Yeah, it's this last pass. Look at the delay on that. Just waits and waits and waits. Draws the defenders. And that's how you give someone an easy run in. So St Paul's will be the side that come back tomorrow. Another day off school, get it in the books and find out kickoff times for the group stages because St Paul's will be coming back tomorrow. Seven Oaks have finished today. It's the experience that so many schoolboys have here at Rosen Park. Just the one day. It is sweet, though. That was my experience. And Seven Oaks, uh, three wins, however. Um, three wins, one loss. But uh, a fine showing. And uh, good to have them on our screens a couple of times today. Yeah, it's been absolutely fantastic. Seven Oaks have lit up the screen and played some really some really lovely stuff it's a it's a shame for them to to go down in this one but they've had a great day and i'll tell you what i came down here three times in my time and didn't make it past day one on any of them so i i know how they feel and you and me both angus you and me both uh, but i think we still hold on to the chance that it might somehow happen uh, i don't know can we get back to school <laughs> i don't know maybe we'll get get a gig as an assistant coach to someone just for the one year just so that we can progress that's it that's it i think they should be a veterans Roslyn park actually that's what we should do. Old, old boys can come back and play. for the women's under 16 cup semi-final time. We've already seen Samuel Whitbread in their quarter final where they came out victorious and they've pushed all the way through to the semi-finals. This is a massive occasion for both sides, especially Ivy Ridge Community College who have submitted so many teams into this competition. And uh, thankfully, I have some co-coms as well for this, our last game of the day on RE2. You're very excited for the uh, Cup semi-final we have in front of us. Yeah, thank you, Wilf. Uh, excited about seeing Samuel Whitbread Academy, particularly because uh, it's such a fine and growing rugby production line, really, across uh, girls' rugby. And, of course, this week they were at Twickenham as well with their under-18 team in the Vars competition. It's, it's a great hotbed. And, uh, yeah, Ivy Bridge, what more can you say about them as well through the years? They've uh, produced a lot of players. This should be a good one. Well, uh, Ivory Ridge came out of a really tough Red! tie against Dubai College, who've done very well following their long travels to get as far as they did. But Ivory Ridge saw off Dubai College and uh, Whitbread, we saw them on our screens, taking down the Maynard School in a very close game. So excited that both these sides have gotten so far. Sammy Whitbread Knock with the first advantage. sustained bit of possession. Knock on. And away may come Ivory Bridge College. You may see there are plenty of duplicate shirt numbers. Um, 
on field today, but I've been given descriptions by their coaches, so we'll try our hardest to make those work. Well, if you are pushing the professional le professionalism levels here in our next year 1510, it's a lot of shirt swapping that happens at Roslyn Park, and if we've got names wrong in the past, then uh, it's uh, not always uh, a simple mistake of getting the number wrong. There's, there's a lot of shirt swapping that can play havoc with things, but we got it. We got it sorted with you, Will. Well, Sophie Kilvere is the one feeding this scrum, to the best of my knowledge, and Ivanbridge have come away with it. The first attack of this set of play for them will be ended rather abruptly with a knock on at second receiver. It, it was, was raining heavily uh, earlier on in the day. The rain has stopped now, but it will affect the uh, state of the ball, you must say. Yeah, that's a heartbreaker, really. That first central position, such an inviting area to them run into. And uh, to just knock that forward. Samuel Whitbread, however, just get a little hit from that. And they go, well, one attack saved let's see if what we can do Early five great opportunity then for Samuel Whitbread to come away with it quite lucky to get that pulled back because usually that's just given as a as a free kick but uh Samuel Whitbread will have a chance to play for through Sophie Findlay big contact in the midfield and no offside calls the referee so Iverbridge will break through uh Madison Sampanato, and now it's a turned over once more. Lavinia Natui, who's been so impressive for Samuel Whitbread. Into the hands of Fullerton, a great offload. Olivia Zien, finally a knock-on is called. A little bit frantic, some nerves perhaps for such a big occasion for both sides. We well, you know what, Will, Phoebe Fullerton started that for Samuel Whitbread. She took a really hard carry and just added a little bit to the attack and, and made Ivy Bridge let Gross. them know that she's here to play and Bye. it didn't go anywhere in the end but uh, just from that contact alone a little marker laid down turnover at scrum time and the two he's done so well to keep hold of that and did even better to spread it wide but unfortunately knocked on by Fullerton at the at the key moment well, that was really well held by Lavinia Natui. She scored both tries in the uh, quarter-final. She looks like a really fantastic player. Yeah, when you get one of your best players and you put them in the scrum as well, you just increase the number of moments that they can have influence on the game. A good scrum from Ivy Bridge, isn't it? To hold on to that and then get it away. Okay, it's going to go forward here. Well, good disruption once again by Samuel Whitbread, who aren't giving Ivy Ridge Community College anything. Well, the other semi final that's taking place over on pitch one the Kings of Wessex Academy up against Kingsbridge. Kingsbridge Community College, who uh, ran away with a group that, that uh, Cardiff High School were uh, playing earlier. They uh, scored 30 plus points in uh, both their fixtures. The thing is, Wolf, when you get to the end of uh, a day of sevens, form, everything that's gone before, it just goes out the window. It's basically how the body feels and whether the mind can re rewire the brain to, uh, to say you, you can get over this and you can still be the player you were this morning. But it's not easy. Well, we'll see who has more in the tank. Early. Penalty at scrum time for an early engagement. It's not very often you see those at the game of sevens, and Samuel Whitbread will come away with it. It's a lovely darting run. And then the ball is spread wide. Good footwork by Sophie Finley as they go to the edge. Here's Bramwell. Round the corner goes Phoebe Fullerton. Almost dragged into play, does so well to keep it alive. Bramwell this time right on the edge. It's loose on the floor. And there's a lack of Samuel Whitbread numbers available, so away come Lock on almost Ivy Bridge, but unfortunately just knocked on. Well, Samuel Whitbread were in trouble there because they left the ruck undefended and there was nothing but green grass in front of Ivy Bridge. Well, Samuel Whitbread have got to get something from this field position, from this attack before half time. Otherwise, it's going to be Ivy Bridge feeling the better at half time. Their coach is going to be telling them, you've got through that, you've survived that, you're going to get a chance here. But if Samuel Whitbread 
can get points, then Crouch. they'll feel that they're in control. Five. If they don't, they're going to feel Ten. like this might not be their afternoon. Well, it will be that Brett's feed at the scrum. Some good cover defence has given them this opportunity. Rules coming from the sideline, but a great tackle in midfield. And it might be another turnover here from this knock-on. Referee says play on following that knock-on in midfield. Around the corner comes Fullerton again. Shrugs off the first defender, but Ivy Ridge do so well to drag her down. Bramwell now, another great offload. Back to Fullerton again, so physical. Bramwell, really advantage. loose on the floor, but advantage goes Ivy Bridge's way, and there's another knock on. Well, if you've got to credit this uh, Ivy Bridge defence, that is epic from all those involved on the right, right wing there, because maybe. Fullerton carries a couple of times. She's a big carrier. They keep it alive, keep it alive, and those desperate tackles that have meant they kept the score at nil nil. And I think Ivy Bridge are going to be feeling the better at half time, but. Of course, uh, they've got to get on the board themselves at some stage. But I think I think that's the momentum that they needed to get. And uh, from it, they could perhaps plan a way back into it. One of the tightest games we've seen so far at the Roslyn Park National School Sevens in the semi-final of the Under-16 Cup, the final of which will happen next on pitch one. But over on pitch RE2 here with Next Gen, it's currently 0-0 between Ivybridge Community College and the Samuel Whitbread Academy. Well, welcome back to the second half of this incredibly tight cup semi-final between Samuel Whitbread and Ivy Bridge Community College. It really is all to play for. Ivy Bridge weathered the storm so well in that first half and they seem to have turned it over in the early stages. Emily Vogut offload there just behind uh, the number 16, Daisy Kingston. But they look to go to the edge straight away. It'll be Izzy Firth who'll go over in these early stages. They weathered the storm from Samuel Whitbread throughout the whole of that first half. And Ivy Bridge Community College, who've got all the backing from their various teams on the sideline here, have opened the scoring. And it's Izzy Firth who's converted. Well, they turned it over off the kickoff. And then they were so quick to spread it to the wide channels. That's nice, brilliant, isn't it, from Ivy Bridge to soak that up on the ropes at times in the first half. The and just a little break and a reset, and they get it right. And they don't know how to keep play out. They don't need to do anything more from this position. They could just go back into defensive mode. They've got the score they need. 
It's all uh, in, now in, it's it's all in Samuel Whitbread Academy's Callender. corner now. Uh, that game getting underway at four 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 Restart knock on was the call, which was a very tough call for the number 18 to Anna Makope to deal with. And uh, Ivy Bridge could really turn the screw now with the momentum in their favour. Yeah, let's see what they got from here. Been precious few opportunities for field position and the set piece. See what they can work. Three players, of course, spread out quite Bye. close to each other behind our picture. We can't quite see the backs lining up, but they're all quite close to each other. Clean line, uh, clean uh, scrum ball. Gilveer goes to the short side. And Ivy Ridge College cut back against the grain. It's a lovely offload to Madison Sampanato. All the way back to uh, Abby Blair. And once again, they look to go wide. And once again, it's through Izzy Firth. Izzy Firth dragged down. Great offload. Susie Gale flicks it back inside. Well gathered by Firth. Firth could be under again. <coughs> and in the early stage of this second half, Ivy Bridge have really turned it on. Izzy Firth is putting on a show here. But it's her teammates on the inside this time that do so much hard work to get it to the edge. And Samuel Whitbread with some great defense in, just like Ivy Bridge in the first half but that little extra bit of speed will to cut through and ensure she didn't get scragged by the cover defense well a great conversion as well exactly what Ivy Bridge were after and they could be steaming their way into a cup final if uh, Samuel Whitbread don't have a response it must be demoralizing to have worked so hard in that first half and to have created such pressure not to profit off anything. I think that's a good point, Well, But they've got four minutes to put that behind them and just see what they can come up with. Those two conversions so important for Ivy Bridge. Let's see what they can do. Spilled backwards off uh, Sophie Gilvier's restart. So Samuel Whitbread will have possession to play with. Really physical in the ruck. It's flung wide. Really physical, running once more from Makope, but crossing is the call, and that's really unlucky. Well, crossing Jack at this stage, that's just the kind of penalty you just don't want to concede. It's so unnecessary. Yeah, and it just adds up to that narrative in your head that things aren't going our way today. An attack then, they've gone the fields. They'd be right back in this. You've got to believe that. There is still time. There is still time. Three minutes. They get the ball back here. There's Tilly Carter at number 18 making such great work. Yes. And to Anya Makope did the right thing Bye. of um, looping around the corner to be in support and just got in the yes. way of her teammate. <coughs> Penalty at scrum time as well goes Ivy Bridge's way. Well, Sammy Ripbreather under loads of pressure now. Look at this wonderful carry from Gale. Offload into... Uh, Jasmine and Eden. But a knock on. Yeah, this is it, Wilf. Knocking on the door of the last chance saloon for Samuel Whitbread. They've got to go some, and they've got to go some quickly. Well, they're ringing in the changes in this final phase. They need two scores in the next two minutes, which is by all means what? attainable in the game of sevens. But they'll have to, you think, go the length from this scrum. Yep, they will. And here it comes. They're going to seek for some space down the blind side. Offloaded back inside. Oh, that may have gone forward. Play on is the call. A great fend by uh, Tilly Carfer. Dragged down just outside the 22 now. Kope battling for it and comes away with possession. Samuel Whitbread take it to the line. Well gathered by Makope, but a knock-on is the call. And that might just about spell the end, depending on what happens here at this scrum, Jack. Well, this next minute is going to be glorious for Ivy Bridge. They're going to tackle their hearts out. And even if Samuel Whitbread can go from distance here, I don't think it's going to be with enough time to score a second. So these are some great times for Ivy Bridge, ahead of the final, to just enjoy being out here with this semi-final 
in the books now. It's come Ivy Bridge's way. They look to finish with a flurry. Spilled following Gale's pass. And the game may just uh, whittle out here. No scrum advantage, so another scrum. Well, as we near the end of the coverage of our final game here on just the first day of Rosen Park Sevens, we're very excited for the next four days to come. Yeah, and these players are getting to play on the pitches Grant! as the groundsman intended, of course. It's going to get churned up a bit by day five. But yeah. it's been uh, a real showcase on this pitch. Un girls under 16's rugby has been brilliant. Samuel Whitbread have been brilliant today. And it's not going to end how they want it to. But That's what fine. a day they've put together. And Ivy Bridge uh, still coming, aren't they? That's a great turnover from Spampanato. Who takes it to ground Black. now. No, leave that side entry. Black. Side entry, so penalty advantage. This is likely to be the final phase. So we'll see where, see where uh, Jasmine Eden can take it. Campbell. That passes forward. And that will bring an end to this cup semi-final, Ivy Bridge. Jubilation for them if they've made it through to the next round. And we uh, don't know just yet who's made it through to the uh, cup final, but Ivy Bridge Community College will be there facing the King of Wessex or Knightsbridge. You'll get your timers booked for when the final is. Ivy Bridge Community College will be in it and uh, many congratulations to them firstly a really strong first half defensive effort and then they played rugby in the second half and just shows what you can do if you cling on for dear life in a game of sevens things can change and samuel whitbread academy could well have been in the final themselves if they'd taken some of those first half opportunities but a great day for them and uh, many congratulations to everyone involved at the samuel whitbread academy an awesome rugby program that's going on there and um, Hopefully a, a fun trip home nonetheless, despite going out in the semis. But time to get as many electrolytes into the body and maybe stretch off some of those sore points before heading into the final for Ivy Bridge Community College. Good luck to them. I thought you were talking about me, Jack. I need all the help I can get from a full day of commentary, but uh, we'll be back tomorrow with more coverage. And uh, before we leave, following our final fixture here on Next Gen, we're going to wrap up and have a little talk about all the action of today and what we can look forward to in the week to come. Yeah, hello everybody. We're uh, pitch side with Angus Savage and um, and Wilf. Um, yeah, just to round out the under 16s girls games, there, there have been so many impressive performances today under 18 vars and under 16 girls competition has been our focus there's been many other competitions running but those on this pitch today uh were the main ones angus you got to see more of the action from around the place uh here today as you're roaming and, and checking in and uh, uh just kind of keeping your your ear to the ground but did you see a better defensive performance today than ivy bridge college in that first half i actually thought they that was one of the best we've seen. I think I caught a glimpse just a moment ago, actually, of uh, of Stowe against Christ College Brecon in the elimination round over there, on uh, on RE1, and that was that was astonishing. That game, they they were both fantastic. Stowe, we know, are missing a few players uh, due to England under 18 commitments, and yet I think it was 1912. Both teams just dug in, and that's what we're seeing. I think we're seeing because of the nature of the conditions. It's it's been boggy. It's been horrible. It's been wet, and all the rest. Of it. It's not classic sevens weather. It's certainly not 2022 Rossin Park National School sevens weather, but it's pro it's providing a chance for teams to have to just dig in and be gritty, and we're seeing loads of that. And uh, but that Ivy Bridge performance was was certainly one of those, and uh, a lot to look forward to, I would say. But who's impressed you guys? Who's been you know you guys have seen an awful lot going on here. Who have been the teams? And, and Wilf, I guess I guess we can start with you. You had that early stint in the morning. Who who was jumping out? Focus on the under 16s girls, I suppose, to to start off with, because you know they they've got that cup final coming up. So who's really stood out for you? Yeah, of course. So the uh, under 16 competition was great, and it was having uh, I had two Cardiff High School students 
in the commentary box to talk about how much they've loved coming down and enjoying the tournament as we unfortunately watched Wellington School absolutely demolish them. Uh, but Wellington School finished third in that group and made no progress forward because uh, they were in the group of Knightsbridge who completely ran away with uh, their pool completely. I imagine Knightsbridge will have made it to the final as well. Um, but yeah, that Samuel Whitbread side were really impressive throughout the day. But the fact that they saw off the Maynard School side before them was very impressive because the Maynard School looked like a really talented bunch and uh, their captain had a conversion to equalise and unfortunately couldn't finish uh, that opportunity. But yeah, there's so much talented rugby coming from up and down the system. And the way, as um, we were saying earlier, the way that this tournament is spoken about and the way that it produces these international talents, you know, this and that player has played here and that's why it's cool. Um, that sort of communication is going to start coming from the women's side of it as well as more and more women's team are invested into Roslyn Park because all it does is encourage more people to come and play and that's why it's so important that this tournament even exists. But yeah, some really talented sides like the Maynard School and Samuel Whitbread and for those kind of sides not even make the final, uh, yeah, it's very impressive for Ivybridge Community College to get all the way. Absolutely. and and. We're going to hear a lot more about that growth in the in the women's side on Thursday because we're going to have Rachel Burford come and join us. She's working with Limitless and she's done lots and lots with, with us here at NSGM 15 as well. And, and she runs Girls Rugby Club and, and has a real nose to the ground on that on that sort of development of the women's game. Also with Limitless today, we had the great pleasure of having Alex Good along. Jack, you had him alongside. And as... Um, as Wilf was, was sort of alluding to, that special connection that players, even once they've gone on to great things, you know, he's got, what, 20-odd, 30-odd England caps still sitting here talking about school rugby. He was raving to me on the walkover about going and chatting with Dossa Smith and about <laughs> Oakham days. You know, it, this stuff really does remain special. Oh, he loves it, Alex, doesn't he? He's such a great ambassador. I think he, he's got to love it even more now that he's getting on a, a little bit in his career. There might not be Get too on a little bit. Too, You're brave. <laughs> there might not be too many seasons of Alex Good on our screen, which is a great shame, but what a player. He, and he loves to be that person who he used to remember as a young player, seeing it at a, at a tournament, seeing it at an event, uh, and I'm thinking, oh, that's uh, Neil Back, or, or, or that's Kieran Bracken, and I'm going to shake the hand, I'm going to get a medal from them. Uh, and just him being around, rocking around the place, you would have seen um, young boys, young girls as well, you know, making sure they didn't, Alex didn't see them, but then go, oh, that sounds good, isn't it? So just his presence is here, but then also his energy and his uh, make, ability to put himself about and, uh, and be a good ambassador for the sport. Rachel Burf is going to be even... Uh, not even better than Alex Good, not necessarily, but she's a great one, isn't she? She's she's such a great, uh, such a legend of English rugby as well. Um, I just want to give a shout out to the under-16 girls team that I saw on here. The most impressive team. They weren't necessarily the most technically uh, gifted team that we've seen today, but uh, the Kingsdale Foundation School. I've never seen a team dominate possession in the way they did. They went through phase after phase. They went through about 20 or 25 phases to score their score their tries, and they almost beat the school they were up against uh, from where I think it was the Bryn Kolenig Comprehensive School. They almost beat Good outstanding that. pronunciation. Uh, and, and, but the well side in the end had a bit more speed about than they got in. Uh, but Kingsdale Foundation School, uh, so I, was, I was just so by myself. No one was in the tent with me. Uh, and I couldn't share it with anyone, so I showed them But they were brilliant. So, uh, yeah, they, uh, they, they would be my under 16 my team to watch out for. And I guess under 18s, well, from this pitch, we've got to talk about some pools a bit. They were, so, they were excellent, weren't they? Yeah, I mean, I had the pleasure of calling that game alongside you and they were they were just fantastic they they flew out the trap well so much so that i was i was sat in the first half just busying myself with with my laptop and in the second half felt compelled to come and join you so so good were they but um it's been a really interesting competition and one of the things that i wanted to talk about sort of while we're assessing this is there are two groups and i'm, I'm intrigued to see how they've gone in the, the elimination round two groups where there were only three teams rather than four Merkiston Castle and Felstead finished top of those groups and I just wonder given how heavy these conditions are does a game less in the legs play out how does it go does it mean that tomorrow you're a little fresher I could be talking nonsense they may well go on to lose those elimination round games but I just wonder does that give a team an advantage because Wilf I suppose in a competition that is as intense and as difficult as this one percent difference can make it I mean the, the fact that Merkiston and Felstead these like massive schools that are in the VARs is testament to the quality of the competition. Like Nelsons from New Zealand are in the VARs this year. Like it's it's a crazy competition to begin with. Um, the likes of Warwick and Stowe and you saw that some poolside putting themselves into some might say not the cup because it isn't. It's the VARs, but it still contains 
some of the best rugby that you'll see at Roslyn Park, which is great that that's that this whole five days of competition and tomorrow with both the bowl and the Vars, you're going to see some of the biggest schools in the country playing rugby. And yeah, I think once you've had your night in the hotel, I was chatting to St. Joseph's College here, so I went to go see some of the old boys uh, who were playing in the, they've got two teams, one in the Vars, one in the Cup, and they were sighing, oh yeah, the hotel's really posh and really fancy and they've got a spa and we're going to go and get massages and such. And I was like, Okay, I didn't get that when I was here as under 15, but fine, if that's what, the, you know, so with those facilities available, we'll see what the difference makes. I may have just outed the college in front of it, or maybe Merkiston are now turning around and saying, they're going like to tomor in. lying yeah. in tomorrow morning as a result of their <laughs> massages, coaches yeah, exactly. shaking, shaking their legs to get them out of bed. But on Nelson College, actually, very exciting. I've, ju I've just been sort of readying our, our preview for tomorrow, um, uh, getting ahead of the game as much as possible. And Nelson College have absolutely torn through their group. They've looked very, very tasty. I mean, we've got them at rugby school in a few days as well. Very excited to see them there. But I think we're going to be seeing plenty of them tomorrow as well. And I guess that's what that's what makes this great, isn't it, Jack? You know, the uh, the ability to have teams from around the world. We saw Jess in, in but I think we saw them in both the uh, the girls and the boys competitions today from Dubai playing. We've got Nelson College tearing through. King's College from Australia have, have missed out by a whisker of finishing top of their group. That international flavour adds something extra. I think the Richards and Evans pitches have to be up there with the meccas of Rugby Sevens. You've got Hong Kong, of course. You've got Melrose. You've got Dubai. I don't think you would put Richards and Evans pitches below that, given the, how hard the competition is to win. You've got to go into a group tomorrow, having won an elimination game today, and then get through that again. And given how many people play here and how far people travel to come, and um, we've had schools from Pakistan in the past, Dubai College, well, there's several Dubai teams yeah. coming here for that. And uh, it whets your appetite, because of course, our next gen 15 obviously serves a lot of people want to see specific schools, specific people, their relatives, their friends playing. But then there's people like us that are just really interested in the performance of the schools and how they're doing, and it whets your appetite for the cup, doesn't it? Oh enormously I, I i'm so excited for that I'm, I'm so excited for every day this week to be honest but, you know i've been looking ahead at the schedule under 16 boys cup that's a special competition um the new under 14 yeah. girls cup that's yeah. going to be really exciting got mixed rugby under 11s festival on friday you know there, there's there's something for everyone and uh, it's going to be it's going to be a very very cool week um you guys are both here you, well jack you're here till wednesday yeah, am wednesday, i right yeah there's a possible contract extension for thursday we're in negotiations uh, <laughs> we'll see we'll see what we can do wilf you're here all week bar thursday is that right i'm here all week bar thursday there may be some netball going on elsewhere because next gen covers everything uh but if not i'll, I'll still be here all week but yes very excited oh, you're, for you're a good company man you're a very good company man so we've got <laughs> we've got lots to look forward to you guys have got loads of time on the mic Tell me what you are sort of closing off here, I suppose. What you're, what you're most looking forward to over the course of the next couple of days? Well, you're the under 60. You've dropped the under 16s um, word in there, and that, that really appeals because of the under 15 schools cup that we've had this week, 15s, and that all that talent that you get at that level is going to come through, and they're going to get a little bit more of a run at those under 15s in the under 16s teams. So I think that's, uh, that's really exciting. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with that. Keep it simple. I think for someone who hasn't uh, had the pleasure of being behind the microphone at this tournament, it's going to be seeing some of the largest schools around who I won't have the pleasure of seeing this weekend at rugby because they've been nudged out for a bunch of teams from Japan and Argentina, which is very impressive. So uh, those schools that may have missed out on that competition, um, seeing them in action, like these, these big historic names, uh, which is a very impressive sort of gathering of those here. So it'll be very fun to see if some of the top schools in the country can live up to the past of what their predecessors have done within their school colours. And the exciting thing is there's always going to be a surprise, isn't there? There's always going to be a school that pulls out a surprise for your performance or wins your heart over, so that, that's going to happen. Right, well, let's uh, sign off for the, today. Uh, Angus and Wilf, uh, you've been brilliant. Uh, thanks a lot for your company and thank you for watching. And we hope to have your company tomorrow uh, and Wednesday and, uh, and after that as well. But uh, until, uh, until Tuesday morning, see you then. Right, cheers guys. Can we have a little photo?
Introducing Next Gen 15, the new home school rocket. Well, where does this come from? Covering everything the school game has to offer in both the North and Southern hemispheres. Oh, Highlighting tomorrow's stars, Next Gen 15 will be bringing you live games and regular updates of all the news and in-depth views on the global game. What a game! All your school rugby, all in one place. This is Next Gen 15.